The Second Book of the Kings Chapter 1 For sooth Moab trespassed against Israel, after that Ahab was dead, and Ahaziah fell through the allures of his solar, which he had in Samaria, and was sick. And he sent messengers, and said to them, Go ye, and counsel Baalzebub, god of Ekron, whether I may live after this sickness of me. Forsooth the angel of the Lord spake to Elijah of Tishbe, and said, Rise thou, and go down into the meeting of the messengers of the king of Samaria, and thou shalt say to them, Whether God is not in Israel, that ye go to counsel Baalzebub, god of Ekron. For which thing the Lord saith these things, Thou shalt not go down off the bed, on which thou ascendedest. And Elijah went, and the messengers turned again to Ahaziah, and he said to them, Why turned ye again? And they answered to him, A man met us, and said to us, Go ye, turn ye again to the king, that sent you, and ye shall say to him, The Lord saith these things, Whether for God was not in Israel, thou sendest, that Baalzebub, god of Ekron, be counselled. Therefore thou shalt not go down off the bed, on which thou ascendedest, but thou shalt die by death. Which Ahaziah said to them, Of what figure and habit is that man, that met you, and spake to you these words? And they said, An hairy man, and gird with a girdle of leather in the reins. Which said to them, It is Elijah of Tishbe. And he sent to Elijah a prince of fifty, and fifty men that were under him. Which prince ascended to him, and said to him, Sitting in the top of the hill, Man of God, the king commandeth, that thou come down. And Elijah answered, and said to the prince of fifty men, If I am the man of God, fire come down from heaven, and devour thee and thy fifty men. Therefore fire came down from heaven, and devoured him, and the fifty men that were with him. Again he sent to Elijah another prince of fifty, and fifty men with him, which spake to Elijah, Man of God, the king saith these things, Haste thou, come thou down. Elijah answered, and said, If I am the man of God, fire come down from heaven, and devour thee and thy fifty men. Therefore the fire of God came down from heaven, and devoured him and his fifty men. Again he sent the third prince of fifty men, and fifty men that were with him. And when the prince had come, he bowed the knees against Elijah, and prayed him, and said, Man of God, do not thou despise my life, and the lives of thy servants, that be with me. Lo, fire came down from heaven, and devoured twain, the first princes of fifty men, and the fifty men that were with them. But now, I beseech, that thou have mercy on my life. Forsooth the angel of the Lord spake to Elijah of Tishbe, and said, Go thou down with him, dread thou not. Therefore Elijah rose, and came down with him to the king. And he spake to the king, The Lord saith these things, for thou sentest messengers to counsel Baalzebub, god of Ekron, as if no god were in Israel, of whom thou mightest ask a word. Therefore thou shalt not go down off the bed, on which thou ascendedest, but thou shalt die by death. Therefore he was dead by the word of the Lord, which word Elijah spake, and Joram, his brother, reigned for him, in the second year of Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, for Ahaziah had no son. Soothly the residue of words of Ahaziah, which he wrought, whether these be not written in the book of words of days of the kings of Israel. Chapter 2 Forsooth it was done, when the Lord would raise Elijah by a whirlwind into heaven, Elijah and Elisha went from Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, Sit thou here, for the Lord sent me till into Bethel. To whom Elisha said, The Lord liveth, and thy soul liveth, for I shall not forsake thee. And when they had come down to Bethel, the sons of prophets, that were in Bethel, went out to Elisha, and said to him, Whether thou knowest, that the Lord shall take away thy Lord today from thee? Which answered, And I know, be ye still. Forsooth Elijah said to Elisha, Sit thou here, for the Lord sent me into Jericho. And he said, The Lord liveth, and thy soul liveth, for I shall not forsake thee. And when they had come to Jericho, the sons of prophets, that were in Jericho, nigh to Elisha, and said to him, Whether thou knowest, that the Lord shall take away thy Lord today from thee? And he said, I know, be ye still. Forsooth Elijah said to Elisha, Sit thou here, 
for the Lord sent me to Jordan, which said, The Lord liveth, and thy soul liveth, for I shall not forsake thee. Therefore both went together, and fifty men of the sons of prophets followed, which also stood far even against, soothly they both stood over Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle, and wrapped it, and smote the waters, which were parted into ever either part, and both went by the dry. And when they had passed, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask thou that, that thou wilt that I do to thee, before that I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I beseech, that thy double spirit be made in me. Which Elijah answered, Thou askest in hard thing. Nevertheless if thou shalt see me, when I shall be taken away from thee, that that thou askest shall be. Soothly if thou shalt not see, it shall not be. And when they went, and spake going, lo, a chariot, of fire, and horses, of fire, parted ever either, and Elijah ascended by a whirlwind into heaven. For sooth Elisha saw, and cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the charioteer thereof. And he saw no more Elijah, and he took his clothes, and rent those into two parts. And he raised the mantle of Elijah, that fell down to him, and he turned again, and stood over the river of Jordan. And with the mantle of Elijah, that fell down to him, he smote the waters, which were not parted. And he said, Where is God of Elijah also now? And he smote the waters, and those were parted hither and thither, and Elisha passed. Soothly the sons of prophets, that were in Jericho even against, saw, and said, The spirit of Elijah rested on Elisha. And they came into the meeting of him, and worshipped him lowly to earth. And they said to him, Lo, with thy servants be fifty strong men, that may go, and seek thy Lord, lest peradventure the spirit of the Lord hath taken him, and hath cast forth him in one of the hills, either in one of the valleys. And Elisha said, Do not ye send. And they constrained him, till he assented to them, and said, Send ye. And they sent fifty men, and when they had sought him by three days, they found him not. And they turned again to Elisha, and he dwelled in Jericho. And he said to them, Whether I said not to you, do not ye send. Therefore the men of the city said to Elisha, Lo, the dwelling of this city is full good, as thou thyself, Lord, seest. But the waters be most evil, and the land is barren. And he said, Bring ye to me a new vessel, and put ye salt into it. And when they had brought it to him, he went out to the well of waters, and sent salt into it, and said, The Lord saith these things, I have healed these waters, and neither death, nor barrenness, shall be more in them. Therefore the waters were healed till into this day, by the word of Elisha, which he spake. For sooth Elisha went up from thence into Bethel, and when he went up by the way, little children went out of the city, and scorned him, and said, Go up, thou bald one. Go up, thou bald one. And when he had beheld, he saw them, and cursed them in the name of the Lord. And two bears went out of the forest, and rent forty children of them. Soothly Elisha went from thence into the hill of Carmel, and from thence he turned again to Samaria. Chapter 3 For Sooth Joram, son of Ahab, reigned on Israel in Samaria, in the eighteenth year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. And he reigned twelve years, and he did evil before the Lord, but not as his father and his mother, for he took away the images of Baal, which his father had made, nevertheless he cleaved to the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that made Israel to do sin, and he went not away from them. For Sooth Mesha, king of Moab, nourished many beasts, and paid to the king of Israel an hundred thousand of lambs, and an hundred thousand weathers, with their fleeces. And when Ahab was dead, he brake the bond of peace, which he had with the king of Israel. Therefore King Joram went out of Samaria in that day, and numbered all Israel. And he sent to Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and said, The king of Moab hath gone away from me, come thou with me against him to battle. And Jehoshaphat answered, I shall go up with thee. He that is mine, is thine. My people is thy people, and mine horses be thine horses. And he said, By what way shall we ascend? And Joram answered, By the desert of Adumea. Therefore the king of Israel, and the king of Judah, and the king of Edom, went forth, 
and compassed by the way of seven days, and there was not water to the host, and to the beasts that followed them. And the king of Israel said, Alas, 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 the Lord hath gathered together as three kings to betake us in the hand of Moab. And Jehoshaphat said, Whether any prophet of the Lord is here, that we beseech the Lord by him. And one of the servants of the king of Israel answered, Elisha, the son of Shaphat, is here, that poured water upon the hands of Elijah. And Jehoshaphat said, Is the word of the Lord at him? Which said, Yea, it is. And the king of Israel, and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and the king of Edom, went down to him. And Elisha said to the king of Israel, What is to me and to thee, an idolater? Go thou to the prophets of thy father and of thy mother. And the king of Israel said to him, Why hath the Lord gathered together these three kings, to betake them into the hands of Moab? And Elisha said to him, The Lord of hosts liveth, in whose sight I stand, if I were not ashamed of the cheer of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, truly I had not perceived, neither I had beheld thee. Now forsooth bring ye to me a psalter, and when the psalter sang, the hand of the Lord was made upon Elisha, and he said, The Lord saith these things, Make ye the womb, either the depth, of this strand, ditches and ditches. For the Lord saith these things, Ye shall not see wind, neither rain, and this depth shall be filled with waters, and ye shall drink, and your families, and your beasts. And this is little thing in the sight of the Lord. Furthermore also he shall betake Moab into your hands, and ye shall smite each strengthened city, and each chosen city, and ye shall cut down each tree bearing fruit, and ye shall stop all the wells of waters, and ye shall cover with stones each noble field. Therefore it was done early, when sacrifices want to be offered, and, lo, waters came by the way of Edom, and the land was filled with waters. Soothly all the men of Moab heard, that these kings had gone up to fight against them, and they called together all men, that were girt with a knight's girdle above, and they stood in the terms. And men of Moab rose full early, and when the sun was risen then even against the waters, they saw the waters red as blood even against them. And they said, It is the blood of sword, that is, shed out by sword. Kings have fought against themselves, and they be slain together. Now go thou, Moab, to the prey. And they went into the castles of Israel, forsooth Israel rose, and smote Moab, and they fled before the men of Israel. Then they that had overcome, came, and smote Moab, and destroyed their cities, and all men sending stones filled each best field, and stopped all the wells of waters, and cut down all the trees bearing fruit, so that only earthen walls were left, and the city was compassed of men setting engines, and it was smitten by great part thereof. And when the king of Moab had seen this, that is, that the enemies had the mastery, he took with him seven hundred men drawing out swords, that they should break into the king of Edom, and they might not. And he took his first engendered son, that should reign for him, and offered him a burnt sacrifice on the wall, and great indignation was made in Israel, and anon they went away from him, and turned again into their land. Chapter 4 Forsooth a woman of the wives of prophets cried to Elisha, and said, Thy servant, mine husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant dreaded God, and lo, the creancer, that is, he to whom debt is owed, cometh to take my two sons to serve him. To whom Elisha said, What wilt thou that I do to thee? Say thou to me, What hast thou in thine house? And she answered, I thine handmaid have not anything in mine house, no but a little of oil, with which I shall be anointed. To whom he said, Go thou, and ask by borrowing of all thy neighbors void vessels, not a few. And enter, and close thy door, when thou art within, thou and thy sons. And put ye thereof into all these vessels, and when those shall be full, thou shalt take away. Therefore the woman went, and closed the door on herself and on her sons, they brought the vessels, and she poured in. And when the vessels were full, she said to her son, Bring yet a vessel to me. And he answered, I have not, and then the oil stood, increasing no more. Forsooth she came, and showed it to the man of God. And he said, Go thou, sell the oil, and yield to thy creancer, and thou and thy children live ye off the remnant, or the residue. 
forsooth a day was made, and Elisha passed by a city, Shunem. And a great woman was there, which held him, that he should eat bread, that is, busily prayed to meat. And when he passed off thereby, he turned to her, that he would eat bread with her. And she said to her husband, I perceive that this is an holy man of God, that passeth off by us. Therefore make we a little solar to him, and put we therein a little bed to him, and a board, and a chair, and a candlestick, that when he cometh to us, he dwell there. Therefore a day was made, and Elisha came, and turned into the solar, and rested there. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, Call thou this Shunammite. And when he had called her, and she had stood before him, he said to his servant, Speak thou to her, Lo! Thou hast ministered to us busily in all things, what wilt thou that I do to thee? Whether thou hast a cause, and wilt that I speak to the king, either to the prince of the chivalry? And she answered, I dwell in the midst of my people. And he said, What then will she that I do to her? Gehazi said to him, Ask thou not, for she hath no son, and her husband is eld. Therefore Elisha commanded, that he should call her, and when she was called, and stood before the door, he said to her, In this time, as in time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. And she answered, Do not thou, my lord, the man of God, I beseech, do not thou lie to thine handmaid. And the woman conceived, and childed a son in the time, and in the same hour, in which Elisha had said. Soothly the child increased, and when some day was, and the child was gone out, and went to his father, and to the reapers. He said to his father, Mine head acuth, mine head acuth. And his father said to a servant, Take, and lead him to his mother. And when he had taken, and had brought him to his mother, she set him on her knees unto midday, and he was dead. Certainly she went up, and laid him on the little bed of the man of God, and closed the door. And she went out, and called her husband, and said, I beseech, send thou with me one of the servants, and an ass, and I shall run out unto the man of God, and I shall turn again. And he said to her, For what cause goest thou to him? Today be not Callan's, neither Sabbath. And she answered, I shall go. And she saddled the ass, and commanded to the servant, Drive thou, and haste thee. Make thou no tarrying to me in going, and do thou this thing which I command to thee. Then she went forth, and came to the man of God, into the hill of Carmel. And when the man of God had seen her even against him, he said to Gehazi, his servant, Lo! that Shunammite! Go thou therefore into the meeting of her, and say thou to her, whether it is done rightfully about thee, and about thine husband, and about thy son. And she answered, It is done rightfully. And when she had come to the man of God, into the hill, she took his feet, and Gehazi nighed, that he should remove her. And the man of God said, Suffer thou her, for her soul is in bitterness, and the Lord hath held it privy from me, and showed it not to me. And she said to him, Whether I asked a son of thee, my Lord, whether I said not to thee, scorn thou not me. And he said to Gehazi, Gird thy loins, and take my staff in thine hand, and go. And if a man meet thee, greet thou not him. And if any man greeteth thee, answer thou not him. And put thou my staff upon the face of the child. Forsooth the mother of the child said, The Lord liveth, and thy soul liveth, I shall not leave thee. Therefore he rose, and followed her. And Gehazi went before them, and putted the staff upon the face of the child. And there was not voice in him, neither wit. And Gehazi turned again into the meeting of him, and told to him, and said, The child rose not. Therefore Elisha entered into the house, and, lo, the dead child lay in his bed. And he entered, and closed the door on himself, and on the child, and prayed to the Lord. And Elisha went up, and lay upon the child, and he putted his mouth upon the mouth of the child, and his eyes upon the eyes of the child, and his hands upon the hands of the child. And he bowed himself upon the child, and the flesh of the child was made hot. And he turned again, and walked in the house once hither and thither. And again Elisha went up, and lay upon the child, and the child coughed seven times, and opened the eyes. And he called Gehazi, and said to him, Call thou this Shunammite. And she was called, and entered to him. And he said, Take thy son. She came, 
and fell down to his feet, and worshipped on the earth, and she took her son and went out. And Elisha turned again into Gilgal, for sooth hunger was in the land, and the sons of prophets dwelled before him. And Elisha said to one of his servants, Set thou a great pot, and seed thou pottage to the sons of prophets. And one went out into the field to gather herbs of the field, and he found as it were a wild vine, and he gathered thereof gourds of the field. And he filled his mantle, and he turned again, and shredded those into the pot of pottage, for he knew not what it was. Therefore they poured into fellows to eat, and when they had tasted of the seething, they cried out, and said, Death is in the pot. Death is in the pot, thou man of God, and they might not eat it. And he said, Bring ye meal. And when they had brought, he put it into the pot, and said, Pour ye out to the company, that they eat. And anything of bitterness was no more in the pot. For sooth some man came from Balshalisha, and bare to the man of God loaves of the first fruits, twenty loaves of barley, and thing made of corns, in his scrip. And the man of God said, Give thou to the people, that it eat. And his servant answered to him, What is this, that I set before an hundred men? Again Elisha said, Give thou to the people, that it eat, for the Lord saith these things, they shall eat, and there shall leave. Then he put before them, the which ate, and there left meat, after the word of the Lord. Chapter 5 Naaman, prince of the chivalry of the king of Syria, was a great man, and worshipped with his lord, for by him the Lord gave health to Syria. Soothly he was a strong man and rich, but he was leprous. For sooth thieves went out of Syria, and led prisoner from the land of Israel a little damsel, that was in the service of the wife of Naaman. And she said to her lady, Would God, that my Lord had been at the prophet that is in Samaria, soothly the prophet would have cured him of leprosy that he hath. Therefore Naaman entered to his Lord, and told to him, and said, A damsel of the land of Israel spake so and so. Therefore the king of Syria said to him, Go thou, and I shall send letters to the king of Israel. And when Naaman had gone forth, and had taken with him ten talents of silver, and six thousand golden pieces, either florins, and ten changings of clothes, he brought letters to the king of Israel by these words, When thou hast taken this epistle, know thou, that I have sent to thee Naaman, my servant, that thou cure him of his leprosy. And when the king of Israel had read the letters, he rent his clothes, and said, Whether I am God, that may slay and quicken, for this king sent to me, that I cure a man of his leprosy. Perceive ye, and see, that he seeketh occasions against me. And when Elisha, the man of God, had heard this, that is, that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, he sent to the king, and said, Why rentest thou thy clothes? Come he to me, and know he, that there is a prophet in Israel. Then Naaman came with horses and chariots, and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent to him a messenger, and said, Go, and be thou washed seven times in Jordan, and thy flesh shall receive health, and thou shalt be cleansed. Naaman was wroth, and went away, and said, I guessed, that he would have gone out to me, and that he would have stood, and inwardly have called the name of the Lord his God, and that he should have touched with his hand the place of the leprosy, and should have cured me so. Whether Abana and Farpar, the floods of Damascus, be not better than all the waters of Israel, that I be washed in him, and be cleansed. Therefore when he had turned himself, and went away, having indignation, his servants nighed to him, and spake to him, Father, though the prophet had said to thee a great thing, certainly thou oughtest to do it, how much more for now he said to thee, Be thou washed, and thou shalt be cleansed. Then Naaman went down, and washed him seven times in Jordan, by the word of the man of God, and his flesh was restored as the flesh of a little child, and he was cleansed. And he turned again with all his fellowship to the man of God, and came, and stood before him, and said, Verily I know, that none other God is in all earth, no, but only God of Israel. Therefore I beseech, that thou take blessing, that is, a gift, of thy servant. And Elisha answered, The Lord liveth before whom I stand, for I shall not take it of thee. And when he made great force thereto, Elisha assented not utterly. Then Naaman said, As thou wilt. 
but, I beseech, grant thou to me, thy servant, that I take of this earth the charge of two burdens. For thy servant shall no more make burnt sacrifice, either slain sacrifice, to alien gods, no but to the Lord. Forsooth this thing is only, of which thou shalt pray the Lord for thy servant, when my Lord shall enter into the temple of Rimmon, that he worship, and while he shall lean on mine hand, if I worship in the temple of Rimmon, while he worshippeth in the same place, that the Lord forgive to thy servant, for this thing. And Elisha said to him, Go thou in peace. And Sir Naaman went from Elisha in a chosen time of the land. And Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, said in his heart, My Lord hath spared this man of Syria, that he took not of him that, that he brought. The Lord liveth, for I shall run after him, and I shall take of him something. And Gehazi followed after the back of Naaman. And when Naaman had seen Gehazi running to him, he skipped down off the chariot into the meeting of Gehazi, and said, Whether all things be rightful. And he said, Rightfully, my Lord sent me to thee, and said, Two young men of the hill of Ephraim, of the sons of prophets, came now to me. Give thou to them a talent of silver, and double changing clothes. And Naaman said, It is better that thou take two talents. And Naaman constrained him, and Naaman bound the two talents of silver in two bags, and the double clothes, and he put those upon his two servants, the which also bear it before Gehazi. And when Gehazi had come then in the eventide, he took it from the hand of them, and laid it up in the house, and he delivered the men, and they went forth. And then Gehazi entered, and stood before his lord. And Elisha said, Gehazi, from whence comest thou? Which answered, Thy servant went not to any place. And Elisha said, Whether mine heart was not present there, when the man turned again from his chariot into the meeting of thee. Now therefore thou hast taken silver, and thou hast taken clothes, that thou buy places of olives, and vineries, and sheep, and oxen, and servants, and handmaids, but also the leprosy of Naaman shall cleave to thee, and to thy seed without end. And Gehazi went out from him leprous as snow. Chapter 6 Forsooth the sons of prophets said to Elisha, Lo, the place in which we dwell before thee, is straight to us. Go we therefore to Jordan, and each man take a portion of wood for himself, that we build to us there a place to dwell therein. And Elisha said, Go ye. And one of them said, Therefore and thou come with thy servants. He answered, I shall come. And he went with them. And when they came to Jordan, they hewed trees. And it befell, that when a man of them had cut down matter, or wood, the iron of the axe fell into the water. And he cried, and said, Alas, 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 my Lord, and I had taken this same thing by borrowing. Soothly the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed to him the place. Therefore he cut it down a tree, and sent it thither where the iron was, and the iron floated. And Elisha said, Take thou, which held forth the hand, and took it. Forsooth the king of Syria fought against Israel. And he took counsel with his servants, and said, Set we ambushments in this place, and in that. And therefore the man of God sent to the king of Israel, and said, Beware, lest thou pass to that place, for men of Syria be there in ambushments. Therefore the king of Israel sent to the place, which the man of God had said to him, and before occupied it, and kept himself there, not once, neither twice. And the heart of the king of Syria was troubled for this thing, and when his servants were called together, he said, Why show ye not to me, who is my traitor with the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, Nay, my lord the king, but Elisha, the prophet, that is in Israel, showeth to the king of Israel all things, whatever things thou speakest in thy closet. And the king said to them, Go ye, and see, where he is, that I send, and take him. And they told to him, and said, Lo, he dwelleth in Dothan. And the king sent thither horses, and chariots, and the strength of his host, which, when they had come by night, compassed the city. Soothly the minister of the man of God rose early, and went out, and he saw an host in the compass of the city, and horses, and chariots. And he told to the man of God, and said, Alas, alas! Alas, my Lord, what shall we do? And he answered, Do not thou dread, 
for more be with us than with them. And when Elisha had prayed, he said, Lord, open thou the eyes of this young man, that he see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And, lo, the hill full of horses, and of chariots of fire, in the compass of Elisha. And the enemies came down to him. But Elisha prayed to the Lord, and said, I beseech thee, smite this folk with blindness. And the Lord smote them, that they saw not, by the word of Elisha. Forsooth Elisha said to them, This is not the way, neither this is the city. Follow ye me, and I shall show you the man, whom ye seek. And he led them into Samaria. And when they had entered into Samaria, Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men, that they see now. And the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw, that they were in the midst of Samaria. And the king of Israel, when he had seen him, said to Elisha, My father, whether I shall smite them. And he said, Thou shalt not smite them, for thou hast not taken them by thy sword and bow, that thou smite them. But set thou bread and water before them, that they eat and drink, and go to their lord again. And much preparing of meats was set forth to them, and they ate and drank. And the king let go them, and they went to their lord. And thieves of Syria came no more into the land of Israel. Forsooth it was done after these things, Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, gathered all his host, and went up, and besieged Samaria. And great hunger was made in Samaria, and so long it was besieged, till the head of an ass was sold for fourscore pieces of silver, and the fourth part of a measure called Cab, of the craw of Culvers, was sold for five pieces of silver. And when the king of Israel passed by the wall of the city, a woman cried to him, and said, My lord the king, save thou me. Which said, Nay, the Lord save thee. Whereof may I save thee? Of corn floor, either of presser. And the king said to her, What wilt thou that I do to thee? And she answered, This woman said to me, Give thy son, that we eat him today, and we shall eat my son tomorrow. Therefore we seethed my son, and ate him. And I said to her in the tother day, Give thy son, that we eat him. And she hid her son. And when the king had heard this, he rent his clothes, and passed by the wall. And all the people saw the hair shirt, with which the king was clothed at the flesh within. And the king said, God do to me these things, and add these things too, if the head of Elisha, the son of Shaphat, shall stand on him today. Soothly Elisha sat in his house, and eld men sat with him. Then the king before sent a man to Elisha, and before that that messenger came, Elisha said to the eld men, whether ye know, that the son of man Queller sent hither, that mine head be girded off. Therefore see ye, when the messenger cometh, shut ye the door, and suffer ye not him to enter, for lo, the sound of the feet of his Lord is behind him. And yet while he spake to them, the messenger that came to him appeared. And the king said, Lo, so great evil is of the Lord. Soothly what more shall I abide of the Lord? Chapter 7 for sooth Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. The Lord saith these things, In this time tomorrow, a bushel of flour shall be sold for a stater, and two bushels of barley for a stater, in the gate of Samaria. And one of the dukes, on whose hand the king leaned, answered to the man of God, and said, Though the Lord make also the gutters of heaven to be opened, whether that, that thou speakest, may be. And Elisha said, Thou shalt see it with thine eyes and thou shalt not eat thereof. Therefore four leprous men were beside the entering of the city's gate, which said together, What will we be here, till we die? Whether we will enter into the city, we shall die for hunger. Whether we dwell here, we shall die. Therefore come ye, and flee we over to the tents of Syria. If they shall spare us, we shall live. Soothly if they will slay us, nevertheless we shall die. Then they rose up in the eventide, to come to the tents of Syria, and when they had come to the beginning of the tents of Syria, they found not any man there. Forsooth the Lord had made a sound of chariots, and of horses, and of a full much host to be heard in the tents of Syria, and they said together, Lo, the king of Israel hath hired by meed against us the kings of Hittites, and of Egyptians, and they came suddenly upon us. Therefore they rose up, and fled in darkness, and left their tents, and their horses, and mules, and asses, in the castles, 
and they fled, coveting to save their lives only. Therefore when those leprous men had come to the beginning of the castles, or tents, they entered into one tabernacle, and ate, and drank, and they took from thence silver, and gold, and clothes, and went, and hid it, and again they turned again to another tabernacle, and in like manner they took away from thence, and hid. And they said together, We do not rightfully, for this is a day of good message. If we hold it still, and do not tell till the morrow tide, we shall be reproved of trespassing. Come ye, go we, and tell it in the king's hall. And when they had come to the gate of the city, they told to them, and said, We went to the castles of Syria, and we found not any man there, but horses and asses tied, and tents fastened. And so the porters went, and told these things in the palace of the king within. And the king rose up by night, and said to his servants, I say to you, what the men of Syria have done to us. They know, that we travel with hunger, therefore they have gone out of the castles, and be hid in the fields, and say, when they shall go out of the city, we shall take them quick, and then we shall be able to enter into the city. And one of his servants answered, Take we five horses, that left in the city, for those be left only in all the multitude of Israel, for other horses be wasted, and we sending may a spy. Therefore they brought forth two horses, and the king sent into the tents of the men of Syria, and said, Go ye, and see. The which went after them unto Jordan, lo, forsooth all the way was full of clothes, and of vessels, which the men of Syria casted forth, when they were troubled. And the messengers turned again, and showed it to the king. And the people went out, and ravished the castles of Syria, and a bushel of tried flour was made sold for a stator, and two bushels of barley for a stator, by the word of the Lord. Forsooth the king ordained at the gate that duke, in whose hand the king leaned, whom the company trod with their feet, and he was dead, by the word, which the man of God spake, when the king came down to him. And it was done by the word of the man of God, that he said to the king, when he said, Two bushels of barley shall be sold for a stator, and a bushel of tried wheat flour for a stator, in this same time tomorrow in the gate of Samaria. When that duke answered to the man of God, and said, Yea, though the Lord shall make the gutters in heaven to be opened, whether this that thou speakest may be. And the man of God said, Thou shalt see it with thine eyes, and thou shalt not eat thereof. Therefore it befell to him, as it was before said. And the people trod him with their feet in the gate, and he was dead. Chapter 8 Forsooth Elisha spake to the woman, whose son he made to live, and said, Rise thou, and go, both thou and thine house, and go in pilgrimage, and make pilgrimage, wherever thou shalt find it best, for the Lord shall call hunger, and it shall come upon the land seven years. And she rose, and did after the word of the man of God, and she went with her house, and was in pilgrimage in the land of Philistines many days. And when seven years were ended, the woman turned again from the land of Philistines, and she went out, to ask the king for her house, and her fields. And the king spake with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, and said, Tell thou to me all the great deeds that Elisha did. And when he told to the king, how Elisha had raised a dead man, the woman appeared, whose son he had made to live, and she cried to the king for her house, and for her fields. And Gehazi said, My lord the king, this is the woman, and this is her son, whom Elisha raised. And the king asked the woman, and she told to him, that the things were sooth. And the king gave, or assigned, to her a chamberlain, and said, Restore thou to her all things that be hers, and all fruits of the fields, from the day in which she left the land unto this present time. Also Elisha came to Damascus, and Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, was sick. And they told to him, and said, The man of God came hither. And the king said to Hazel, Take with thee gifts, and go thou into the meeting of the man of God, and ask thou counsel by him of the Lord, and say thou, Whether I may escape from this my sickness. Therefore Hazel went into the meeting of him, and had with him gifts, and all the goods of Damascus, the burdens of forty camels. And when he had stood before Elisha, he said, Thy son, Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, sent me to thee, and said, Whether I may be healed of this my sickness. And Elisha said, Go thou, and say to him, 
thou shalt be healed. Forsooth the Lord showed to me that he shall die by death. And he stood with him, and he was troubled, unto the casting down of his cheer, and the man of God wept. And Hazel said, Why weepeth my Lord? And he answered, For I know what evils thou shalt do to the sons of Israel. Thou shalt burn by fire the strengthened cities of them, and thou shalt slay by sword the young men of them, and thou shalt hurtle down the little children of them, and thou shalt part the women with child. And Hazel said, What soothly am I, thy servant, a dog, that I do this great thing? And Elisha said, The Lord hath showed to me that thou shalt be king of Syria. And when he had departed from Elisha, he came to his lord, which said to Hazel, What said Elisha to thee? And he answered, Elisha said to me, Thou shalt receive health. And when the Tophah day had come, Hazel took the cloth that lay on the bed of Ben-Hadad, and he besheded it with water, and he spread it abroad upon the face of Ben-Hadad, and when he was dead, Hazel reigned for him. In the fifth year of Joram, son of Ahab, king of Israel, and of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, reigned. He was of two and thirty years when he began to reign, and he reigned eight years in Jerusalem. And he went in the ways of the kings of Israel, as the house of Ahab had gone, for the daughter of Ahab was his wife, and he did that, that was evil in the sight of the Lord. Forsooth the Lord would not destroy Judah, for David, his servant, as he promised to David, that he should give to him a lantern, and to his sons in all days. In those days Edom, that is, Adumea, went away, that it should not be under Judah, and made a king to itself. And Jehoram came to Zire, and all the chariots with him, and he rose by night, and smote Adumians, that compassed him, and the princes of chariots. Soothly the people fled into their tabernacles. Therefore Edom went away, that it was not under Judah till to this day, then also Libna went away in that time. Certainly the residue of the words of Jehoram, and all things which he did, whether these be not written in the book of words of days of the kings of Judah. And Jehoram slept with his fathers, and was buried with them in the city of David, and Ahaziah, his son, reigned for him. In the twelfth year of Joram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, Ahaziah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, reigned. Ahaziah, the son of Jehoram, was of two and twenty years, when he began to reign, and he reigned one year in Jerusalem. The name of his mother was Athaliah, the daughter of Omri, king of Israel. And he went in the ways of the house of Ahab, and did that, that is evil, in sight of the Lord, as the house of Ahab did, for he was husband of a daughter of the house of Ahab. Also he went with Joram, the son of Ahab, to fight against Hazel, king of Syria, in Ramoth of Gilead, and men of Syria wounded Joram, which turned again, to be healed in Jezreel, for men of Syria wounded him in Ramoth, fighting against Hazel, king of Syria. And Ahaziah, the son of Jehoram, the king of Judah, came down to see Joram, the son of Ahab, into Jezreel, that was sick there. Chapter 9 Forsooth Elisha, the prophet, called one of the sons of prophets, and said to him, Gird thy loins, and take this vessel of oil in thine hand, and go into Ramoth of Gilead. And when thou shalt come thither, thou shalt see Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi. And thou shalt enter, and shalt raise him from the midst of his brethren, and thou shalt lead him into an inner closet. And thou shalt hold the vessel of oil, and thou shalt pour it on his head, and thou shalt say, The Lord saith these things, I have anointed thee into king upon Israel. And then thou shalt open the door, and shalt flee thence, and thou shalt not abide there. Therefore the young waxing man, the child of the prophet, went into Ramoth of Gilead, and entered thither. Lo! Soothly the princes of the host sat there. And he said, O! Oh, prince, I have a word to thee. And Jehu said, To whom of all us? And he said, To thee, thou prince. And he rose, and entered into the closet. And that young man poured oil upon the head of him, and said, The Lord God of Israel saith these things, I have anointed thee into king on the people of the Lord of Israel, and thou shalt smite the house of Ahab, thy Lord, that I venge the blood of my servants' prophets, and the blood of all the servants of the Lord, of the hand of Jezebel. 
and I shall lose all the house of Ahab. And I shall slay of the house of Ahab a pisser to the wall, and the enclosed, and the last in Israel. And I shall give the house of Ahab as the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and as the house of Baasha, the son of Ahir. Also dogs shall eat Jezebel in the field of Jezreel, and there shall be none that shall bury her. And the young man opened the door, and fled. And Jehu went out to the servants of his lord, which said to him, Whether all things be rightful. What came this madman to thee? Which said to them, Ye know the man, and what he spake. And they answered, It is false. But more rather tell thou us what he said. The which said to them, He spake these things and these to me, and said, The Lord saith these things, I have anointed thee king of Israel. Therefore they hasted, and each man took his mantle, and put it under his feet by the likeness of a throne. And they sang with a trump, and said, Jehu shall reign. Therefore Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi, swore with others together against Joram. For sooth Joram had besieged Ramoth of Gilead, he and all Israel, against Hazel, king of Syria. And Joram turned again to be healed in Jezreel for wounds that he had, for men of Syria had smitten him fighting against Hazel, king of Syria. And Jehu said, If it please you, no man go out fleeing from the city, lest he go, and tell in Jezreel. And Jehu went up, and went forth into Jezreel. For Joram was sick there, and Ahaziah, king of Judah, came down to visit Joram. Therefore a watchman, that stood above a tower of Jezreel, saw the multitude of Jehu coming, and he said, I see a multitude. And Joram said, Take thou a chariot, and send it into the meeting of him, and say the goer, whether all things be rightful. Then he, that went upon the chariot, went into the meeting of Jehu, and said, The king saith these things, whether all things be peaced. And Jehu said to him, What to thee and to peace? Pass thou from Joram, and follow me. And the watchman told to Joram, and said, The messenger came to them, and he turneth not again. Also the king sent the second chariot of horses, and he came to them, and said, The king saith these things, whether peace is with you. And Jehu said, What to thee and to peace? Pass thou forth, and follow me. And the aspire told to Joram, and said, He came unto them, and he turneth not again. Forsooth the going of the duke is as the going of Jehu, son of Nimshi, certainly he goeth fast. And Joram said, Join ye a chariot. And they joined his chariot. And Joram, king of Israel, went out, and Ahaziah, king of Judah, went out, each in his chariot. And they went out into the meeting of Jehu, and they found him in the field of Naboth of Jezreel. And when Joram had seen Jehu, he said, Jehu, is peace. And he answered, What peace? Yet the fornications, that is, idolatries, of Jezebel, thy mother, and many poisonings of her be in strength. And Joram turned his hand, and fled, and said to Ahaziah, Treasons, treasons. Ahaziah, certainly Jehu bent a bow with his hand, and smote Joram betwixt the shoulders, and the arrow went out through his heart, and at once he fell down in his chariot. And Jehu said to Bidka the duke, Take thou away, and cast forth him in the field of Naboth of Jezreel. For I have mind, when I and thou sat in the chariot, and followed Ahab, his father, that the Lord raised on him this burden, and said, If not for the blood of Naboth, and for the blood of his sons, which I saw yesterday, saith the Lord, I shall yield to thee in this field, saith the Lord. Now therefore do thou away him, and cast forth him in the field, by the word of the Lord. For Sooth Ahaziah, king of Judah, saw this, and fled by the way of the house of the garden. And Jehu pursued him, and said, Also smite ye this man in his chariot. And men smote Ahaziah in the going up of Gur, that is beside Iblim. And Ahaziah fled into Megiddo, and was dead there. And his servants putted him on his chariot, and brought him into Jerusalem. And they buried him in a sepulchre with his fathers, in the city of David. In the eleventh year of Joram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, Ahaziah reigned upon Judah. And Jehu came into Jezreel. Forsooth when his entering was heard, Jezebel painted her eyes with ointment of lecherous women, and adorned her head. And she beheld by a window Jehu entering by the gate, and she said, 
whether peace may be to Zimri, that slew his lord. And Jehu raised up his face to the window, and said, What woman is this? And twain either three chamberlains bowed themselves to him, and said to him, This is that Jezebel. And he said to them, Cast ye her down. And they cast it down her. And the wall was besprinkled with blood, and the hoofs of horses, that treaded her. And when he had entered to eat and drink, he said, Go ye, and see that cursed woman, and bury ye her, for she is a king's daughter. And when they had gone to bury her, they found not of her, no but the skull, and the feet, and the ends of her hands, and they turned again, and talked to him. And Jehu said, This is the word of the Lord, which he spake by his servant, Elijah of Tishbe, and said, Dogs shall eat the flesh of Jezebel in the field of Jezreel, and the fleshes of Jezebel shall be as dung upon the face of the earth in the field of Jezreel, so that men passing forth thereby say, Lo, this is that Jezebel. Chapter 10 Forsooth seventy sons in Samaria were to Ahab. Therefore Jehu wrote letters, and sent into Samaria to the best men of the city, and to the greater men in birth, and to all the nurses of the sons of Ahab, and said, Anon as ye have taken these letters, ye that have the sons of your lord, and the chariots, and horses, and strong cities, and armors, choose the best, and him that pleaseth to you of the sons of your lord, and set him on the throne of his father, and fight ye for the house of your lord. And they dreaded greatly, and said, Lo, two kings might not stand before him, and how shall we be able to against stand him? Therefore the sovereigns of the house, and the prefect of the city, and the greater men of birth, and the nurses sent to Jehu, and said, We be thy servants, whatever things thou commandest, we shall do, and we shall not make a king to us, do thou whatever thing pleaseth thee. Forsooth he wrote again to them letters the second time, and said, If ye be mine, and obey to me, take ye the heads of the sons of your lord, and come ye to me in this same hour tomorrow into Jezreel. And the sons of the king, seventy men, were nursed at the best men of the city. And when the letters had come to them, they took the sons of the king, and killed those seventy men, and they putted the heads of them in coffins, and sent those to Jehu into Jezreel. And a messenger came to him, and showed to him, and said, They have brought the heads of the sons of the king. Which answered, Put ye those heads to twain heaps, beside the entering of the gate, till the morrow tide. And when it was clear day, he went out, and stood, and said to all the people, Ye be just men, if I conspired against my lord, and killed him, who killed all these? Therefore see ye now, that none of the words of the Lord hath fallen down into the earth, which the Lord spake on the house of Ahab, and the Lord hath done that, that he spake in the hand of his servant, Elijah. Therefore Jehu smote all that were left of the house of Ahab in Jezreel, and all the best men of him, and his known men, and his priests, till no relics of him left. And he rose, and came into Samaria. And when he had come to the chamber of the shepherds in the way, he found there the brethren of Ahaziah, king of Judah. And he said to them, Who be ye? And they answered, We be the brethren of Ahaziah, and we came down to greet the sons of the king, and the sons of the queen. And Jehu said, Take ye them quick. And when they had taken him quick, they strangled them in the cistern, beside the chamber, two and forty men, and he left not any of them. And when he had gone from thence, he found Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, into meeting of him, and he blessed him. And Jehu said to him, Whether thine heart is rightful with mine heart, as mine heart is with thine heart. And Jehonadab said, It is. And Jehu said, If it is, give me thine hand. Which gave his hand to him, and Jehu raised him up to him into his chariot. And he said to him, Come thou with me, and see my fervent love for the Lord. And he led him, put in his chariot, into Samaria. And he killed all men that were residue of Ahab in Samaria, till to one, by the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. Therefore Jehu gathered together all the people, and said to them, Ahab worshipped Baal a little, but I shall worship him more. Now therefore call ye to me all the prophets of Baal, and all his servants, and all his priests, none be that come not, for great sacrifices of me to Baal, whoever shall fail, he shall not live. 
forsooth Jehu did this by treason, that he should destroy all the worshippers of Baal. And he said, Hallow ye a solemn day to Baal. And Jehu called, and sent into all the terms of Israel. And all the servants of Baal came, none was left, and soothly not one was that came not. And they entered into the temple of Baal, and the house of Baal was filled, from one end till to the toffer. And Jehu said to them that were sovereigns over the priests' clothes, Bring ye forth vestments to all the servants of Baal. And they brought forth vestments to them. And Jehu entered, and Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, into the temple of Baal. And Jehu said to the worshippers of Baal, Inquire ye, and see, lest peradventure any of the servants of the Lord be with you, but that the servants be alone of Baal. Then they entered, to make slain sacrifices, and burnt sacrifices. Soothly Jehu had made ready to him without for fourscore men, and had said to them, Whoever shall flee away of all these, which I shall bring into your hands, the life of him that suffereth any escape shall be for the life of him that escapeth. Forsooth it was done, when the burnt sacrifice was filled, Jehu commanded to his knights and dukes, Enter ye, and slay them, that none escape. And the knights and dukes smote with the sharpness of sword, and cast forth. And they went into the city of the temple of Baal, and they brought forth the image from the temple of Baal, and burnt it, and all break it. Also they destroyed the house of Baal, and made privies for it unto this day. Therefore Jehu did away Baal from Israel. Nevertheless he went not away from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that made Israel to do sin, neither he forsook the golden calves, that were in Bethel and in Dan. Forsooth the Lord said to Jehu, For thou didst busily that that was rightful, and that pleased in mine eyes, and hast done against the house of Ahab all things that were in mine heart, thy sons till to the fourth generation shall sit on the throne of Israel. Forsooth Jehu kept not, that he went in the law of the Lord God of Israel in all his heart, for he went not away from the sins of Jeroboam, that made Israel to do sin. In those days the Lord began to be annoyed upon Israel, and Hazel smote them in all the coasts of Israel, from Jordan against the east coast, all the land of Gilead, and of Gad, and of Reuben, and of Manasseh, from Aroa, which is on the strand of Arnon, and Gilead, and Bashan. Forsooth the residue of words of Jehu, and all things that he did, and his strength, whether these be not written in the book of words of days of the kings of Israel. And Jehu slept with his fathers, and they buried him in Samaria, and Jehoahaz, his son, reigned for him. Forsooth the days, in which Jehu reigned upon Israel in Samaria, be eight and twenty years. Chapter 11 Forsooth Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw her son dead, and she rose up, and killed all the seed of the king. And Jehosheba, the daughter of King Jehoram, the sister of Ahaziah, took Josh, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him from the midst of the sons of the king, that were slain, and she took the nurse of him from the house of three stages, and she hid him from the face of Athaliah, so that he were not slain. And he was with her in the house of the Lord privily six years. Forsooth Athaliah reigned upon the land six years, but in the seventh year Jehoiada the priest sent, and took chieftains upon hundreds and knights, and he brought them to him into the temple of the Lord, and covenanted with them a bond of peace, and he made them to swear in the temple of the Lord, and showed to them the son of the king. And he commanded to them, and said, This is the word, that ye ought to do. The third part of you enter in the Sabbath day, and keep ye the watches of the king's house, and another third part be at the gate of Sur, and the third part be at the gate that is behind the dwelling place of the makers of shields, and ye shall keep the watches of the house of Massa. Forsooth two parts of you all going out in the Sabbath, keep they the watches of the house of the Lord about the king. And ye shall compass the king, and ye shall have arms in your hands. And if any man enter into the closing of the temple, be he slain, and ye shall be with the king going in and going out. And the chieftains upon hundreds did by all things that Jehoiada, the priest, had commanded to them. And they all taking their men that entered to the Sabbath day, with them that went out from the Sabbath day, came to Jehoiada, the priest, which gave to them spears and armors of King David, that were in the house of the Lord. And all stood having arms in their hand, 
from the right side of the temple unto the left side of the altar and of the house, about the king. And he brought forth the son of the king, and put upon his head a diadem, and the witnessing. And they made him king, and anointed him. And they clapped with the hand, and said, The king live. Forsooth Athaliah heard the voice of the people running, and she entered to the companies into the temple of the Lord, and she saw the king standing on the throne, by custom, and singers, and companies nigh him, and all the people of the land being glad, and singing with trumps. And she rent her clothes, and cried, Conjuration, Conjuration! I the treason, certainly Jehoiada commanded to the chieftains, that were upon the host, and said to them, Led ye her out of the closings of the temple, and whoever followeth her, be he smitten with sword. And the priest said, Be she not slain in the temple of the Lord. And they putted hands on her, and hurled her by the way of the entering of horses beside the palace, and she was slain there. Therefore Jehoiada made bond of peace betwixt the Lord and the king, and betwixt the people, that it should be the people of the Lord, and betwixt the king and the people. All the people of the land entered into the temple of Baal, and they destroyed the altars of him, and all break strongly the images, and they killed before the altar Matan, the priest of Baal. And Jehoiada the priest set keepings in the house of the Lord, and he took chieftains upon hundreds, and legions of Cherethites, and Pelethites, and all the people of the land. And they led forth the king from the house of the Lord, and they came by the way of the gate of the makers of shields into the palace, and Josh sat upon the throne of kings. And all the people of the land was glad, and the city rested. For sooth Athaliah was slain by sword in the house of the king. And Josh was of seven years, when he began to reign. Chapter 12 Josh reigned in the seventh year of Jehu. He reigned forty years in Jerusalem. The name of his mother was Zibiah of Beersheba. And Josh did rightfulness before the Lord in all the days, in which Jehoiada, the priest, taught him. Nevertheless he did not away the high things, for yet the people made sacrifice, and burnt incense in high things. And Josh said to the priests, All the money of holy things, that is brought of men passing forth into the temple of the Lord, and that is offered for the price of soul, and that men bring willfully, and by freedom of their heart, into the temple of the Lord, priests by their order take it. And the priests repair the coverings of the house, if they see anything needful in repairing. Soothly the priests repaired not the coverings of the temple, unto the three and twentieth year of King Josh. And Josh, the king, called Jehoiada, the bishop, and the priests, and said to them, Why have ye not repaired the coverings of the temple? Therefore do not ye more take money by your order, but yield it to the reparation of the temple. And the priests were forbidden to take more money of the people, and to repair the coverings of the house. And Jehoiada, the bishop, took a coffer of the treasury, and opened an hole above, and set it beside the altar, at the right side of men entering into the house of the Lord. And priests that kept the doors, sent, or put, into it all the money that was brought to the temple of the Lord. And when they saw that full much money was in the treasury, the scribe of the king and the bishop went up, and poured it out, and they numbered the money that was found in the house of the Lord. And they gave it by number and measure in the hand of them, that were sovereigns to the masons of the house of the Lord, the which gave it in carpenters, and in these masons, that wrought in the house of the Lord, and made the coverings, and in these men that hewed stones, and that they should buy trees and stones, that were hewn down, so that the reparation of the house of the Lord was filled in all things, that needed cost to make strong the house. Nevertheless water pots of the temple of the Lord were not made of the same money, and flesh hooks, and senses, and trumps. Each vessel of gold and of silver were not made of the money, that was brought into the temple of the Lord. For it was given to them that made the work, that the temple of the Lord should be repaired. And reckoning was not made to these men that took the money, that they should deal it to craftsmen, but they treated, or spended, it in faith. Soothly they brought not into the temple of the Lord the money offered for trespass, and the money for sins, for it was the priests. Then Hazel, king of Syria, went up and fought against Gath, and he took it, and dressed his face, that he should ascend into Jerusalem. Wherefore Josh, king of Judah, took all the hallowed things, that Jehoshaphat had hallowed, 
and Jehoram, and Ahaziah, the fathers of him, kings of Judah, and which things he had offered, and all the silver, that might be found in the treasures of the temple of the Lord, and in the palace of the king. And he sent to Hazel, king of Syria, and he went away from Jerusalem. Soothly the residue of the words of Josh, and all things that he did, whether these be not written in the book of words of days of the kings of Judah. And the servants of Josh rose, and swore together betwixt themselves, and smote Josh in the house of Milo, and in the going down of Silla. For Josarka, the son of Shemith, and Jehozabad, the son of Shoma, his servants, smote him, and he was dead, and they buried him with his fathers in the city of David, and Amaziah, his son, reigned for him. Chapter 13 In the three and twentieth year of Josh, the son of Ahaziah, king of Judah, Jehoahaz, the son of Jehu, reigned upon Israel, in Samaria seventeen years. And he did evil before the Lord, and he followed the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that made Israel to do sin, and he bowed not away from those sins. And the strong vengeance of the Lord was wroth against Israel, and he betook them into the hand of Hazel, king of Syria, and in the hand of Benhadad, son of Hazel, in all days. Forsooth Jehoahaz besought the face of the Lord, and the Lord heard him, for he saw the anguish of Israel, for the king of Syria had all broken them. And the Lord gave a savior to Israel, and he was delivered from the hand of the king of Syria, and the sons of Israel dwelled in their tabernacles, as yesterday and the third day ago. Nevertheless they departed not from the sins of the house of Jeroboam, that made Israel to do sin, but they went in those sins, soothly also the wood dwelled in Samaria. And to Jehoahaz were not left of the people, but five hundred knights, and ten chariots, and ten thousand of footmen, for the king of Syria had slain him, and had driven him as into powder in the threshing of a cornfloor. Forsooth the residue of words of Jehoahaz, and all things that he did, and the strength of him, whether these be not written in the book of words of days of the kings of Israel. And Jehoahaz slept with his fathers, and they buried him in Samaria, and Jehosh, his son, reigned for him. In the seven and thirtieth year of Josh, king of Judah, Jehosh, the son of Jehoahaz, reigned upon Israel in Samaria sixteen years. And he did that, that is evil in the sight of the Lord, for he bowed not away from all the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that made Israel to do sin, but he went in those sins. Forsooth the residue of words of Jehosh, and all things that he did, but also his strength, how he fought against Amaziah, king of Judah, whether these be not written in the book of words of days of the kings of Israel. And Jehosh slept with his fathers, forsooth Jeroboam sat upon his throne. And Jehosh was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel, forsooth Elisha was sick in a sickness, by which and he was dead. And Jehosh, king of Israel, went down to him, and wept before him, and said, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the charioteer thereof. And Elisha said to him, Bring thou a bow and arrows. And when he had brought to Elisha a bow and arrows, he said to the king of Israel, Set thine hand on the bow. And when he had set his hand, Elisha set his hands on the hands of the king, and said, Open thou the east window. And when he had opened, Elisha said, Shoot thou an arrow, and he shot. And Elisha said, This is an arrow of health of the Lord, and an arrow of health against Syria, and thou shalt smite Syria in effect, till thou waste it. And Elisha said, Take away the arrows. And when he had taken away, Elisha said to him, Smite thou the earth with a dart. And when he had smitten three times, and had stood, the man of God was wroth against him, and said, If thou hadst smitten five times, either six times, either seven times, thou shouldest have smitten Syria unto the ending. Now forsooth thou shalt smite it three times. Then Elisha was dead, and they buried him. And the thieves of Moab came into the land in that year. Forsooth some men buried a man, and they saw the thieves, and they cast forth the dead body into the sepulchre of Elisha. And when it had touched the bones of Elisha, the man lived again, and stood up on his feet. Then Hazel, king of Syria, tormented Israel in all the days of Jehoahaz. And the Lord had mercy on him, and turned again to them for his covenant, that he had made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, 
and he would not destroy them, neither cast them away utterly, into this present time. And Hazel, king of Syria, died, and Ben-Hadad, his son, reigned for him. Forsooth Jehosh, the son of Jehoahaz, took away cities from the hand of Ben-Hadad, the son of Hazel, which he had taken by the right of battle from the hand of Jehoahaz, his father, Jehosh smote him three times, and he yielded those cities to Israel. Chapter 14 In the second year of Jehosh, the son of Jehoahaz, king of Israel, Amaziah, the son of Josh, king of Judah, reigned. Amaziah was of five and twenty years, when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem nine and twenty years, the name of his mother was Jehoadan of Jerusalem. And he did rightfulness before the Lord, nevertheless not as David, his father, did. He did by all things that Josh, his father, did, no, but this only, that he did not away high things, for yet the people made sacrifice and burnt incense in high things. And when he had gotten the realm, he smote his servants, that had killed the king, his father, but he killed not the sons of them that had slain the king, that had slain his father, by that that is written in the book of the law of Moses, as the Lord commanded to Moses, and said, Fathers shall not die for the sons, neither the sons for the fathers, but each man shall die in his own sin. He smote Edom in the valley of makings of salt, he smote ten thousand, and took the stone in battle, and he called the name there of Jokthiel, unto this present day. Then Amaziah sent messengers to Jehosh, the son of Jehoahaz, the son of Jehu, king of Israel, and said, Come thou, and see we us in battle, come thou, and see we us. And Jehosh, king of Israel, sent again to Amaziah, king of Judah, and said mystically, The carduus, or thistle, that is, a low herb, and full of thorns, of the Lebanon sent to the cedar, that is in the Lebanon, and said, Give thy daughter wife to my son, and the beasts of the forest, that be in the Lebanon, passed forth, and trod down the carduus. Thou hast smitten Edom, and haddest the mastery upon it, and thine heart hath raised thee. Be thou satisfied with this glory, and sit in thine house. Why excitest thou evil, or stirrest thou evil, so that thou fall, and Judah with thee? And Amaziah assented not to be in peace. And Jehosh, king of Israel, went up, and he and Amaziah, king of Judah, saw themselves in Beth Shemesh, a city of Judah. And Judah was smitten before Israel and they fled each man into his tabernacles. Soothly Jehosh, king of Israel, took in Beth Shemesh Amaziah, king of Judah, the son of Josh, the son of Ahaziah, and brought him into Jerusalem. And he brake the wall of Jerusalem, from the gate of Ephraim unto the gate of the corner, by four hundred cubits. And he took all the gold and silver, and all the vessels, that were found in the house of the Lord, and in the treasures of the king, and he took hostages, and turned again into Samaria. Soothly the residue of words of Jehosh, which he did, and his strength, by which he fought against Amaziah, king of Judah, whether these be not written in the book of words of days of the kings of Israel. And Jehosh slept with his fathers, and was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel, and Jeroboam, his son, reigned for him. For Sooth Amaziah, the son of Josh, king of Judah, lived five and twenty years, after that Jehosh, the son of Jehoahaz, king of Israel, was dead. Forsooth the residue of the words of Amaziah, whether these be not written in the book of words of days of the kings of Judah. And swearing together, that is, conspiracy, in Jerusalem was made against him, and he fled into Lachish, and they sent after him into Lachish, and killed him there. And they bear out him in horses, and he was buried in Jerusalem with his fathers, in the city of David. Forsooth all the people of Judah took Azariah, having sixteen years, and made him king for his father Amaziah. He builded Eleth, and restored it to Judah, after that the king slept with his fathers. In the fifteenth year of Amaziah, the son of Josh, king of Judah, Jeroboam, the son of Jehosh, king of Israel, reigned in Samaria one and forty years, and did that, that is evil before the Lord. He went not away from all the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, that made Israel to do sin. He restored the terms of Israel, from the entering of Hamath unto the sea of wilderness, by the word of the Lord God of Israel, which he spake by his servant Jonah, the son of Amittai, by Jonah, the prophet, that was of Gath, that is in Hepha. 
for the Lord saw the full bitter torment of Israel, and that they were wasted unto the closed men of prison, and to the last men, and there was none that helped Israel. And the Lord spake not, that he should do away Israel from under heaven, but he saved them in the hand of Jeroboam, the son of Jehosh. Forsooth the residue of the words of Jeroboam, and all things that he did, and the strength of him, by which he fought, and how he restored Damascus and Hamath of Judah in Israel, whether these be not written in the book of words of days of the kings of Israel. And Jeroboam slept with his fathers, the kings of Israel, and Zechariah, his son, reigned for him. Chapter 15 In the seven and twentieth year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, Azariah, the son of Amaziah, king of Judah, reigned. He was of sixteen years, when he began to reign, and he reigned two and fifty years in Jerusalem. The name of his mother was Jecholiah of Jerusalem. And he did that, that was pleasant before the Lord, by all things that Amaziah, his father, had done. Nevertheless he destroyed not high things, yet the people made sacrifice and burnt incense in high things. Forsooth the Lord smote the king, and he was leprous till into the day of his death, and he dwelled in an house freely by himself. Soothly Jotham, son of the king, governed the palace, and deemed the people of the land. Forsooth the residue of the words of Azariah, and all things that he did, whether these be not written in the book of words of days of the kings of Judah. And Azariah slept with his fathers, and they buried him with his elder men in the city of David, and Jotham, his son, reigned for him. In the eight and thirtieth year of Azariah, king of Judah, Zechariah, the son of Jeroboam, reigned upon Israel in Samaria six months. And he did that, that was evil before the Lord, as his fathers did. He departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that made Israel to do sin. Forsooth Shalom, the son of Jabesh, conspired against him in Samaria, and Shalom smote him before the people, and killed him, and reigned for him. And the residue of the words of Zechariah, whether these be not written in the book of words of days of the kings of Israel. This is the word of the Lord, which he spake to Jehu, and said, Thy sons till to the fourth generation shall sit on the throne of thee of Israel, and it was done so. Shalom, the son of Jabesh, reigned in the ninth and thirty year of Azariah, king of Judah, soothly he reigned one month in Samaria. And Menahem, the son of Gadi, went up from Terzar, and came into Samaria, and he smote Shalom, the son of Jabesh, in Samaria, and killed him, and reigned for him. Soothly the residue of the words of Shalom, and his conspiracy, by which he set it treasons, whether these be not written in the book of words of days of the kings of Israel. Then Menahem smote the city Tisa, and all the men that were therein, and the terms thereof from Terzar, for they would not open the gates to him, and he killed all the women thereof with child, and carved them. In the nine and thirtieth year of Azariah, king of Judah, Menahem, the son of Gadi, reigned upon Israel ten years in Samaria. And he did that, that was evil before the Lord. He departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that made Israel to do sin. In all the days of him, Pul, the king of Assyria, came into Terzar. And Menahem gave to Pul a thousand talents of silver, that he should be to him into help, and should make steadfast his realm. And Menahem set a tollage of silver on Israel, to all mighty men and rich, that he would give to the king of Assyria. He set it fifty shekels of silver to one man, that is, to each man, and the king of Assyria turned again, and dwelled not in Terzar. Forsooth the residue of the words of Menahem, and all things that he did, whether these be not written in the book of words of days of the kings of Israel. And Menahem slept with his fathers, and Pekahiah, his son, reigned for him. In the fiftieth year of Azariah, king of Judah, Pekahiah, the son of Menahem, reigned on Israel in Samaria two years. And he did that, that was evil before the Lord. He departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that made Israel to do sin. Forsooth Pekah, the son of Ramalia, duke of his host, conspired against him, and smote him in Samaria, in the tower of the king's house, that is, the palace, besides Argob, and besides Aria, and he smote him with fifty men of the sons of Gileadites, and Pekah killed him, and reigned for him. Soothly the residue of the words of Pekahia, 
and all things that he did, whether these be not written in the book of words of days of the kings of Israel. In the two and fiftieth year of Azariah, king of Judah, Pekah, the son of Ramalia, reigned in Samaria twenty years. And he did that, that was evil before the Lord. He departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that made Israel to do sin. In the days of Pekah, king of Israel, Tiglathpilzer, king of Ashur, came, and took Ejon, and Abel, the house of Marcha, and Genoa, and Kadesh, and Hazer, and Gilead, and Galilee, and all the land of Naphtali, and translated them into Assyrians. Forsooth Hoshe, the son of Ella, conspired, and set treasons against Pekah, the son of Ramalia, and smote him, and killed him. And he reigned for him, in the twentieth year of Jotham, the son of Uzziah. Forsooth the residue of the words of Pekah, and all things that he did, whether these be not written in the book of words of days of the kings of Israel. In the second year of Pekah, the son of Ramalia, king of Israel, Jotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, reigned. He was of five and twenty years, when he began to reign, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. The name of his mother was Jerusha, the daughter of Zadok. And he did that, that was pleasant before the Lord. He wrought by all things, that his father Uzziah had done. Nevertheless he did not away high things. Yet the people made sacrifice, and burnt incense in high things. He builded the highest gate of the house of the Lord. Forsooth the residue of words of Jotham, and all things that he did, whether these be not written in the book of words of days of the kings of Judah. In those days the Lord began to send into Judah Rezan, the king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Ramalia. And Jotham slept with his fathers, and was buried with them in the city of David, his father, and Ahaz, his son, reigned for him. Chapter 16 In the seventeenth year of Pekah, the son of Ramalia, Ahaz, the son of Jotham, king of Judah, reigned. Ahaz was of twenty years, when he began to reign, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. He did not that, that was pleasant in the sight of his Lord God, as David, his father, did, but he went in the way of the kings of Israel. Furthermore and he hallowed his son, and bare, or drew him, through the fire, after the idols of heathen men, which the Lord destroyed before the sons of Israel. And he offered sacrifices, and burnt incense in high places, and in hills, and under each tree full of boughs. Then Rezan, king of Syria, and Pekah, son of Ramalia, king of Israel, went up into Jerusalem to fight with Ahaz, and when they besieged Ahaz, they might not overcome him. In that time Rezan, king of Syria, restored Eleth to Syria, and casted out the Jews from Eleth, and Edomians and men of Syria came into Eleth, and dwelled there till into this day. For Ahaz sent messengers to Tiglathpilzer, king of Assyrians, and said, I am thy servant and thy son. Go thou up, and make me safe from the hand of the king of Syria, and from the hand of the king of Israel, that have risen together against me. And when Ahaz had gathered together silver and gold, that might be found in the house of the Lord, and in the treasures of the king, he sent gifts to the king of Assyrians, and he assented to his will. Soothly the king of Assyrians went up into Damascus, and wasted it, and translated the dwellers thereof to Kir. Soothly he killed Rezan. And King Ahaz went into meeting to Tiglathpilzer, king of Assyrians, and when King Ahaz had seen the altar of Damascus, he sent into Jerusalem to Aria, the priest, the exemplar and likeness thereof, by all the work thereof. And Aria, the priest, builded an altar by all things that King Ahaz had commanded from Damascus. So did the priest Aria, till King Ahaz came from Damascus. And when the king came from Damascus, he saw the altar, and worshipped it. And he went up, and offered burnt sacrifices, and his sacrifice. And he offered moist sacrifices, and he poured the blood of peaceable things, which he had offered, on the altar. Forsooth he did away the brazen altar, that was before the Lord, from the face of the temple, and from the place of the altar, and the place of the temple of the Lord, and set it on the side of the altar at the north, and he set God's altar at the north side of his altar. Also King Ahaz commanded to Aria, the priest, and said, Offer thou upon the more altar, that is, on the new altar, the burnt sacrifice of the Morotide, and the sacrifice of the Eventide, and the burnt sacrifice of the king, 
and the sacrifice of him, and the burnt sacrifice of all the people of the land, and the sacrifices of them, and the moist sacrifices of them, and thou shalt pour out upon that new altar all the blood of burnt sacrifice, and all the blood of slain sacrifice, soothly the brazen altar shall be ready at my will. Therefore Aria, the priest, did by all things that King Ahaz had commanded to him. Forsooth King Ahaz took the painted fundaments of pillars, and the washing vessel, that was set above, and he put down the sea, that is, the washing vessel for priests, from the brazen oxen, that sustained it, and he set it on the pavement arrayed with stone. Also he turned the chamber of Sabbath, which he had builded in the temple, and he turned the entering of the king without fifth into the temple of the Lord, for the king of Assyrians. Forsooth the residue of words of Ahaz, and all things which he did, whether these be not written in the book of words of days of the kings of Judah. And Ahaz slept with his fathers, and was buried with them in the city of David, and Hezekiah, his son, reigned for him. Chapter 17 In the twelfth year of Ahaz, king of Judah, Hoshea, the son of Ella, reigned in Samaria upon Israel nine years. And he did evil before the Lord, but not as the kings of Israel that were before him. Shalmanzer, king of Assyrians, went up against Hoshea, and Hoshea was made servant to him, and yielded tributes to him. And when the king of Assyrians had perceived, that Hoshea enforced to rebel, and had sent messengers to So, king of Egypt, that he should not give tributes to the king of Assyrians, as he was wont by all years, the king of Assyrians besieged him, and sent him bound into prison. And Shalmanzer went through all the land, and he went up to Samaria, and besieged it three years. Forsooth in the ninth year of Hoshea, the king of Assyrians took Samaria, and translated Israel into Assyrians, and he put them in Hala and in Habor, beside the flood Gozan, in the cities of Medes. Forsooth it was done, when the sons of Israel had sinned before their Lord God, that led them out of the land of Egypt, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, they worshipped alien gods, and went by the custom of heathen men, which the Lord had wasted in the sight of the sons of Israel, and of the kings of Israel, for they had done in like manner. And the sons of Israel offended their Lord God by words not rightful, and they builded to themselves high things in all their cities, from the tower of keepers unto a strengthened city. And they made to them images, and mome woods, in each high hill, and under each tree full of boughs, and they burnt their incense on the altars, by the custom of heathen men, which the Lord had translated from the face of them. And they did worst words, that is, worst works, and they wrathed the Lord, and worshipped uncleannesses, of which the Lord commanded to them, that they should not do this word. And the Lord witnessed in Israel and in Judah, by the hand of all prophets, and seers, and said, Turn ye again from your worst ways, your full evil ways, and keep my commandments and ceremonies, by all the law which I commanded to your fathers, and as I sent to you in the hand of my servants prophets, which heard not, but made hard their knoll by the knoll of their fathers, that would not obey to their Lord God. And they casted away the lawful things of him, and the covenant that he covenanted with their fathers, and the witnessings by which he witnessed to them. And they followed vanities, that is, idols, and did vainly, and followed heathen men, that were about them, of which things the Lord commanded to them, that they should not do as also those heathen men did. And they forsook all the commandments of their Lord God, and they made to them two molten calves, and mome woods, and worshipped all the knighthood of heaven, that is, sun, and moon, and other planets, and they served Baal. And hallowed to him their sons, and their daughters, through fire, and they served to false divining, and to divining by chittering of birds, and they gave themselves to do evil before the Lord, and they wrathed him. And the Lord was wroth greatly to Israel, and he took away them from his sight, and none left, no but the lineage of Judah only. But neither Judah himself kept the behests of the Lord his God, but nevertheless he erred, and went in the error of Israel, which it wrought. And the Lord casted away all the seed of Israel, and tormented them, and betook them in the hand of raveners, till he had cast away them from his face, from that time in which Israel was parted from the house of David, and made to them a king, Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. For Jeroboam separated Israel from the Lord, and made him to do great sin. 
And the sons of Israel went in all the sins of Jeroboam, which he had done. And they departed not from those sins, till the Lord did away Israel from his face, as he spake in the hand of all his servants' prophets. And Israel was translated from his land into Assyrians till into this day. For sooth the king of Assyrians brought people from Babylon, and from Cutha, and from Ava, and from Hamath, and from Sepharvaim, and set them in the cities of Samaria for the sons of Israel. And these had in possession Samaria, and they dwelled in the cities thereof. And when they began to dwell there, they dreaded not the Lord. And the Lord sent to them lions, the which killed them. And it was told to the king of Assyrians, and was said, The folks which thou hast translated, and maddest to dwell in the cities of Samaria, know not the lawful things of God of the land, and the Lord hath sent lions into them, and lo, those slay them, for they know not the custom of God of the land. Soothly the king of Assyrians commanded, and said, Led ye thither one of the priests, which ye brought prisoners from thence, that he go, and dwell with them, and teach them the lawful things of God of the land. Therefore when one of these priests had come, that were led prisoners from Samaria, he dwelled in Bethel, and taught them, how they should worship the Lord. And each folk made his god, and they set those gods in the high temples, which the men of Samaria had made, folk and folk in their cities, in which they dwelled. For men of Babylon made Succothbeneth, and men of Cuth made Nergal, and men of Hamath made Ashima, and Avites made Navaz and Tartak. Soothly they that were of Sepharvaim burnt their sons in fire to Adramelech and Anamelech, the gods of Sepharvaim. And nevertheless they worshipped the Lord. For sooth of the last men, that is, of vile persons, that were not of priests' kin, by the law of Moses, they made priests of the high things, and set them in high temples. And when they worshipped God, they served also the gods, by the custom of heathen men, from which they were translated to Samaria. Till to this present day they follow the old custom. They dreaded not the Lord, neither they keep his ceremonies, and dooms, and law, and commandment, which the Lord commanded to the sons of Jacob, whom he named Israel. And the Lord smote a covenant with them, and commanded to them, and said, Do not ye dread alien gods, and honor ye not outwardly them, neither worship ye inwardly them, and make ye not sacrifice to them, but your Lord God, that led you out of the land of Egypt in great strength, and in an arm stretched out, dread ye him, and worship ye him, and make ye sacrifice to him. Also keep ye the ceremonies, and dooms, and the law, and the commandment, which he wrote to you, that ye do it in all days, and dread ye not alien gods. And do not ye forget the covenant, which he, the Lord smote with you, neither worship ye alien gods, but dread ye your Lord God, and he shall deliver you from the hand of all your enemies. For sooth they heard not, but did by their former custom. Therefore soothly these heathen men dreaded God. But nevertheless they served also their idols, for both their sons and the sons of their sons do so, till into this present day, as their fathers did. Chapter 18 In the third year of Hoshea, the son of Ella, king of Israel, reigned Hezekiah, son of Ahaz, king of Judah. He was of five and twenty years, when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem nine and twenty years. The name of his mother was Abi, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did that, that was good before the Lord, by all things that David, his father, had done. And he destroyed high places, and all break images, and cut down woods, and he break the brazen serpent, whom Moses had made, for unto that time the sons of Israel burnt incense to it, and he called the name of it Nehushtan. And he hoped in the Lord God of Israel. Therefore after him none was like him of all the kings of Judah, but neither also in the kings that were before him. And he cleaved to the Lord, and went not away from his steps, and he did the commandments of the Lord, which the Lord commanded to Moses. Wherefore and the Lord was with him, and he governed wisely himself in all things, to which he went forth. Also he rebelled against the king of Assyrians, and therefore he served not to him, and he smote Philistines till to Gaza, and all the terms of them, from the tower of the keepers unto a city made strong. In the fourth year of king Hezekiah, that was the seventh year of Hoshea, the son of Ella, king of Israel, Shalmanzer, king of Assyrians, went up to Samaria, and fought against it, and took it. 
for after three years, in the sixth year of Hezekiah, that is, in the ninth year of Hoshea, king of Israel, Samaria was taken, and the king of Assyrians translated Israel into Assyrians, and he set them in Hala, and in Habor, rivers of Gozan, in the cities of Medes. For they heard not the voice of their Lord God, but they break his covenant. They heard not, neither did all things, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded. In the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah, Sennacherib, king of Assyrians, went up to all the strengthened cities of Judah, and took them. Then Hezekiah, king of Judah, sent messengers to the king of Assyrians into Lachish, and said, I have sinned. Go away from me, and I shall bear all things, that thou shalt put to me. Therefore the king of Assyrians parted on Hezekiah, king of Judah, three hundred talents of silver, and thirty talents of gold. And Hezekiah gave all the silver, that was found in the house of the Lord, and in the king's treasures, to the king of Assyrians. In that time Hezekiah brake the gates of the temple of the Lord, and the plates of gold, which he had fastened, and he gave those to the king of Assyrians. Forsooth the king of Assyrians sent Tartan and Rabshakeh from Lachish to king Hezekiah, with strong hand to Jerusalem. And when they had gone up, they came to Jerusalem, and stood beside the water conduit of the higher cistern, which is in the way of the fuller, or of Tucker. And they called the king, Soothly Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, the sovereign of the house, and Shebna, the scribe, and Joah, chancellor, the son of Asif, went out to them. And Rabshakeh said to them, Speak ye to Hezekiah, the great king, the king of Assyrians, saith these things, What is this trust, in which thou endeavourest thee? In hap thou hast taken counsel, that thou wouldest make thee ready to battle. In whom trustest thou, that thou be hardy to rebel against Sennacherib? Whether thou hoppest in a staff of reed and broken, Egypt, on which, if a man leaneth, it shall be broken, and shall enter into his hand, and shall pierce it. So is Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to all men that trust in him. That if thou sayest to me, We have trust in the Lord our God. Whether this is not he, whose high things and altars Hezekiah took away, and commanded to Judah and to Jerusalem, saying, Ye shall worship before this altar in Jerusalem. Now therefore, give ye pledges to my Lord, the king of Assyrians, and I shall give to you two thousand of horses, and see ye, whether ye be able to have riders of them. And how may ye withstand before one prince of the least servants of my Lord? Whether thou hast trust in Egypt, for chariots and knights thereof, whether I ascended without God's will to this place, that I should destroy it. The Lord said to me, Ascend thou to this land, and destroy thou it. Forsooth Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, and Shebna, and Joah, said to Rabshakeh, We pray thee, that thou speak by the language of Syria to us, thy servants. For we understand this language, and that thou speak not to us by the language of Jews, while the people heareth, which is on the wall. And Rabshakeh answered, and said, Whether my Lord sent me to thy Lord and to thee, that I should speak these words, and not rather to the men that sit on the wall, that they eat their turds, and drink their piss with you. Therefore Rabshakeh stood, and cried with great voice by language of Jews, and said, Hear ye the words of the great king, the king of Assyrians. The king saith these things, Hezekiah deceive not you, for he may not deliver you from mine hand, neither give he trust to you on the Lord, and say, The Lord delivering shall deliver us, and this city shall not be partaken in the hand of the king of Assyrians. Do not ye hear Hezekiah. For the king of Assyrians saith these things, Do ye with me that, that is profitable to you, and go ye out to me. And each man shall eat of his vinery, and of his fig tree, and ye shall drink waters of your cisterns, till I come, and translate you, or bear you over, into a land which is like your land, into a fruitful land, and plenteous of wine, a land of bread, and of vineries, a land of olive trees, and of oil, and of honey, and ye shall live, and ye shall not die. Do not ye hear Hezekiah, that deceiveth you, and saith, The Lord shall deliver you. Whether the gods of heathen men delivered their land from the hand of the king of Assyrians? Where is God of Hamath, and of Arpad? Where is God of Sepharvaim, of Hena, and of Iva? whether they delivered Samaria from mine hand. For who be they in all gods of lands, that delivered their country from mine hand, that the Lord may deliver Jerusalem from mine hand? 
therefore the people was still, and answered not anything to him, for they had taken commandment of the king, that they should not answer to him. And Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, the sovereign of the house, and Shebna, the scribe, and Joah, the chancellor, the son of Asaph, came with rent clothes to Hezekiah, and told to him the words of Rabshakeh. Chapter 19 And when King Hezekiah had heard these things, he rent his clothes, and was covered with a sackcloth, and he entered into the house of the Lord. And he sent Eliakim, sovereign of the house, and Shebna, the scribe, and eld men of the priests, covered with sackcloths, to Isaiah, the prophet, the son of Amoz. The which said to him, Hezekiah saith these things, This day is a day of tribulation, and of blaming, and of blasphemy. Sons came unto the birth, and the mother travelling hath not strength thereto. If peradventure thy Lord God hear all the words of Rabshakeh, whom the king of Assyrians, his Lord hath sent, that he should despise the Lord living, and reprove by words, which thy Lord God heard, and make thou prayer for these remnants of the people that be found. Therefore the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah. And Isaiah said to them, Say ye these things to your Lord, the Lord saith these things, do not thou dread of the face, or showing, of the words that thou heardest, by which the servants of the king of Assyrians blasphemed me. Lo, I shall send to him a spirit, and he shall hear a messenger, and he shall turn again into his land, and I shall cast him down by sword in his own land. Therefore Rabshakeh turned again, and found the king of Assyrians fighting against Libna, for he had heard that the king had gone away from Lachish. And when he had heard of Tirica, king of Ethiopia, men saying, Lo, he went out, that he fight against thee, that he should go against that king, he sent messengers to Hezekiah, and said, Say ye these things to Hezekiah, king of Judah, thy Lord God, in whom thou hast trust, deceive not thee. Neither say thou, Jerusalem shall not be betaken into the hands of the king of Assyrians, for thou thyself hast heard what things the kings of Assyrians have done in all lands, how they have wasted them, whether therefore thou alone mayest be delivered, whether the gods of heathen men delivered all men which my fathers destroyed, that is, Gozan, and Haran, and Rezeph, and the sons of Eden, that were in Thelazar. Where is the king of Hamath, and the king of Arpad, and the king of the city of Sepharvaim, of Hena, and of Ivor? Therefore when Hezekiah had taken the letters from the hand of the messengers, and had read them, he went up into the house of the Lord, and spread it abroad those letters before the Lord, and prayed in his sight, and said, Lord God of Israel, that sittest upon cherubim, thou art God alone of all kings of earth, thou maddest heaven and earth. Bow thine ear, and hear. Open thine eyes, Lord, and see. And hear all the words of Sennacherib, the which hath sent to us, that he would despise the living God. Truly, Lord, the kings of Assyrians have destroyed heathen men, and the lands of all men, and they have sent the gods of them into fire, for they were not gods, but works of men's hands, of wood and of stone, and they destroyed them. Now therefore, our Lord God, make us safe from the hand of them, that all the realms of earth know that thou art the Lord God alone. For sooth Isaiah, the son of Amoz, sent to Hezekiah, and said, The Lord God of Israel saith these things, I have heard those things, which thou praidest me on Sennacherib, king of Assyrians. This is the word, that the Lord hath spoken of him, Thou virgin the daughter of Zion, the king of Assyria hath despised thee, and scorned thee. Thou daughter of Jerusalem, he moved his head after thy back. O, oh, Sennacherib, whom hast thou despised, and whom hast thou blasphemed? Against whom hast thou raised thy voice, and hast raised thine eyes on high? Against the holy of Israel, by the hand of thy servants thou hast despised the Lord, and saidest, In the multitude of my chariots I went up into the high things of hills, in the highness of Lebanon, and cut it down the high cedars thereof, and the chosen box trees thereof. And I entered unto the terms, or uttermost coasts, thereof, and I cut it down the forest of Carmel thereof. And I drank alien waters, and I made dry with the steps of my feet all waters enclosed. Whether thou heardest not, what I made at the beginning, from eld days I made it, and now I have brought it forth, and strengthened cities of fighters shall be into falling of hills. And they that sit meek in hand in those cities, trembled together, 
and be shamed. They be made as the hay of the field, and as green herb of roofs, which dried, or withered, before that it came to ripeness. And I knew thy dwelling, and thy going out, and thine entering, and thy way, and thy strong vengeance against me. Thou were wroth against me, and thy pride went up into mine ears. Therefore I shall put a ring in thy nostrils, and a barnacle in thy lips, and I shall lead thee again into the way by which thou camest. Forsooth Hezekiah, this shall be a sign to thee. Eat thou in this year that, that thou findest. Forsooth in the second year, those things that grow by their own will. Sooth ye in the third year, sow ye, and reap ye, and plant ye vineries, and eat the fruits of those. And whatever thing shall be residue, or left over, of the house of Judah, it shall send root downward, and shall make fruit upward. For the relics, or folk left, shall go out of Jerusalem, and those who shall be saved, shall go out of the hill of Zion, the fervent love of the Lord of hosts shall do this. Wherefore the Lord saith these things of the king of Assyrians, he shall not enter into this city Jerusalem, neither he shall send an arrow into it, neither shield of him shall occupy it, neither stronghold, either besieging, shall compass it. He shall turn again by the way by which he came, and he shall not enter into this city, saith the Lord. And I shall defend this city, and I shall save it for myself, and for David, my servant. Therefore it was done, in that night the angel of the Lord came, and smote in the castles of the Assyrians an hundred fourscore and five thousand. And when Sennacherib had risen early, he saw all the bodies of dead men, and he departed and went away. And Sennacherib, king of Assyrians, turned again, and dwelled in Nineveh. And when he worshipped in the temple Nisroch his god, Adramelech and Shezer, his sons, killed him with sword. And they fled into the land of Armenia, and Esarhaddon, his son, reigned for him. Chapter 20 In those days Hezekiah was sick unto the death, and Isaiah, the prophet, the son of Amoz, came to him, and said to him, The Lord God saith these things, Command to thine house, that is, make thy testament, dispose to thine house, for thou shalt die, and thou shalt not live. And Hezekiah turned his face to the wall, and worshipped the Lord, and said, I beseech, Lord, have mind, how I have gone before thee in truth, and in a perfect heart, and I did that, that was pleasant before thee. Then Hezekiah wept with a great weeping, and before that Isaiah went out half the part of the court, the word of the Lord was made to Isaiah, and said, Turn thou again, and say to Hezekiah, the Duke of my people, the Lord, God of David, thy father, saith these things, I have heard thy prayer, and I saw thy tears, and lo, I have healed thee, in the third day thou shalt go up into the temple of the Lord, and I shall add fifteen years to thy days, but also I shall deliver thee and this city from the hand of the king of Assyrians, and I shall defend this city for me, and for David, my servant. And Isaiah said, Bring ye to me a gobbet of figs. And when they had brought it, and had put on his botch, and had put it on the botch of Hezekiah, he was healed. And Hezekiah said to Isaiah, What shall be the sign, that the Lord shall heal me, and also that in the third day I shall go up into the temple of the Lord? To whom Isaiah said, This shall be a sign of the Lord, that the Lord shall do the word which he spake. Wilt thou, that the shadow go further by ten lines, either turn again by so many degrees? And Hezekiah said, It is light, or easy, that the shadow increase by ten lines, neither I will that this be done, but that it turn again backward by ten degrees. Then Isaiah, the prophet, called inwardly the Lord, and brought again backward by ten degrees the shadow by the same lines, by which it had gone down then in the horologe of Ahaz. In that time, Beradak Baladan, the son of Baladan, the king of Babylon, sent letters and gifts to Hezekiah, for he had heard that Hezekiah had been sick, and had recovered. And Hezekiah was glad in the coming of them, and he showed to them the house of spiceries, and gold, and silver, and diverse pigments, also ointments, and the house of his vessels, and all things that he might have in his treasures, there was not any word, or thing, in his house, and in all his power, that Hezekiah showed not to them. Soothly Isaiah, the prophet, came to King Hezekiah, and said to him, What said these men, either from whence came they to thee? 
to whom Hezekiah said, They came to me from a far land, from Babylon. And he answered, What have they seen in thine house? Hezekiah said, They have seen all things, whatever things be in mine house. Nothing is in my treasures, which I showed not to them. Therefore Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Hear thou the word of the Lord. Lo, days come, and all things that be in thine house, and which things thy fathers made till into this day, shall be taken away into Babylon, not anything shall dwell, saith the Lord. But also of thy sons, that shall go out of thee, which thou shalt beget, shall be taken, and they shall be geldings in the palace of the king of Babylon. And Hezekiah said to Isaiah, The word of the Lord, which he spake, is good, only peace and truth be in my days. Forsooth the residue of words of Hezekiah, and all his strength, and how he made a cistern, and a water conduit, and brought water into the city, whether these be not written in the book of words of days of the kings of Judah. And Hezekiah slept with his fathers, and Manasseh, his son, reigned for him. Chapter 21 Manasseh was of twelve years, when he began to reign, and he reigned five and fifty years in Jerusalem. The name of his mother was Hepzibah. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, after the evils of heathen men, the which men the Lord did away from the face of the sons of Israel. And he was turned, and builded high things, which Hezekiah, his father destroyed. And he raised up altars of Baal, and he made Mome woods, as Ahab, king of Israel, had done. And he worshipped without fifth all the knighthood of heaven, and worshipped it in heart. And he builded altars in the house of the Lord, of which the Lord said, I shall set my name in Jerusalem. And he builded altars to all the knighthood of heaven in the two large places of the temple of the Lord. And he led over his son through the fire. And he used false divinings in altars, on which sacrifice was made to fiends. And he kept false divinings by chittering of birds. And he made men to have evil spirits speaking in the womb. And he multiplied false diviners in entrails of beasts sacrificed to fiends, that he should do evil before the Lord, and stir him to ire. And he set an idol of wood, that he had made, in the temple of the Lord, of which temple the Lord spake to David and to Solomon, his son, saying, I shall set my name without end in this temple, and in Jerusalem, which I chose of all the lineages of Israel. And I shall no more make the foot of Israel to be moved from the land which I gave to the fathers of them. So nevertheless if they keep in work all things that I have commanded to them, and all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded to them. Soothly they heard not, but were deceived of Manasseh, that they did evil over heathen men, which the Lord all break from the face of the sons of Israel. And the Lord spake in the hand of his servants prophets, and said, For Manasseh, king of Judah, did these worst abominations over all things which Amorites did before him, and made also the people of Judah to do sin in his uncleannesses. Therefore the Lord God of Israel saith these things, Lo! I shall bring in evils upon Jerusalem and Judah, that whoever heareth, both his ears tingle or ring. And I shall hold forth upon Jerusalem the cord of Samaria, and the burden of the house of Ahab, and I shall do away Jerusalem, as tables be wont to be done away, and I shall do away and overturn it, and I shall lead full off to pointal upon the face thereof. Forsooth I shall leave remnants of mine heritage, and I shall betake them into the hand of enemies thereof, and they shall be in destroying, and in raven to all their adversaries, for they did evil before me, and they continued in stirring me to ire, from the day in which their fathers went out of the land of Egypt, unto this day. Furthermore also Manasseh shedded full much innocent blood, till he filled Jerusalem unto the mouth, without his sins by which he made Judah to do sin, to do evil before the Lord. Forsooth the residue of the words of Manasseh, and all things that he did, and his sin that he sinned, whether these be not written in the book of words of days of the kings of Judah. And Manasseh slept with his fathers, and was buried in the garden of his house, in the garden of Uzzah, and Amon, his son, reigned for him. Amon was of two and twenty years, when he began to reign, and he reigned two years in Jerusalem. The name of his mother was Meshulameth, the daughter of Haraz of Jotbar. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, as Manasseh, his father, had done. And he went in all the way, by which his father had gone, and he served to uncleannesses, that is, idols, 
to which his father had served, and he worshipped those, and he forsook the Lord God of his fathers, and he went not in the way of the Lord. And his servants set it treasons to him, and killed the king in his house. Soothly the people of the Lord smote all the men, that had conspired against King Amon, and they ordained to them a king, Josiah, his son, for him. Forsooth the residue of words of Amon, which he did, whether these be not written in the book of words of days of the kings of Judah. And he slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the sepulchre in the garden of Uzzah, and Josiah, his son, reigned for him. Chapter 22 Josiah was of eight years, when he began to reign, and he reigned one and thirty years in Jerusalem. The name of his mother was Jadida, the daughter of Adiah of Boscath. And he did that, that was pleasant before the Lord, and he went by all the ways of David, his father. He bowed not, neither to the right side, nor of the left side. Forsooth in the eighteenth year of King Josiah, the king sent Shaphan, the son of Azalea, the son of Meshullam, scribe, I the doctor, of the temple of the Lord, and said to him, Go thou to Hilkiah, the great priest, that the money, which is borne into the temple of the Lord, be molten together, which money the porters of the temple have gathered of the people, and that it be given to craftsmen by the sovereigns of the house of the Lord, which also parted that money to them that work in the temple of the Lord, to repair the roofs of the temple of the Lord, that is, to carpenters, and to masons, and to them that make broken things, and that timber and stones of quarriers be bought, to repair the temple of the Lord. Nevertheless the silver, which they take, that the workmen take, be not reckoned to them, but have they it in power, and in faith. And Hilkiah, the bishop, said to Shaphan, the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan, the scribe, which also read it. Also Shaphan, the scribe, came to the king, and told to him those things, which Hilkiah had commanded, and he said, Thy servants have spended the money that was found in the house of the Lord, and they have given that it should be parted to craftsmen of the sovereigns of works of the temple of the Lord. Also Shaphan, the scribe, told to the king, and said, Hilkiah, the priest of God, hath given to me a book. And when Shaphan had read that book before the king, and the king had heard the words of the book of the law of the Lord, he rent his clothes. And he commanded to Hilkiah, the priest, and to Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, and to Akbor, the son of Michiah, and to Shaphan the scribe, and to Asahir, servant of the king, and said, Go ye, and ask, or counsel ye, the Lord on me, and on the people, and on all Judah, of the words of this book, that is found. For great ire of the Lord is kindled against us, for our fathers heard not the words of this book, to do all thing which is written to us. Therefore Hilkiah, the priest, and Ahikam, and Akbor, and Shaphan, and Asahir, went to Huldah, the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tikva, the son of Harhis, keeper of the clothes, the which Huldah dwelled in Jerusalem, in the second dwelling, in the second environing of the wall. And they spake to her. And she answered to them, The Lord God of Israel saith these things, Say ye to the man, that sent you to me, The Lord God of Israel saith these things, Lo! I shall bring evils upon this place, and upon the dwellers thereof, and I shall fulfill all the words which the king of Judah read. For they forsook me, and made sacrifice to alien gods, and stirred me to ire in all the works of their hands, and mine indignation shall be kindled in this place, and shall not be quenched. Soothly to the king of Judah, that sent you, that ye shall counsel the Lord, that ye shall ask the Lord counsel, ye shall say thus, the Lord God of Israel saith these things, for thou heardest the words of the book, and thine heart was afeard, and thou were made meek before the Lord, when his words were heard against this place, and against the dwellers thereof, that is, that they should be made into wandering, and into cursing, and thou rentest thy clothes, and weptest before me, and I heard, saith the Lord. Therefore I shall gather thee to thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered to thy sepulchre in peace, that thine eyes see not all the evils, which I shall bring in upon this place. And they told to the king that, that she said. Chapter 23 Which king sent, and all the eld men of Judah, and of Jerusalem, were gathered to him. And the king went up into the temple of the Lord, and all the men of Judah, 
and all the men that dwelled in Jerusalem with him, the priests and the prophets, and all the people from little unto great. And the king read, while all men heard, all the words of the book of bond of peace of the Lord, the which was found in the house of the Lord. And the king stood on the degrees, and smote a bond of peace before the Lord, that they would go after the Lord, and keep his commandments and witnessings and ceremonies in all their heart and in all their soul, and that they should raise up the words of this bond of peace, that were written in that book, and the people assented to the covenant. And the king commanded to Hilkiah, the bishop, and to the priests of the second order, and to the porters, that they should cast out of the temple all the vessels, that were made to Baal, and in the Mome wood, and to all the knighthood of heaven. And he burnt those vessels without Jerusalem, in the even valley of Kidron, and he bare the powder of those vessels into Bethel. High things by the cities of Judah, and in the compass of Jerusalem. And he did away them that burnt incense to Baal, and to the sun, and to the moon, and to twelve signs, and to all the knighthood of heaven. And the king made the wood of Mormetry to be born out of the house of the Lord, without Jerusalem, in the even valley of Kidron, and he burnt it there. And he drove it into powder, and casted it forth upon the sepulchres of the common people. Also he destroyed the little houses of womanish men, the which houses were in the house of the Lord, for the which houses women weaved, or wattled, as little houses of the wood. And he gathered all the priests from the cities of Judah, and he defiled the high things, where the priests made sacrifice, from Geba unto Beersheba, and he destroyed the altars of the gates in the entering of the door of Joshua, prince of a city, which door was at the left half of the gate of the city. Nevertheless the priests of high things went not up to the altar of the Lord in Jerusalem, but only they ate the loaves in the midst of their brethren. Also he defiled Topheth, which is in the even valley of the son of Hinnom, that no man should hallow his son either his daughter by fire to Moloch. Also he did away horses, that the kings of Judah had given to the sun, in the entering of the temple of the Lord, beside the chamber of Nathanmelech, the gelding, that was in Parvarim, forsooth he burnt by fire the chariots of the sun. Also the king destroyed the altars, that were on the roofs of the solar of Ahaz, which the kings of Judah had made, and the king destroyed the altars, which Manasseh had made in the two great places of the temple of the Lord, and he ran from thence, and scattered the ashes of those altars into the strand of Kidron. Also the king defiled the high things, that were in Jerusalem at the right half of the hill of offense, that is, the hill of Olivet, which Solomon, king of Israel, had builded to Ashtoreth, the idol of Sidonians, and to Chemosh, the offense of Moab, and to Malchim, the abomination of the sons of Ammon. And he all break images, and cut it down woods, and filled the places of those with the bones of dead men. Furthermore also he destroyed the altar that was in Bethel, and the high solemn thing, which Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, had made, that made Israel to do sin. And he destroyed that high altar, and burnt it, and all break it into powder, and cut it down also the wood. And Josiah turned, and saw their sepulchres that were in the hill, and he sent, and took the bones from the sepulchres, and burnt those on the altar, and defiled it, after the word of the Lord, that the man of God spake, that before said these words. And the king said, What is this burial, that I see? And the citizens of that city answered to him, It is the sepulchre of the man of God, that came from Judah, and before said these words, which thou hast done upon the altar of Bethel. And the king said, Suffer ye him, no man move his bones. And his bones dwelled untouched with the bones of the prophet, that came from Samaria. Furthermore also Josiah did away all the temples of high things, that were in the cities of Samaria, which the kings of Israel had made to stir the Lord to ire. And he did to those temples by all things which he had done in Bethel. And he commanded to all the people, and said, Make ye pasch to the Lord your God, after that, that is written in the book of this bond of peace. As this pasch was made to the Lord in Jerusalem in the eighteenth year of King Josiah, but also Josiah did away men having fiends speaking in their wombs, and false diviners in altars, and he did away the figures of idols, and all uncleannesses and abominations, that were in the land of Judah and in Jerusalem, that he should do the words of the law, that were written in the book, that Hilkiah, the priest, found in the temple of the Lord. No king before him was like him, that turned again to the Lord in all his heart, and in all his soul, 
and in all his strength, after all the law of Moses. Neither after him rose any like him. Nevertheless the Lord was not turned away from the ire of his great vengeance, by which his strong vengeance was wroth against Judah, for the stirrings to ire by which Manasseh had stirred him to ire. Therefore the Lord said, I shall do away also Judah from my face, as I did away Israel, and I shall cast away this city Jerusalem, which I chose, and the house of which I said, My name shall be there. Forsooth the residue of the words of Josiah, and all things that he did, whether these be not written in the book of words of days of the kings of Judah. In the days of Josiah, Pharaoh Necho, the king of Egypt, went up against the king of Assyrians, to the flood Euphrates, and Josiah, king of Judah, went into the meeting of Pharaoh, to forbid him to pass through Judah, and Josiah was slain in Megiddo, when he had seen Pharaoh. And his servants bare him dead from Megiddo, and brought him into Jerusalem, and buried him in his sepulchre. And the people of the land took Jehoahaz, the son of Josiah, and anointed him, and made him king for his father. Jehoahaz was of three and twenty years, when he began to reign, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. The name of his mother was Hamatal, the daughter of Jeremy of Libna. And he did evil before the Lord, by all things which his fathers had done. And Pharaoh Necho bound him in prison in Riblah, that is in the land of Hamath, that he should not reign in Jerusalem, and Pharaoh set a pain, either a fine, to the land of Judah, in an hundred talents of silver, and in one talent of gold. And Pharaoh Necho made King Eliakim, the son of Josiah, for Josiah, his father, and he turned the name of him to Jehoiakim, forsooth Pharaoh took Jehoahaz, and led him into Egypt. Soothly Jehoiakim gave silver and gold to Pharaoh, when he had commanded to the land by all years, that it should be brought, by the commandment of Pharaoh, and Jehoiakim raised of each man by his mites, or after his power, both silver and gold, of the people of the land, that he should give to Pharaoh Necho. Jehoiakim was of five and twenty years, when he began to reign, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. The name of his mother was Zebedah, the daughter of Pedir of Rumor, and he did evil before the Lord, by all things which his fathers had done. Chapter 24 in the days of Jehoiakim, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, went up into Judah, and Jehoiakim was made servant to him by three years, and again Jehoiakim rebelled against him. And the Lord sent to him thieves of Chaldees, and thieves of Syria, and thieves of Moab, and thieves of the sons of Ammon. And he sent them into Judah, that he should destroy it, by the word of the Lord, which he spake by his servants' prophets. Forsooth this was done by the word of the Lord against Judah, that he should do away it before himself, for the sins of Manasseh, and all things which he did, and for the guiltless blood that he shed out, and he filled Jerusalem with the blood of innocence, and for this thing the Lord would not do mercy. Forsooth the residue of words of Jehoiakim, and all things which he did, whether these be not written in the book of words of days of the kings of Judah. And Jehoiakim slept with his fathers, and Jehoiachin, his son, reigned for him. And the king of Egypt added no more to go out of his land, for the king of Babylon had taken all things that were the kings of Egypt, from the strand of Egypt unto the flood Euphrates. Jehoiachin was of eighteen years, when he began to reign, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. The name of his mother was Nehushta, the daughter of Elnathan of Jerusalem. And he did evil before the Lord, by all things that his father had done. In that time the servants of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, went up against Jerusalem, and the city was compassed with besiegings. And Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to the city with his servants, that he should fight against it. And Jehoiachin, king of Judah, went out to the king of Babylon, he, and his mother, and his servants, and his princes, and his chamberlains, and the king of Babylon received him, in the eighth year of his realm. And he brought forth from thence all the treasures of the house of the Lord, and the treasures of the king's house. And he beat together all the golden vessels, which Solomon, king of Israel, had made in the temple of the Lord, by the word of the Lord. And he translated all Jerusalem, and all the princes, and all the strong men of the host, ten thousand, into captivity, and each craftsman and goldsmith. And nothing was left, except the poor peoples of the land. 
Also he translated Jehoiachin into Babylon, and the mother of the king, the wives of the king, and the chamberlains of the king. And he led the judges of the land into captivity from Jerusalem into Babylon, and all the strong men, seven thousand, and craftsmen and goldsmiths, a thousand, yea, all strong men and warriors. And the king of Babylon led them prisoners into Babylon. And he ordained Matania, the brother of his father, for him, and putted to him the name Zedekiah. Zedekiah had one and twenty years of age, when he began to reign, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. The name of his mother was Hamatal, the daughter of Jeremy of Libna. And he did evil before the Lord, by all things that Jehoiakim had done. For the Lord was wroth against Jerusalem, and against Judah, till he casted him away from his face, and Zedekiah went away from the king of Babylon. Chapter 25 for sooth it was done in the ninth year of his realm, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came, he, and all his host, into Jerusalem, and they compassed it, and builded strongholds in the compass thereof. And the city was closed, and compassed, till to the eleventh year of King Zedekiah, in the ninth day of the month. And hunger had mastery in the city, and there was not bread to the people of the land. And the city was broken, and all men warriors fled in the night by the way of the gate, that is betwixt the double wall, toward the garden of the king. Soothly the Chaldees besieged the city in compass, about. Therefore Zedekiah fled by the way that leadeth to the field places of the wilderness, and the host of Chaldees pursued the king, and took him in the plain of Jericho, and all the warriors, that were with him, were scattered abroad, and left him. Therefore they led the king taken to the king of Babylon, into Ribla, which spake doom with him, that is, with Zedekiah. Soothly he killed the sons of Zedekiah before him, and putted out his eyes, and bound him with chains, and led him into Babylon. In the fifth month, in the seventh day of the month, that is the nineteenth year of the king of Babylon, Nebuzaradan, prince of the host, servant of the king of Babylon, came into Jerusalem, and he burnt the house of the Lord, and the house of the king, and the houses of Jerusalem, and he burnt by fire each house thereof, and all the host of Chaldees, that was with the prince of knights, destroyed the walls of Jerusalem in compass. Forsooth Nebuzaradan, prince of the chivalry, translated the Topher part of the people, that dwelled in the city, and the fleers, that had fled over to the king of Babylon, and the remnant common people, and he left of the poor men of the land vine tillers, and earth tillers. Soothly Chaldees break the brazen pillars, that were in the temple, and the fundaments, and the sea of brass, that was in the house of the Lord, and they translated, or bear over, all the metal into Babylon. And they took the pots of brass, and trowels, and flesh hooks, and cups, and mortars, and all brazen vessels, in which they ministered, and senses also, and vials. The prince of the chivalry took those things that were of gold, and those that were of silver, that is, two pillars, one sea, and the fundaments, or bases, which King Solomon had made to the temple of the Lord, and there was no certain weight of metal of all the vessels. One pillar had eighteen cubits of height, and a brazen pommel upon it of the height of three cubits, and a work like a net, and pomegranates upon the pommel of the pillar, all things of brass, and the second pillar had like adorning. Also the prince of the chivalry took Seraiah, the first priest, and Zephaniah, the second priest, and three porters and an honest servant of the city, that was sovereign over men warriors, and five men of them that stood before the king, which he found in the city, and he took Sopha, the prince of the host, that proved young knights, either men able to battle, of the people of the land, and six men of the commons, that were found in the city, which Nebuzaradan, prince of the chivalry, took, and led to the king of Babylon, into Ribla. And the king of Babylon smote them, and killed them in Ribla, in the land of Hamath, and Judah was translated from his land. Soothly Nebuchadnezzar made Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, sovereign to the people, that was left in the land of Judah, which people Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had left in Judah. And when all the dukes of knights had heard these things, they, and all the men that were with them, that is, that the king of Babylon had ordained Gedaliah to be their sovereign in Judah, they came to Gedaliah, in Mitzpah, Ishmael, son of Nethaniah, and Johanan, son of Keriah, 
and Seraiah, son of Tanhumoth of Netophah, and Jarzaniah, son of Markathite, they, and the fellows of them. And Gedaliah swore to them, and to the fellows of them, and said, Do not ye dread to serve the Chaldees. Dwell ye in the land, and serve ye the king of Babylon, and it shall be well to you. Forsooth it was done in the seventh month, that is, since Gedaliah was made sovereign, Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, the son of Elishama, of the king's seed, came, and ten men with him, and they smote Gedaliah, which died. But also they smited Jews and Chaldees, that were with him in Mitzvah. And all the people rose, from the little unto the great, and the princes of knights, and they came, or fled, into Egypt, and dreaded the Chaldees. Therefore it was done in the seven and thirtieth year of the transmigration, either passing over, of Jehoiachin, king of Judah, in the twelfth month, in the seven and twentieth day of the month, Evelmeradak, king of Babylon, in the year in which he began to reign, raised the head of Jehoiachin, king of Judah, from prison, and spake to him benignly. And he set the throne of Jehoiachin above the throne of kings, that were with him in Babylon. And Evelmeradak changed the clothes of Jehoiachin that he had in prison, and he ate bread ever in the sight of Evelmeradak, in all the days of his life. Also Evelmeradak ordained sustenance for Jehoiachin without ceasing, which sustenance also was given of the king to him by all days, in all the days of his life. The First Book of the Chronicles Chapter 1 Adam begat Seth, and Seth, Enos, Kenan, Mahalalel, Jerd, Henoch, Methuselah, Lamish, No, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The sons of Japheth were Goma, Magog, Madai, and Javan, Tubal, Meshech, and Tiraz. Forsooth the sons of Goma were Ashchenaz, and Ripheth, and Togoma. And the sons of Javan were Elishar, and Tarshish, Kittim, and Dodanim. The sons of Ham were Cush, and Mizraim, Put, and Canaan. And the sons of Cush were Seba, and Havilah, Sabta, and Rama, and Sabtecha. And the sons of Rama were Sheba, and Dedan. And Cush begat Nimrod. This Nimrod began to be mighty in earth. And Mizraim begat Ludum, and Anamim, and Leobam, and Naphtuhim, and Pathrasim, and Kasluhim, of which the Philistines and Catharim went out, or came. And Canaan begat Sidon, his first begotten son, and Heth, and Jebusite, and Amorite, and Girgashte, and Hivite, and Archite, and Sinite, and Arvadite, and Zemurite, and Hamathte. The sons of Shem were Elam, and Asher, and Arphaxed, and Lud, and Aram. And the sons of Aram were Uzed, and Hull, and Gether, and Meshech. And Arphax begat Shelah, which himself engendered Eber. And to Eber were born two sons. The name of one was Peleg, for the land was parted in his days, and the name of his brother was Joktan. And Joktan begat Almodad, and Shelif, and Hazamavath, and Jera, and Hadoram, and Uzal, and Dikla, Abal, and Abimel, and Sheba, and Ophir, and Havilah, and Jobab. All these were the sons of Joktan. Shem, Arphaxed, Shela, Eber, Peleg, Reu, Sarig, Nahor, Terah, Abram, this is Abraham. The sons of Abraham were Isaac, and Ishmael, and these be the generations of them. The first begotten of Ishmael was Nebaioth, and then Kedar, and Adbil, and Mibsam, and Mishma, and Duma, and Massa, Hadad, and Tema, Jetur, Naphish, and Kadima. These be the sons of Ishmael. And the sons of Keturah, the secondary wife of Abraham, the which she engendered, or conceived, were Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. And the sons of Jokshan were Sheba, and Dedan. And the sons of Dedan were Asherim, and Letashim, and Lumim. And the sons of Midian were Ephah, and Ephah, and Henek, and Abeda, and Eldar. All these were the sons of Keturah. Forsooth Abraham begat Isaac, whose sons were Esau and Israel. The sons of Esau were Eliphaz, Ruel, Jeush, and Jalam, and Korah. The sons of Eliphaz were Teman, Omar, Zephi, Gatam, Kenaz, and Timnah, and Amalek. The sons of Ruel were Nahath, Zerah, 
Shammah, and Mizah. The sons of Sire were Lotan, Shobal, Zabian, Anna, Dason, Ezar, and Dishan. The sons of Lotan were Hori, and Homam. Suthli the sister of Lotan was Timna. The sons of Shobal were Alian, and Manahath, and Abal, and Shephi, and Onam. The sons of Zabian were Aya, and Anna. The son, of Anna, was Dason. The sons of Dason were Amram, and Eshban, and Athran, and Cheran. The sons of Ezer were Bilan, and Zavan, and Jakan. The sons of Dishan were Uzed and Aaron. These be the kings that reigned in the land of Edom, before that a king was on the sons of Israel. Bela, the son of Beor, and the name of his city was Dinabar. And when Bela was dead, and Jobab, the son of Zerah of Bozra, reigned for him. And when Jobab was dead, Hushim of the land of Temanites reigned for him. And Hushim died. And Hadad, the son of Bedad, that smote Midian in the land of Moab, reigned for him, and the name of the city of Hadad was Avath. And when Hadad was dead, Samlar of Masrekah reigned for him. But also Samlar was dead, and Saul of Rehoboth, which is set beside the river, reigned for him. Also when Saul was dead, Balanan, the son of Akbor, reigned for him. But also he was dead, and Hadad, the name of whose city was Pi, reigned for him, and his wife was called Mehetabel, the daughter of Matred, the daughter of Mezahab. And when Hadad was dead, dukes began to be in Edom for kings, Duke Timna, Duke Alia, Duke Jatheth, Duke Oholabama, Duke Ella, Duke Pinon, Duke Kenaz, Duke Teman, Duke Mibzar, Duke Magdiel, Duke Iram. These were the dukes of Edom. Chapter 2 Forsooth the sons of Israel were Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Isaacah, and Zebulun, Dan, Joseph, and Benjamin, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. The sons of Judah were Ur, Onan, and Shelah. These three were born to him of Shua, a daughter of Canaan. And Ur, the first begotten of Judah, was evil before the Lord, and the Lord killed him. And Tamar, the wife of the son of Judah, childed to him Phares and Zerah, and all the sons of Judah were five. And the sons of Phares were Hezron and Hamel, and the sons of Zerah were Zimri and Ethan and Heman and Calcol and Dara, five together. The son of Kami was Akka, that troubled Israel, and sinned in the theft of thing hallowed to the Lord. The son of Ethan was Azariah, and the sons of Hezron, that were born to him, were Jeremiel and Ram and Chelebi. And Ram begat Aminadab, and Aminadab begat Narshon, prince of the sons of Judah, and Narshon begat Salma, of whom Boaz was born, and Boaz begat Obd, which himself begat Jesse, and Jesse begat his first son, Eliab, the second, Abinadab, the third, Shima, the fourth, Nethaniel, the fifth, Redai, the sixth, Ozam, the seventh, David, whose sisters were Zeruiah and Abigail. The sons of Zeruiah were three, Abishai, Joab, and Asahil. And Abigail childed Amasa, whose father was Jether Ishmaelite. And Caleb, the son of Hezron, took a wife, Azabar, by name, of whom he begat Jerioth, and his sons were Jeshur and Shabab and Arden. And when Azabar was dead, Caleb took a wife, Ephrath, which childed her to him. And her begat Uri, Uri begat Bezalel. After these things Hezron entered to the daughter of Mashir, the father of Gilead, and he took her to wife, when he was of sixty years, and she childed Segub to him. But also Segub begat Jair, and he had in possession three and twenty cities in the land of Gilead, and he took Geshur and Aram, the cities of Jair, and Kenath, and the towns thereof, of seventy cities. All these were the sons of Mashir, the father of Gilead. And when Hezron was dead, Caleb entered into Ephratah, and Hezron had a wife Abia, the which childed to him Asher, the father of Tekoa. And sons were born of Jeremiel, the first begotten of Hezron. Ram was the first begotten son of him, and then Bunna and Oren, and Ozum, and Ahir. Also Jeremiel wedded another wife, Atara by name, that was the mother of Onam. But and the sons of Ram, the first begotten of Jeremiel, 
were Mars and Jamun and Eka. And Onam begat sons, Shammai and Jada. And the sons of Shammai were Nadab and Abishur. And the name of the wife of Abishur was Abihel, that childed to him Aban and Melid. And the sons of Nadab were Seld and Apaim, for Suth Seld died without children. And the son of Apaim was Ishi, the which Ishi begat Shishan, certainly Shishan begat Arlai. And the sons of Jada, the brother of Shammai, were Jetha and Jonathan, but Jetha died without sons, and Jonathan begat Peleth and Zaza. These were the sons of Jeremiel, and Shishan had not sons, but daughters, and a servant of Egypt, Jaha by name, and he gave his daughter to wife to Jaha, which childed Atai to him. And Atai begat Nathan, and Nathan begat Zabad. Also Zabad begat Aflal, and Aflal begat Obd. Obd begat Jehu, Jehu begat Azariah, Azariah begat Helaz, Helaz begat Elisa, Elisa begat Sisamai, Sisamai begat Shalom, Shalom begat Jechamiah, Jechamiah begat Elishama. And the sons of Caleb, the brother of Jeremiel, were Mesha, the first begotten son of him, that is the father of Ziph, and the sons of Marishah, the father of Hebron. Certainly the sons of Hebron were Korah, and Tepua, Rechem, and Shemar. And Shemar begat Rahim, the father of Jorkoam, and Rechem begat Shammai. The son of Shammai was Maron, and Maron was the father of Bethzur. And Ephah, the secondary wife of Caleb, childed Haran, and Mosa, and Gazez, and Haran begat Gazez. The sons of Jardai were Regim, and Jotham, and Geshem, and Pelet, and Ephah, and Shaph. Marcha, the secondary wife of Caleb, childed Sheba, and Tirana. And Shaph, the father of Madmana, engendered Sheba, the father of Machbanah, and the father of Gabi, and the daughter of Caleb was Aksa. These were the sons of Caleb. The sons of Hur, the first begotten son of Ephratah, were Shobal, the father of Kiriathjerim, Salma, the father of Bethlehem, Heph, the father of Bethgada. And the sons of Shobal, the father of Kiriathjerim, that saw the half of restings, and was of the kindred of Kiriathjerim, were Athrites, and Puhites, and Shumathites, and Mishrites. Of these were born Serathites, and Eshtalites, the sons of Salma, the father of Bethlehem, and of Netophathites, were the crowns of the house of Joab, and half of the resting of Zorites. And the kindreds of scribes, dwelling in Jabez, singing, and sounding, and dwelling in tabernacles. These be Kenites, that came of the heat of the father of the house of Rechab. Chapter 3 Forsooth David had these sons, that were born to him in Hebron. The first begotten son of him was Amnon, of Ahinoam of Jezreel. The second son, Daniel, of Abigail of Carmel. The third, Absalom, the son of Marcha, the daughter of Talmai, king of Geshur. The fourth, Adonijah, the son of Haggath. The fifth, Shephashiah of Abital. The sixth, Ethrim, of Eglah his wife. Therefore six sons were born to him in Hebron, where he reigned seven years and six months, and he reigned three and thirty years in Jerusalem. For Sooth four sons, that is, Shimea, and Shabab, and Nathan, and Solomon, were born of Bathsheba, the daughter of Amiel, to him in Jerusalem. Also Ibhar, and Elishama, and Eliphale, and Noga, and Nepheg, and Japhia, also Elishama, and Eliada, and Eliphale. 9. All these were the sons of David, without the sons of his secondary wives, and they had a sister, Tamar. Soothly the son of Solomon was Rehoboam, whose son Arbia begat Asa, and Jehoshaphat, the father of Jehoram, was born of this Asa, the which Jehoram begat Ahaziah, of whom Josh was born, or begotten. And Amaziah, the son of this Josh, begat Azariah, and Azariah Jotham, begat Ahaz, the father of Hezekiah, of whom Manasseh was born. But also Manasseh begat Amon, the father of Josiah, and the sons of Josiah were these, the first begotten son was Johanan, the second Jehoiakim, the third Zedekiah, and the fourth Shalom. Of Jehoiakim was born Jeconiah and Zedekiah. The sons of Jeconiah were Asir, Salathiel, Malkirim, Pediah, Shenazar, and Jechamiah, Hashamah, and Nedabiah. 
of Pediah were born Zerubbabel and Shimei. Zerubbabel begat Meshullam, Hananiah, and Shelemoth, the sister of them, and Hashuba, and Ohol, and Berachia, and Hasidia, and Jushavizd, 5. And the son of Hananiah was Pelashia, the father of Jeziah, whose son was Rephiah. And the son of him was Arnon, of whom was born Obadiah, whose son was Shechaniah. The son of Shechaniah was Shemaiah, whose sons were Hattush, and Igeel, and Bariah, and Neriah, and Shaphat, six in number. The sons of Neriah were three, Elioenai, and Hezekiah, and Azrikam. The sons of Elioenai were seven, Hodiah, and Eliashib, and Peliah, and Akab, and Yohanan, and Daliah, and Anani. Chapter 4 The sons of Judah were Phares, and Hezron, and Kami, and Hur, and Shobal. And Reiah, the son of Shobal, begat Jahath, of whom were born Ahumai and Lahad. These were the kindreds of Zorathites. And this is the generation of Etam, Jezreel, Ishma, and Idbash, and the name of the sister of them was Hazelelponi. And Penuel was the father of Gedor, and Ezer was the father of Hushar. These be the sons of Hur, the first begotten son of Ephratar, the father of Bethlehem. And Asher, the father of Tekoa, had two wives, Hela and Nara. And Nara childed to him Ahuzam, and Hepha, and Temani, and Harhashtari. These be the sons of Nara. And the sons of Hela were Zerath, Jezor, and Ethnan. And Koz begat Anub, and Zobabar, and the kindreds of Ahahel, the son of Haram. And Jabez was noble before all his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, and said, For I childed him in sorrow. And Jabez called inwardly God of Israel, and said, If thou blessing shalt bless me, and shalt enlarge my terms, and if thine hand shall be with me, and thou shalt make me to be not oppressed of malice. And God gave to him that thing, that he prayed. And Chelub, the brother of Shua, begat Meha, that was the father of Eshton, and Eshton begat Bethrepha, and Paseah, and Tehana, the father of the city Nahash. These be the sons of Rechar, and the sons of Kenaz were Othniel and Seriah, and the sons of Othniel were Hathath and Meonathai, that begat Ophrah. And Seriah begat Joab, the father of the valley of craftsmen, for they were craftsmen. And the sons of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, were Iru, and Ella, and Nam. And the sons of Ella were Kenaz. Also the sons of Jehalelel were Ziph, and Zipha, Tyria, and Asriel. And the sons of Ezra were Jether, and Mered, and Epha, and Jalon. And he begat Mari, and Shammai, and Ishbar, the father of Eshtemoah. Also Jehudijah, his wife, childed Jerd, the father of Gedor, and Heba, the father of Socho, and Jekuthiel, the father of Zanua. And these were the sons of Bithia, the daughter of Pharaoh, whom Mered took to wife. And the sons of the wife of Hodiah, the sister of Nahum, father of Keilah, were Garmite and Eshtemoa, that was of Marcathites. Also the sons of Shimon were Amnon and Rinna. The son of Hanan was Talon, and the sons of Ishi were Zoheth and Benzoheth. The sons of Shelah, the son of Judah, were Ur, the father of Lekah, and Lada, the father of Marishah. And these were the kindreds of the house of men working Bis, in the house of an oath, and which made the sun to stand, and the men of lying, secure, and going, that were princes in Moab, and that turned again into Bethlehem. And these be old words. These be potters dwelling in plantings, and in hedges, with kings in their works, and they dwelled there. The sons of Simeon were Nemuel, and Jamin, Jarab, Zerah, Saul. Shalom was his son, Mibsam was his son, Mishma was his son. The sons of Mishma, Hamuel, his son, and Zachar, his son, Shimei, his son. The sons of Shimei were sixteen, and six daughters. Soothly his brethren had not many sons, and all the kindred might not be even to the sum of the sons of Judah. And they dwelled in Beersheba, and in Malada, and in Hazishul, and in Bulhar, and in Ezem, and in Tolad, and in Bethul, and in Hormah, and in Zikalag, and in Bethmarkabeth, and in Hazasasim, and in Bethbere, and in Sharim. These were the cities of them, unto the time of King David.
Also the towns of them were Etam, and An, and Rimon, and Tokan, and Ashan, five cities. And all the villages of them by the compass of these cities, till Tabal. This is the dwelling of them, and the parting of their cities. Also Meshabab, and Jamlek, and Joshar, the son of Amaziah, and Joel, and Jehu, the son of Josebiah, and the sons of Seriah, the sons of Asiel, and Elioni, and Jacobah, and Jeshohiah, and Aziah, and Adiel, and Jesimiel, and Beniah, and Ziza, the son of Shephi, the son of Alan, the son of Jediah, the son of Shimri, the son of Shemiah. These be princes named in their kindreds, and be multiplied greatly in the house of their allies. And they went forth to enter into Gedor, unto the east of the valley, and to seek pastures to their sheep. And they found pastures full plenteous, and full good, and a full large land, and restful, and plenteous, wherein men of the generation of Ham had dwelt before. Therefore these men, which we have described before by name, came in the days of Hezekiah, king of Judah, and smote the tabernacles of them, and the dwellers that were found there. And they destroyed them unto this present day, and they dwelt for them, for they found their full plenteous pastures. Also five hundred men of the sons of Simeon went into the hill of Sire, and they had princes Pelatia, and Neria, and Rephiah, and Uziel, the sons of Ishi, and they smote the remnants of Amalekites that might escape, and they dwelt there for them unto this day. Chapter 5 Also the sons of Reuben, the first begotten son of Israel, for he was the first begotten son of Israel, but when he had defiled the bed of his father, the dignity of his first begetting was given to the sons of Joseph, the son of Israel, and Reuben was not a reckoned into the first begotten son. For sooth Judah, that was the strongest among his brethren, princes were gathered of his generation. For sooth the right of first begetting was a reckoned to Joseph. Therefore the sons of Reuben, the first begotten son of Israel, were Hanak and Palu, Hezron and Kami. The sons of Joel were Shemaiah, his son, Gog, his son, Shimei, his son, Micah, his son, Reiah, his son, Baal, his son, Bera, whom Tilgathpilnazer, king of Assyrians, led prisoner, and he was prince in the lineage of Reuben. Soothly his brethren, and all the kindred, when they were numbered by their families, had princes Jeel and Zechariah. For Sooth Bela, the son of Azaz, son of Shema, son of Joel, he dwelled in Aroa till to Nebo and Balmaon, and he dwelled against the east coast, till to the entering of desert, and to the flood Euphrates. And he had in possession much number of beasts in the land of Gilead. For Sooth in the days of Saul the sons of Reuben fought against Hagarites, and killed them, and dwelled for them in the tabernacles of them, in all the coast that beholdeth to the east of Gilead. Soothly the sons of Gad even against them dwelled in the land of Bashan till to Salka. Joel was in the beginning, and Shapham was the second. Also Jarnai and Shaphat were in Bashan. Also their brethren by the houses of their kindreds, Michael, and Meshulam, and Sheba, and Jerai, and Jachin, and Zia, and Heba, seven. These were the sons of Abihel, the son of Huri, son of Jaroa, son of Gilead, son of Michael, son of Jeshishai, son of Jado, son of Buz. Also the brethren of the son of Abdiel, son of Guni, was prince of the house in his families. And they dwelled in Gilead, and in Bashan, and in the towns thereof, in all the suburbs of Sharon, till to the ends. All these were numbered in the days of Jotham, king of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, king of Israel. The sons of Reuben, and of Gad, and of half the lineage of Manasseh, were men warriors, bearing shields and swords, and bending bow, and taught in battles, four and forty thousand seven hundred and sixty, and they went forth to battle, and fought against Hagarites. For Sooth Jetor, and Nephish, and Nodab, gave help to them, and Hagarites, and all men that were with them, were betaken into the hands of Reuben, and Gad, and Manasseh, for they called inwardly the Lord, while they fought, and the Lord heard them, for they believed into him. And they took all things which Hagarites had in possession, fifty thousand of camels, and two hundred and fifty thousand of sheep, two thousand of asses, and an hundred thousand persons of men, for many men were wounded and fell down, for it was the battle of the Lord. 
and they dwelled for Hagarites till to the conquest. Also the sons of the half-lineage of Manasseh had in possession the land, from the ends of Bashan till to Balaman, and Senir, and the hill of Hermon, for it was a great number. And these were the princes of the house of their kindred, Ephah, and Ishi, and Eliel, and Azrael, and Jeremy, and Hodaviah, and Jardiel, full strong men and mighty, and named dukes in their families. Forsooth they forsook the god of their fathers, and did fornication after the gods of peoples of the land, which the Lord took away before them. And the Lord God of Israel raised the spirit of Pul, king of Assyrians, and the spirit of Tilgathpilnazer, king of Ashur. And he translated Reuben, and Gad, and the half-lineage of Manasseh, and brought them into Hala, and Habor, and Hara, and into the river of Gozan, till to this day. Chapter 6 the sons of Levi were Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. The sons of Kohath were Amram, Izar, Hebron, and Uziel. The sons of Amram were Aaron, Moses, and Mari. The sons of Aaron were Nadab, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Athamah. Eleazar begat Phinez, and Phinez begat Abishua, Abishua begat Buki, and Buki begat Utsi, Utsi begat Zerahia, and Zerahia begat Mariath. Forsooth Mariath begat Amariah, Amariah begat Ahitub, Ahitub begat Zadok, Zadok begat Ahimaz, Ahimaz begat Azariah, Azariah begat Yohanan, Yohanan begat Azariah. He it is that was set in priesthood, in the house that Solomon builded in Jerusalem. Forsooth Azariah begat Amariah, and Amariah begat Ahitub, Ahitub begat Zadok, Zadok begat Shalom, Shalom begat Hilkiah, Hilkiah begat Azariah, Azariah begat Seriah, Seriah begat Jehazadak. Forsooth Jehazadak went out, when the Lord translated Judah and Jerusalem, by the hands of Nebuchadnezzar the king. Therefore the sons of Levi were Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. And these were the names of the sons of Gershon, Libni, and Shimei. The sons of Kohath were Amram, and Izar, and Hebron, and Uziel. The sons of Merari were Mali and Mushi. Soothly these were the kindreds of Levi by the families of them, Gershon, Libni, his son, Jahath, his son, Zimmer, his son, Joah, his son, Ido, his son, Zerah, his son, Jeturai, his son. The sons of Kohath, Aminadab, his son, Korah, his son, Asir, his son, Elkanah, his son, Ebiasif, his son, Asir, his son, Tahath, his son, Uriel, his son, Uzziah, his son, Saul, his son. The sons of Elkanah were Amasai, and Ahimoth, and Elkanah. The sons of Elkanah, Zophai, his son, Nahath, his son, Eliab, his son, Jeroam, his son, Elkanah, his son. The sons of Samuel, the first begotten Vashni, and Abiah. Soothly the sons of Merari, Mali, his son, Libni, his son, Shimei, his son, Uzzah, his son, Shimea, his son, Haggia, his son, Aziah, his son. These it be that David ordained on the singers of the house of the Lord, since the ark of the Lord was set, and they ministered before the tabernacle of witnessing, and sang, till Solomon builded the house of the Lord in Jerusalem, forsooth they stood by their order in service. And these it be that stood nigh with their sons, of the sons of Kohath, Heman the chanter, the son of Joel, son of Shemuel, son of Elkanah, son of Jeroam, son of Eliel, son of Toa, son of Zuf, son of Elkanah, son of Mahath, son of Amasai, son of Elkanah, son of Joel, son of Azariah, son of Zephaniah, son of Tahath, son of Asir, son of Ebiasif, son of Korah, son of Izar, son of Kohath, son of Levi, the son of Israel. And his brethren, Asaph, that stood at the right half of him, Asaph, the son of Barachiah, son of Shimea, son of Michael, son of Barsaya, son of Malchia, son of Ethni, son of Zerah, son of Adiah, son of Ethan, son of Zimmer, son of Shimei, son of Jahath, son of Gershon, the son of Levi. Forsooth the sons of Merari, the brethren of them, were at the left side, Ethan, the son of Kishi, son of Abdi, son of Malak, son of Hashabiah, 
son of Amaziah, son of Hilkiah, son of Amzi, son of Bani, son of Shema, son of Mali, son of Mushi, son of Merari, son of Levi. And deacons, the brethren of them, that were ordained into all the service of the tabernacle of the house of the Lord. Forsooth Aaron and his sons burnt incense upon the altar of brunt sacrifices, and upon the altar of incense, into all the work of the holy of holy things, and that they should pray for Israel, by all things which Moses, the servant of God, commanded. And these be the sons of Aaron, Eleazar, his son, Phinehas, his son, Abishua, his son, Buki, his son, Butsi, his son, Zerahia, his son, Moriah, his son, Amariah, his son, Ahitub, his son, Zadok, his son, Ahimaz, his son. And these were the dwelling places, by the towns and coasts of them, that is, of the sons of Aaron, by the kindreds of Kohathites, for those befell to them by lot. Therefore the children of Israel gave to them Hebron in the land of Judah, and the suburbs thereof by compass, and they gave the fields and towns of the cities to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh. And they gave cities to the sons of Aaron, Hebron to refuge, and they gave Libna, with his suburbs, and Jatir, and Eshtemoa, with their suburbs, but also Hillen and Debir, with their suburbs. Also they gave Ashan, and Beth Shemesh, and the suburbs of those. And of the lineage of Benjamin they gave Geba, and the suburbs thereof, and Alameth with his suburbs, and Athoth also with his suburbs. All the cities were thirteen with their suburbs, by the kindreds of them. And the sons of Kohath, the residues of their kindred, they gave of the half-lineage of Manasseh, ten cities into possession. And to the sons of Gershon by their kindreds, they gave fourteen cities in Bashan, of the lineage of Isaacer, and of the lineage of Asher, and of the lineage of Naphtali, and of the lineage of Manasseh. And to the sons of Merari by their kindreds, they gave by lots twelve cities, of the lineage of Reuben, of the lineage of Gad, and of the lineage of Zebulun. And the sons of Israel gave to deacon cities and suburbs of those, and they gave by lot, of the sons of the lineage of Judah, and of the lineage of the sons of Simeon, and of the lineage of the sons of Benjamin, these cities, which the deacons called by their names, and of them that were of the kindred of the sons of Kohath, and in the terms of them, were the cities of the lineage of Ephraim. And the sons of Israel gave to them cities of refuge, Shechem with his suburbs, in the hill of Ephraim, and Gezer with his suburbs, also Jokmeam with his suburbs, and Bethhoron also. Also of the lineage of Dan they gave Ijalon, with her suburbs, and Gathrimon by the same manner. And of the half-lineage of Manasseh they gave Anna, and the suburbs thereof, Bilim, and the suburbs thereof. That is, to them that were residue, that were left of the kindred of the sons of Kohath. And to the sons of Gershon they gave of the kindred of half the lineage of Manasseh, Golan in Bashan, and the suburbs thereof, and Ashtaroth with his suburbs. Of the lineage of Isaac they gave Kadesh, and the suburbs thereof, and Dabarath with his suburbs, also Ramoth, and his suburbs, and Anam with his suburbs. Also of the lineage of Asher they gave Mashal with his suburbs, and Abdon also, and Hukok, and the suburbs thereof, and Rehob with his suburbs. And of the lineage of Naphtali they gave Kadesh in Galilee, and the suburbs thereof, Haman with his suburbs, and Kiriathame, and the suburbs thereof. Soothly to the residue sons of Merari they gave of the lineage of Zebulun, Rimon, and the suburbs thereof, and Tabor with his suburbs. Also beyond Jordan, even against Jericho, against the east of Jordan, they gave of the lineage of Reuben, Bezer in the wilderness with his suburbs, and Jazar with his suburbs, also Kedimoth, and his suburbs, and Mephath with his suburbs. Also of the lineage of Gad, they gave Ramoth in Gilead, and the suburbs thereof, Mahanaim with his suburbs, but also Heshbon with his suburbs, and Jazer with his suburbs. Chapter 7 Forsooth the sons of Isaac were four, Tola, and Pua, Jashub, and Shimron. The sons of Tola were Utsi, and Rephiah, and Jeriel, and Jemai, and Jibzam, and Shemuel, princes by the houses of their kindreds. Of the generation of Tola were numbered strongest men in the days of David, two and twenty thousand and six hundred. The sons of Utsi were Israhia, of whom were born Michael, and Obadiah, and Joel, and Ishia, 
5, all princes. And with them were by their families and peoples, six and thirty thousand most strong men girded to battle, for they had many wives and sons. And their brethren, by all the kindreds of Isaac, most strong to fight, were numbered fourscore and seven thousand. The sons of Benjamin were Bela, and Becca, and Jedrael, three. The sons of Bela were Esben, and Utsi, and Uziel, and Jeremoth, and Iri, five, princes of families, most strong to fight, for the number of them was two and twenty thousand and four and thirty. And the sons of Becca were Zemira, and Josh, and Eliezer, and Elioni, and Omri, and Jeremoth, and Abia, and Anathoth, and Alameth. All these were the sons of Becca. And the princes of kindreds were numbered by their families twenty thousand and two hundred most strong men to battles. And the sons of Jedrael were Bilan, Soothly the sons of Bilan were Jeush, and Benjamin, and Ehud, and Chenana, and Zephan, and Tharshish, and Nahishahar. All these the sons of Jedrael were princes of their families, 17,200, strongest men going forth to battle. Also Shuppam, and Huppim, were the sons of Ur, and Hushim was the son of Ara. And the sons of Naphtali were Jazel, and Guni, and Jezer, and Shalom, the sons of Bulhar. And the son of Manasseh was Azrael, and Syra, his secondary wife, childed Mashir, the father of Gilead. And Mashir took wives to his sons Huppim and Shuppim. And he had a sister, Marcha by name. And the name of the second son was Zelophehad, and daughters were born to Zelophehad. And Marcha, the wife of Mashir, childed a son, and called his name Perish. And the name of his brother was Sherish, and his sons were Ulam and Rakim. And the son of Ulam was Bedan. These were the sons of Gilead, son of Mashir, son of Manasseh, and Hamalekith his sister childed a fair man, Abiezer, and Mahala. And the sons of Shemida were Ahian, and Shechem, and Laki, and Anium. And the sons of Ephraim were Shuthila, Bird, his son, Tahath, his son, Eladar, his son, and Tahath, his son, and Zabad, his son, and Shuthila, his son, and Ezra, and Elad, his sons. And men of Gath born in the land killed them, for they went down to assail their possessions. Therefore Ephraim, the father of them, wailed by many days, and his brethren came to comfort him. And he entered to his wife, which conceived, and childed a son, and he called his name Beria, for he was born in the evils of his house. And his daughter was Shera, that builded Bethhoran, the lower, and the higher, and Uzan, and Shera. And his son was called Repha, and Reshef, and Tela, of whom was born Tahan, that engendered Laden, and Amahud, the son of him, begat Elishama, of whom was born Nun, that had a son Joshua. And the possession and the dwelling places of them was Bethel with his villages, and against the east, Naran, at the west coast, Gezer, and his villages, also Shechem with his villages, and Gaza with his villages. Also beside the sons of Manasseh, Bethshin and his towns, Tarnak and his towns, Megiddo and his towns, Dor and his towns, and the sons of Joseph, son of Israel, dwelled in these towns. The sons of Asher were Imna, and Izua, and Ishwai, and Beria, and Serah was the sister of them. And the sons of Beria were Heber, and Malchiel. He is the father of Berzavith. And Heber engendered Japhlet, and Shomer, and Hovam, and Shua, the sister of them. And the sons of Japhlet were Pasik, and Bimhal, and Ashvath. These were the sons of Japhlet. And the sons of Shema were Ahi, and Rogar, and Jehubba, and Aram. And the sons of Helam, his brother, were Zophar, and Imna, and Shelish, and Amal. The sons of Zophar were Sua, and Hanifah, and Shul, and Beri, and Imra, and Bezer, and Hod, and Shama, and Shilshah, and Athran, and Bera. The sons of Jetha were Jephunneh, and Pispa, and Ara. And the sons of Ula were Ara, and Haniel, and Rezia. All these were the sons of Asher, princes of kindreds, chosen men and full strong dukes of dukes, and the number, of the age of them that were able to battle, was six and twenty thousand. Chapter 8 Forsooth Benjamin begat Bela his first begotten son, Ashbel the second, Ahara the third, Nohar the fourth, and Rapha the fifth. 
and the sons of Bela were Adar, and Gera, and Abahud, and Abishua, and Naaman, and Ahoa, but also Gera, and Shepufan, and Huram. These be the sons of Ehud, princes of kindreds dwelling in Geba, that were translated into Manahath. And Naaman, and Ahia, and Gera, he translated them, and he begat Uzzah and Ahihud, and Shaharaim, he begat in the country of Moab, after that he let go of Husham and Bara, his wives, and he begat of Hodesh, his wife, Jobab, and Zibia, and Mesha, and Malcham, also Jews, and Shachia, and Murmur. Those be the sons of him, princes in their families. And Husham begat Abitub, and Elpal, and the sons of Elpal were Eber, and Misham, and Shamed. He builded Ono, and Lod, and his villages, and Beria and Shemar were princes of kindreds dwelling in Aijalon. These drove away the dwellers of Gath, and Ahio, and Shashik, and Jeremoth, and Zebediah, and Arad, and Ada, Michael for Suth, and Ispa, and Joha, the sons of Beria, Zebediah, and Meshulam, and Hezekiah, and Heber, and Ishmari, and Jezlia, and Jobab, sons of Elpal, Jakim, and Zishri, and Zabdi, and Elianai, and Zilthai, and Eliel, and Adiah, and Beriah, and Shimrath, the sons of Shimhi, Ishpan, and Heber, Eliel, and Abdon, and Zishri, and Hanan, and Hananiah, and Elam, and Antothija, and Iphidia, and Penuel, the sons of Shashik, Shamshirai, and Shiriah, and Athaliah, and Jeraziah, and Elia, and Zishri, the sons of Jerome. These were patriarchs and princes of kindreds, that dwelled in Jerusalem. And in Gibeon dwelled Abigabian, and March of the name of his wife, and his first begotten son Abdon, and Zor, and Kish, and Baal, and Nadab, and Gedor, and Ahio, and Zakah, and Mekloth. And Mekloth begat Shimea, and they dwelled even against their brethren in Jerusalem, with their brethren. And Enna begat Kish, and Kish begat Saul, and Saul begat Jonathan, and Malchishua, and Abinadab, and Eshbal. And the son of Jonathan was Merabal, and Merabal begat Micah. The sons of Micah were Pithon, and Melech, and Terea, and Ahaz. And Ahaz begat Jehoada, and Jehoada begat Alameth, and Asmaveth, and Zimri. And Zimri begat Moza, and Moza begat Bini, whose son was Rapha, of whom was begotten Elisa, that begat Azel. Soothly Azel had six sons by these names, Azrikam, Bokeru, Ishmael, Shiariah, Obadiah, and Hanan. All these were the sons of Azel. And the sons of Eshek, his brother, were Ulam, the first begotten son, and Jehush, the second, and Eliphalet, the third. And the sons of Ulam were full strong men, and bending bow with great strength, and having many sons, and sons of sons, till to an hundred and fifty. All these were the sons of Benjamin. Chapter 9 Therefore all Israel was numbered, and the sum of them was written in the book of kings of Israel and of Judah, and they were translated into Babylon for their sin. And they that dwelled first in their cities, and in the possessions of Israel, and the priests, and the deacons, and Nethinims, dwelled in Jerusalem. Of the sons of Judah, and of the sons of Benjamin, also of the sons of Ephraim, and of Manasseh, Utai, the son of Amahud, the son of Omri, the son of Imri, the son of Barni, of the sons of Phares, the son of Judah, and of Shelah, Aziah, the first begotten, and his sons, and the sons of Zerah, Jul, and his brethren, six hundred, fourscore and ten. And of the sons of Benjamin, Salu, the son of Meshulam, the sons of Hodaviah, the sons of Hasanua, and Ibniah the son of Jerome, and Ella the son of Utsi, the sons of Macri, and Meshulam the son of Shepathia, the son of Ruel, son of Ibnija, and the brethren of them, by their families, 906 and 50. All these were princes of their kindreds by the houses of their fathers. And of the priests, Jediah, Jehoirib, and Jachin, and Azariah, the son of Hilkiah, son of Meshulam, the son of Zadok, the son of Mariath, son of Ahitub, was bishop of the house of the Lord. Adiah, son of Jeroam, son of Pashur, son of Malchijah, and Marcii, son of Adiel, son of Jazra, son of Meshulam, son of Meshulimoth, son of Immer, also their brethren, princes by their families, were a thousand seven hundred and fourscore, 
men full strong in bodily might, to make the work of service in the house of the Lord. And of the deacons, Shemaiah, the son of Hashab, the son of Azrikam, the son of Hashabiah, of the sons of Merari, also Bakbakar, the carpenter, and Galal, and Mataniah, the son of Micah, son of Zishri, son of Asif, and Obadiah, the son of Shemaiah, son of Galal, the son of Jeduthun, and Berechiah, the son of Asa, the son of Elkanah, that dwelled in the porches of Netophathites. And the porters were Shalom, and Akub, and Talman, and Ahiman, and the brethren of them. Shalom was the prince, till to that time they kept by their wiles in the gate of the king at the east, of the sons of Levi. Shalom for Suth, the son of Kor, the son of Ebiasif, the son of Korah, with his brethren, and with the house of his father. These be the sons of Korah upon the works of the service, keepers of the porches of the tabernacle, and the families of them kept by wiles, or times, the entering of the castles of the Lord. And Phinez, the son of Eleazar, was the duke of them before the Lord. And Zechariah, the son of Meshelamiah, was porter of the gate of the tabernacle of witnessing. All these chosen into porters by gates were two hundred and twelve, and they were described, or presented, in their own towns, which deacons, or ministers, David and Samuel, the prophet, ordained in their faith. Both them and the sons of them in the doors of the house of the Lord, and in the tabernacle of witnessing, by their wiles. Porters were by four coasts, that is, at the east, at the west, at the north, and at the south. And their brethren dwelled in towns, and came in their sabbaths from time till to time. All the number of porters was betaken to these four deacons, and they kept the chambers, and the treasures of the house of the Lord. Also they dwelled in their keepings by the compass of the temple of the Lord, that when time were, they should open the gates early. Men of their kin were also on the vessels of service, for the vessels were borne in at the number, and were borne out of them. And they that had the vessels of the sanctuary betaken to their keeping, were sovereigns of flour, and wine, and oil, and incense, and sweet-smelling spiceries. And the sons of priests made ointments of sweet-smelling spiceries. And Mattathia, deacon, the first begotten son of Shalom of the kindred of Korah, was the sovereign of all things that were fried in the frying pan. And men of the sons of Kohath, the brethren of them, were on the loaves of setting forth, that they should make ready ever new loaves by each Sabbath. These be the princes of Chanters, by the families of Levites, that dwelled in chambers, so that they should serve continually day and night in their service. The heads of Levites, by their families, the princes, dwelled in Jerusalem. And there dwelled in Gibeon, Jeel, the father of Gibeon, and the name of his wife Marcha, Abdon, his first begotten son, and Zor, and Kish, and Baal, and Enna, and Nadab, and Gedor, and Ahio, and Zechariah, and Mekloth. And Mekloth begat Shimeon. These dwelled even against their brethren in Jerusalem, with their brethren. And Enna begat Kish, and Kish begat Saul, and Saul begat Jonathan, and Malchishua, and Abinadab, and Eshbal. And the son of Jonathan was Merabal, and Merabal begat Micah. And the sons of Micah were Pithon, and Melech, and Tareah, and Ahaz begat Jara, and Jara begat Alameth, and Asmavath, and Zimri, and Zimri begat Moza, and Moza begat Bini, whose son Rephiah begat Elisa, of whom Azel was begotten. And Azel had six sons by these names, Azrikam, Bokeru, Ishmael, Shiriah, Obadiah, Hanan. These were the sons of Azel. Chapter 10 For sooth the Philistines fought against Israel, and the sons of Israel fled the Philistines, and fell down wounded in the hill of Gilboa. And when the Philistines had nigh pursuing Saul and his sons, they killed Jonathan, and Abinadab, and Malchishua, the sons of Saul. And the battle was aggrieved against Saul. And men archers found him, and wounded him with darts. And Saul said to his squire, Draw out thy sword, and slay me, lest these uncircumcised men come, and scorn me. But his squire was afeared by dread, and would not do this. Therefore Saul took a sword, and fell upon it. And when his squire had seen this, that is, that Saul was dead, he fell also on his sword, and was dead. Therefore Saul perished, and his three sons, and all his house fell down together. 
And when the men of Israel, that dwelled in field places, had seen this, they fled. And when Saul and his sons were dead, they forsook their cities, and were scattered hither and thither, and Philistines came, and dwelled in those. Therefore in the Topher day, the Philistines drew away the spoils of slain men, and found Saul and his sons lying in the hill of Gilboa. And when they had spoiled him, and had girded off the head, and had made him naked of the armors, they sent his head into their land, that it should be borne about, and should be showed in the temples of idols, and to peoples, and they hallowed his armors in the temple of the God, and they set the head in the temple of Dagon. When men of Jabesh of Gilead had heard this, that is, all things which the Philistines did on Saul, all strong men rose together, and took the dead bodies of Saul and of his sons, and brought those into Jabesh, and they buried the bones of them under an oak, that was in Jabesh, and fasted seven days. Therefore Saul was dead for his wickednesses, for he brake the behest of the Lord, which he commanded, and kept not it. But furthermore also he took counsel at a woman having a fiend speaking in the womb, and he hoped not in the Lord, for which thing both the Lord killed him, and translated his realm to David, the son of Jesse. Chapter 11 Therefore all Israel was gathered to David in Hebron, and said, We be thy bone and thy flesh. Also yesterday and the third day ago, when Saul reigned yet upon Israel, thou it was that leddest out and leddest in Israel. For the Lord thy God said to thee, Thou shalt feed my people Israel, and thou shalt be prince upon it. Therefore all the greater men in birth of Israel came to the king in Hebron, and David made with them a bond of peace before the Lord, and they anointed him king upon Israel, by the word of the Lord, which he spake in the hand of Samuel. Therefore David went, and all Israel, into Jerusalem. This Jerusalem is Jebus, where Jebusites, inhabitants of the land, were. And they that dwelled at Jebus said to David, Thou shalt not enter hither. Forsooth David took the high tower of Zion, which is the city of David. And he said, Each man that slayeth first Jebusite, shall be prince and duke. Therefore Joab, the son of Zeruiah, went up first, and was made prince. And David dwelled in the high tower, and therefore it was called the city of David. And he builded the city in compass, from Milo till to the compass, and Joab builded the Topher part of the city. And David profited going and waxing, and the Lord of hosts was with him. These be the princes of the strong men of David, that helped him, that he should be king upon all Israel, by the word of the Lord which he spake to Israel. And this is the number of the strong men of David. Jashobim, the son of Hachmoni, was prince among thirty. This raised up his shaft, either spear, upon three hundred, wounded men in one time. And after him was Eliezer, the son of his father's brother, that was of Ahohites, the which Eliezer was among three mighty men. This was with David in Pazdamum, when Philistines were gathered to one place into battle, and a field of that country was full of barley, and the people fled from the face of Philistines. This Eliezer stood in the midst of the field, and defended it, and when he had slain the Philistines, the Lord gave great health to his people. Soothly three of thirty princes went down to the stone, wherein David was, to the den of Adullam, when the Philistines set it tents in the valley of Rephaim. And David was in a stronghold, and the station, that is, the host gathered, of Philistines was in Bethlehem. Therefore David desired water, and said, I would, that some man gave to me water of the cistern of Bethlehem, which is in the gate. Therefore these three went through the middle of the castles, or of the hosts, of Philistines, and drew water of the cistern of Bethlehem, that was in the gate, and they brought to David, that he should drink. And David would not drink it, but rather he offered it to the Lord. And said, Far be it, that I do this thing in the sight of my God, and that I drink the blood of these men, for in the peril of their lives they brought water to me, and for this cause he would not drink. Three strongest men did these things. Also Abishai, the brother of Joab, he was the prince of three men, and he raised up his spear against three hundred, wounded men, and he was most named among three, among the second three, he was noble, and the prince of them. Nevertheless he came not to the first three. Beniah, the son of Jehoiada, the strongest man of Kabzeel, that did many works. He killed two strong men of Moab, 
and he went down, and killed a lion in the midst of a cistern, in the time of snow. And he killed a man of Egypt, whose stature was of five cubits, and he had a spear as the beam of webs. Therefore Benaiah went down to him with a rod, and ravished the spear, which he held in his hand, and killed him with his own spear. Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, did these things, that was most named among three strong men, and he was the first among thirty, nevertheless he came not to the three, and David set him at his ear for a good counselor. Forsooth the strongest men in the host were Asahel, the brother of Joab, and Elhanan, the son of his father's brother of Bethlehem, Shamath Hararite, Helaz Pelonite, Ira, the son of Ikesh of Tekoa, Abiezer of Anathoth, Sibakai Hushathite, Eliah Hohite, Maharai Netophathite, Heald, the son of Barna Netophathite, Athai, the son of Rabbi of Gibeah, of the sons of Benjamin, Beniah Pirathonite, men of the strand Gash, Abiel Arbathte, Asmavath Baharamite, Eliabar Shalbanite, the sons of Hashem Gizanite, Jonathan, the son of Sharj Hararite, Ahim, the son of Saka Hararite, Eliphal, the son of Hepha Metrathte, Ahir Pelonite, Hezro Carmelite, Narai, the son of Ezbi, Joel, the brother of Nathan, Miva, the son of Hagari, Zelik Ammonite, Naharai Berothite, the squire of Joab, son of Zeruiah, Ira Athrite, Gareb Athrite, Uriah Hittite, Zabad, the son of Arli, Adina, the son of Sheza Reubenite, prince of Reubenites, and thirty men with him, Hanan, the son of Marcha, and Joshaphat Mithnite, Uzziah Ashtrathite, Sharma and Jehiel, the sons of Hothan Ararit, Jedrael, the son of Shimri, and Joha, his brother, Tizite, Eliel Mahavite, Jerubai, and Joshaviah, the sons of Elnam, Ithmar Moabite, Eliel, and Obt, and Jasiel of Mesabites. Chapter 12 Also these came to David in Zikalag, when he fled yet from Saul, the son of Kish, the which were full strong men and noble fighters, bending bow, and casting stones with slings with ever either hand, and directing arrows, of the brethren of Saul of Benjamin, the prince Ahiezer, and Josh, the sons of Shemar of Gibeah, and Jeziel, and Pelet, the sons of Asmavath, and Barakah, and Jehu of Anathoth. Also Ishmael of Gibeon was the strongest among thirty, and above thirty, Jeremy, and Jehaziel, and Johanan, and Josabad Gedrathte, Eluzai, and Jeremoth, and Belia, and Shemariah, and Shephashia Haraphite, Elkanah, and Jesiah, and Azrael, and Jozah, and Jashobim, of Korhites, and Jola, and Zebediah, the sons of Jerome of Gedor. But also of Gadites' strongest men, and best fighters, holding shield and spear, fled over to David, when he was hid in desert, the faces of them as the face of a lion, and they were swift as caprets in hills. Ezra was the prince, Obadiah the second, Eliab the third, Mishmanah the fourth, Jeremy the fifth, Atai the sixth, Eliel the seventh, Johanan the eighth, Elzabad the ninth, Jeremy the tenth, Machbani the eleventh. These of the sons of Gad were princes of the host, and the least, that is, he that had the least power, was sovereign over an hundred knights, and the most was over a thousand. These it be that passed over Jordan in the first month, when it was wont to flow over his brinks, and they drove away all men, that is, heathen men, that dwelled in the valleys at the east coast, and west coast. And also men of Benjamin and of Judah came to the stronghold, wherein David dwelled. And David went out against them, and said, If ye come peaceable to me, for to help me, mine heart be joined to you. Forsooth if ye set ambush to me for mine adversaries, since I have not wickedness in the hands, God of our fathers see and deem. And the spirit clothed Amasai, the prince among thirty, and he said, O oh, David, we be thine, and thou, son of Jesse, we shall be with thee. Peace, peace to thee, and peace to thine helpers, for thy Lord God helpeth thee. Therefore David received them, and made princes of the company, and men of Manasseh fled over to David, when he came with Philistines to fight against Saul, and he fought not with them. For after that the princes of Philistines had taken counsel, they sent him again, and said, With peril of our head, he shall turn again to Saul his lord. Therefore when David turned again into Zikalak, men of Manasseh fled over to him, Adna, and Josabad, Jedrael, and Michael, and Josabad, and Elihu, and Zilthi, princes of knights in Manasseh. 
These men gave help to David against thieves, for all were full strong, and were made princes in the host. But also by each day men came to David, for to help him, till that the number was made great as the host of God. Also this is the number of princes of the host that came to David, when he was in Hebron, that they should translate the realm of Saul to him, by the word of the Lord. The sons of Judah, bearing shield and spear, six thousand and eight hundred, ready to battle. Of the sons of Simeon, seven thousand and an hundred, of strongest men to fight. Of the sons of Levi, four thousand and six hundred, also Jehoiada, prince of the generation of Aaron, and three thousand and seven hundred with him. Also Zadok, a young man of noble wit, and the house of his father, two and twenty princes. And of the sons of Benjamin, the brethren of Saul, three thousand. For a great part of them followed yet the house of Saul. And of the sons of Ephraim, twenty thousand and eight hundred, full strong men in bodily might, men named in their families. And of the half part of the lineage of Manasseh, eighteen thousand, all came by their names, to make David king. Also of the sons of Isaac, two hundred princes, learned men, that knew each time to command what the people of Israel ought to do. And all the remnant of the lineage followed the counsels of them. And of Zebulun came fifty thousand into his help, not in double heart, which went out to battle, and stood in the battle array, and were made ready with armors of battle. And of Naphtali a thousand princes, and with them came seven and thirty thousand men, arrayed with shield and spear. Also of Dan, eight and twenty thousand and six hundred men, made ready to battle. And of Asher forty thousand men, going out to battle, and stirred to battle in the battle array. And beyond Jordan, of the sons of Reuben, and of Gad, and of the half part of the lineage of Manasseh, six score thousand men, arrayed with armors of battle. All these men warriors and ready to battle, came with perfect heart into Hebron, to make David king upon all Israel. But also all the residue of Israel were of one heart, that David should be made king upon all Israel. And they were there at David three days, and ate and drank, for their brethren had made ready to them, but also they that were nigh them, till to Isaac and Zebulun and Naphtali, brought loaves on asses, and camels, and mules, and oxen, for to eat, meal, bundles of pressed figs, and dried grapes, wine, and oil, oxen and weathers, to all plenty, for joy was in Israel. Chapter 13 Forsooth David took counsel with tribunes, and centurions, and all princes, and he said to all the company of the sons of Israel, If it pleaseth you, and if the word that I speak goeth out from the Lord our God, send we to the remnant of our brethren to all the countries of Israel, and to priests and deacons that dwell in the suburbs of cities, that they be gathered to us, and that we bring again to us the ark of our God, for we sought not it in the days of Saul. And all the multitude answered, that it should be done so, for the word pleased all the people. Therefore David gathered together all Israel, from Shehor of Egypt till that thou enter into Hamath, that he should bring the ark of God from Kiriath-Jerim. And David went up, and all the men of Israel, to the hill of kiriath Jerem, which is in Judah, that he should bring from thence the ark of the Lord God sitting on cherubim, where his name was inwardly called. And they putted the ark of the Lord God on a new wain from the house of Abinadab, and Uzzah and his brethren drove the wain. And David and all Israel played before the Lord, with all might, in songs, and in harps, and psalteries, and in tympans, and in cymbals, and trumps. And when they had come to the corn floor of Chidon, Uzzah stretched forth his hand to sustain, or stable, the ark, for the ox's waxing wild had bowed it a little. Therefore the Lord was wroth against Uzzah, and smote him, for he had touched the ark, and he was dead there before the Lord. And David was sorry, for the Lord had parted, or slain, Uzzah, and he called that place the parting of Uzzah, unto this present day. And David dreaded the Lord in that time, and said, How may I bring into me the ark of the Lord? And for this cause he brought not it to him, that is, into the city of David, but he turned it into the house of Obedom of Gath. Therefore the ark of God dwelled in the house of Obedom of Gath three months, and the Lord blessed his house, and all things that he had. Chapter 14 And Hiram, the king of Tyre, sent messengers to David, and trees of cedar, and workmen of walls and of trees, that they should build to him in house. 
and David knew that the Lord had confirmed him into king upon Israel, and that his realm was raised upon his people Israel. And David took other wives in Jerusalem, and he begat sons and daughters. And these be the names of them that were born to him in Jerusalem, Shammua, and Shabab, Nathan, and Solomon, Ibhar, and Elishua, and Elpale, and Noga, and Nepheg, and Japhia, and Elishama, and Beliada, and Eliphale. For Suth the Philistines heard that David was anointed king on all Israel, and all ascended to seek David. And when David had heard this thing, he went out against them. And Philistines came, and were spread abroad in the valley of Rephaim. And David counseled the Lord, and said, Whether I shall go up to the Philistines, and whether thou shalt betake them into mine hands. And the Lord said to him, Go thou up, and I shall betake them into thine hand. And when the Philistines had gone up into Baal-perazim, David smote them there, and said, God hath parted mine enemies by mine hand, as waters be parted. And therefore the name of that place was called Baal-perazim, and they left there the gods, which David commanded to be burnt. And another time the Philistines fell in, and were spread abroad in the valley. And again David counseled the Lord, and the Lord said to him, Thou shalt not go up after them. Go away from them, and thou shalt come against them even against the pear trees. And when thou shalt hear the sound of a goer in the top, or height, of the pear trees, then thou shalt go out to battle. For the Lord is gone out before thee, to smite the powers of Philistines. Therefore David did as God commanded to him, and he smote the castles, the powers of the Philistines, from Gibeon till to Gaza. And the name of David was published in all countries, and the Lord gave his dread on all folks. Chapter 15 And David made to him houses in the city of David, and he builded a place to the ark of the Lord, and arrayed a tabernacle to it. Then David said, It is unleafful, that the ark of God be born about of any others, no but of the deacons, which the Lord chose to bear it, and for to minister to him into without end. And David gathered together all Israel into Jerusalem, that the ark of God should be brought into his place, which he had made ready to it. Also and he gathered together the sons of Aaron, and the deacons. Of the sons of Kohath, Uriel was prince, and his brethren two hundred and twenty. Of the sons of Merari, Aziah was prince, and his brethren two hundred and thirty. Of the sons of Gershon, the prince was Joel, and his brethren in hundred and thirty. Of the sons of Elizaphon, Shemaiah was prince, and his brethren two hundred. Of the sons of Hebron, Eliel was prince, and his brethren fourscore. Of the sons of Uziel, Aminadab was prince, and his brethren in hundred and twelve. And David called Zadok and Abiathar priests, and the deacons, Uriel, Aziah, and Joel, Shemaiah, Eliel, and Aminadab, and said to them, Ye that be princes of the families of Levi, be ye hallowed with your brethren, and bring ye the ark of the Lord God of Israel to the place, that is made ready to it. Lest, as at the beginning, for ye were not present, the Lord smote us, so and now it be done, if we do any unleafful thing. Therefore the priests and deacons were hallowed, that they should bear the ark of the Lord God of Israel. And the sons of Levi took the ark of God with bars upon their shoulders, as Moses commanded by the word of the Lord. And David said to the princes of deacons, that they should ordain of their brethren singers in organs of musics, that is, in gittens, and harps, and cymbals, that the sound of gladness should sound on high. And they ordained deacons, Heman, the son of Joel, and of his brethren, Asaph, the son of Berechia, soothly of the sons of Merari, brethren of them, they ordained Ethan, the son of Cushiah and the brethren of them with them, in the second order Zechariah, and Ben, and Jaziel, and Shemiramoth, and Jehiel, and Unni, Eliab, and Beniah, and Marsiah, and Mattathia, and Eliphala, and Mikniah, and Obedim, and Jeel, porters, and the singers, Heman, Asaph, and Ethan, sounding in brazen cymbals, and Zechariah, and Azel, and Shemiramoth, and Jehiel, and Unni, and Eliab, and Marsiah, and Beniah, these sang privates in Gittens, and Mattathia, and Eliphala, and Mikniah, and Obedim, and Jeel, and Azazia, sang in harps for the eighth, and Epinition, that is, thankings that ought to be done to God, overcomer and victor, 
and Chenaniah, the prince of deacons, and of prophecy, was sovereign to before sing melody, for he was full wise, and Berachia, and Elkanah, were porters of the ark, and Shabaniah, and Jehoshaphat, and Nethaniel, and Amasai, and Zechariah, and Beniah, and Eliezer, priests, sounded with trumps before the ark of the Lord, and Obedim, and Jehia, were porters of the ark. Therefore David, and the greater men in birth of Israel, and the tribunes, went to bring the ark of bond of peace of the Lord from the house of Obedim with gladness. And when God had helped the deacons that bear the ark of bond of peace of the Lord, seven bulls and seven rams were offered. And David was clothed with a white stole, and all the deacons that bear the ark, and the singers, and Chenaniah, the prince of the prophecy among singers, were clothed in white stoles, and also David was clothed with a linen surplice. And all Israel led forth the ark of bond of peace of the Lord, and sounded in joyful song, and in sound of clarions, and in trumps, and in cymbals, and in gittens, and harps. And when the ark of bond of peace of the Lord had come into the city of David, Mitchell, the daughter of Saul, beheld forth by a window, and saw King David dancing and playing, and she despised him in her heart. Chapter 16 Therefore they brought the ark of God, and set it in the midst of the tabernacle, that David had arrayed thereto, and they offered burnt sacrifices and peaceable sacrifices before the Lord. And when David offering burnt sacrifices and peaceable sacrifices had fulfilled, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord, and he parted to all, to each by himself, from man to woman, one cake of bread, a cake of bread, and a part of roasted flesh of a bugle, and flour fried in oil. And he ordained before the ark of the Lord, of the Levites, that is, deacons, that should minister, that is, serve, and have mind of the works of the Lord, and glorify and praise the Lord God of Israel, Asaph the prince, and Zechariah his second, Forsooth Jeel, and Shemiramoth, and Jehiel, and Mattathia, and Eliab, and Beniah, and Obedim, and Jeel, on the organs of the psaltery, and on the harps. But he ordained Asaph to sound with cymbals. And he ordained Beniah and Jehaziel, priests, before the ark of the bond of peace of the Lord, for to trump continually. In that day, David made Asaph prince, and his brethren, for to acknowledge to the Lord. Acknowledge ye to the Lord, and inwardly call ye his name. Make ye his findings known among peoples. Sing ye to him, and say ye psalm to him, and tell ye all his marvels. Praise ye his holy name. The heart of men seeking the Lord be glad. Seek ye the Lord and his strength. Seek ye ever his face. Have ye mind of his marvels that he hath done, of his signs, and of the dooms of his mouth. The seed of Israel, his servant, praise thou God, the sons of Jacob, his chosen, praise ye God. He is the Lord our God, his dooms be in each land. Have ye mind without end of his covenant, of the word which he covenanted into a thousand generations, which word he covenanted with Abraham, and of his oath to Isaac. And he ordained that word to Jacob into a commandment, and to Israel into everlasting covenant. And he said, to thee I shall give the land of Canaan, the part of your heritage. When they were few in number, little, and pilgrims thereof. And they passed from folk into folk, and from a realm to another people. He suffered not any man falsely challenge them, but he blamed kings for them. Do not ye touch my Christs, that is, patriarchs anointed with the anointing of grace, and do not ye do wickedly against my prophets. All earth, sing ye to the Lord. Tell ye from day into day his health. Tell ye among heathen men his glory, his marvels among all peoples. For the Lord is great, and worthy to be praised full much, and he is horrible, that is, fearful, over all gods. For all the gods of peoples be idols, but the Lord made heavens. Acknowledging and great doing be before him, strength and joy be in the place of him. Ye families of peoples, bring ye to the Lord, Bring ye to the Lord glory and empire. Give ye the glory to his name, raise ye up sacrifice, and come ye in his sight, and worship ye the Lord in holy fairness. All earth be moved from his face, for he hath founded the world unmovable. Heavens be glad, and the earth make full out joy, 
and say they among nations, The Lord reign. The sea thunder, and his fullness. The fields fully joy they, and all things that be in those. Then the trees of the forest shall praise before the Lord, for he cometh to deem the earth. Acknowledge to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy is without end. And say ye, Thou God, our Saviour, save us, and gather us together, and deliver us from heathen men, that we acknowledge to thine holy name, and be fully glad in thy songs. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from without beginning and into without end. And all the people say, Amen, and say praising to God. Therefore David left there, before the ark of bond of peace of the Lord, Asaph and his brethren, for to minister in the sight of the ark, or before the ark, continually, by all days and their wiles. And David ordained porters, Obedom and his brethren, eight and sixty, and Obedom, the son of Jeduthun, and Hossa. And he ordained Zadok priest, and his brethren, priests, before the tabernacle of the Lord, in the high place that was in Gibeon, for to offer burnt sacrifices to the Lord upon the altar of burnt sacrifice continually, in the morrow tide and eventide, by all things that be written in the law of the Lord, which he commanded to Israel. And after him David ordained Heman and Jeduthun, and other chosen, each man by his name, for to acknowledge to the Lord, for his mercy is without end. And he ordained Heman and Jeduthun, trumping and shaking cymbals, and all organs of musics, for to sing to God. Forsooth he made the sons of Jeduthun to be porters. And all the people turned again into their house, and David turned again, to bless also his house. Chapter 17 Forsooth when David dwelled in his house, he said to Nathan, the prophet, Lo! I dwell in an house of cedars, and the ark of bond of peace of the Lord is under skins. And Nathan said to David, Do thou all things that be in thine heart, for God is with thee. Therefore in that night, the word of the Lord was made to Nathan, and said, Go thou, and speak to David, my servant, the Lord saith these things, Thou shalt not build to me an house to dwell in. Certainly I have not dwelled in an house, from that time in which I led Israel out of the land of Egypt till to this day, but ever I have changed places of the tabernacle, and have dwelled in a tent with all Israel. Whether I have spoken namely to one of the judges of Israel, to which I commanded that they should feed my people, and said, Why hast thou not builded to me an house of cedar? Now therefore thou shalt speak thus to my servant David, The Lord of hosts saith these things, I took thee, when thou followedest the flock in the pastures, that thou shouldest be duke upon my people Israel, and I was with thee whither ever thou wentest, and I killed all thine enemies before thee, and I made to thee a name, as of one of the great men that be made worshipful, either famous, in earth. And I gave a place to my people Israel, it shall be planted, and shall dwell therein, and it shall no more be moved, and the sons of wickedness shall not defoul them, as from the beginning, from the days in which I gave judges to my people Israel, and I made low all thine enemies. Therefore I tell to thee, that the Lord shall build an house to thee. And when thou hast fulfilled thy days, that thou go to thy fathers, I shall raise up thy seed after thee, that shall be of thy sons, and I shall establish his realm. He shall build to me an house, and I shall make steadfast his seat into without end. I shall be to him into a father, and he shall be to me into a son, and I shall not do away my mercy from him, as I took it away from him that was before thee, and I shall ordain him in mine house and in my realm into without end, and his throne shall be most steadfast without end. By all these words, and by all this revelation, so Nathan spake to David. And when King David had come, and had set before the Lord, he said, Lord God, who am I, and what is mine house, that thou shouldest give such things to me? But also this is seen little in thy sight, and therefore thou hast spoken of the house of thy servant, yea, into time to coming, and thou hast made me worthy to be beholden over all men. My Lord God, what may David add more, since thou hast so glorified thy servant, and hast known him? Lord, for thy servant, thou hast done by thine heart all this great doing, and thou wouldest that all great things be known. Lord, none is like thee, and none other God is without thee, of all which we have heard with our ears. For who is another as thy people Israel, 
one folk in earth, to whom God went, to deliver and make a people to himself, and to cast out by his greatness and dreads nations from the face thereof, the which people he delivered from Egypt. And thou hast set thy people Israel into a people to thee into without end, and thou, Lord, art made the God thereof. Now therefore, Lord, the word which thou hast spoken to thy servant, and on his house, be it confirmed without end, and do, as thou hast spoken, and thy name dwell, and be magnified without end. And be it said, The Lord of hosts is God of Israel, and the house of David, his servant, dwelling before him. For thou, my Lord God, hast made revelation in the ear of thy servant, that thou wouldest build to him in house, and therefore thy servant hath found trust, that he pray before thee. Now therefore, Lord, thou art God, and hast spoken to thy servant so great beneficences, and thou hast begun to bless the house of thy servant, that it be ever before thee. For, Lord, for thou blessest, it shall be blessed without end. Chapter 18 Soothe it was done after these things, that David smote the Philistines, and made them low, and he took away Gath and the villages thereof from the hand of Philistines, and he smote Moab, and Moabites were made the servants of David, and brought gifts to him. In that time David smote also Hadadezer, king of Zobah, of the country of Hamath, when he went to enlarge his empire till to the flood Euphrates. Therefore David took a thousand four horsed carts of his, and seven thousand of horsemen, and twenty thousand of footmen, and he hocked all the horses of the chariots, except in hundred four horsed carts, which he kept to himself. Forsooth also Syrians of Damascus came above, to give help to Hadadezer, king of Zobah, but David smote also of his two and twenty thousand of men, and David set knights in Damascus, that Syrians also should serve him, and bring to him gifts. And the Lord helped David in all things to which he went. And David took golden arrow cases, which the servants of Hadadezer had, and he brought those into Jerusalem, also and of Tivith, and of Chun, the cities of Hadadezer, he took full much of brass, whereof Solomon made the brazen sea, that is, washing vessel, and pillars, and brazen vessels. And when too, king of Hamath, had heard this thing, that is, that David had smitten all the host of Hadadezer, king of Zobah, he sent Hadoram, his son, to David the king, for to ask of him peace, and for to thank him, for he had overcome and smitten Hadadezer, for why king Hadadezer was adversary of two. But also king David hallowed to the Lord all the vessels of gold, and of silver, and of brass, and the silver, and the gold, which the king had taken of all folks, as well of Adumea, and of Moab, and of the sons of Ammon, as of Philistines, and of Amalek. And Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, smote Edom in the valley of salt pits, 18,000. And he set stronghold in Edom, that Edomians should serve David. And the Lord saved David in all things, to which he went. Therefore David reigned on all Israel, and did doom and right wiseness to all his people. Forsooth Joab, the son of Zeruiah, was on the host, and Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahilad, was chancellor, and Zadok, the son of Ahitub, and Abimelech, the son of Abiathar, were priests, and Shavshir was scribe, and Beniah, the son of Jehoiada, was on the legions Cherethites and Pelethites, keepers of David's head. Soothly the sons of David were the first at the hand of the king. Chapter 19 for sooth it befell that Nahash, king of the sons of Ammon, died, and his son reigned for him. And David said, I shall do mercy with Hanan, the son of Nahash, for his father gave mercy to me. And David sent messengers, to comfort him on the death of his father. And when they were come into the land of the sons of Ammon, for to comfort Hanan, the princes of the sons of Ammon said to Hanan, In hap thou guessest, that David, for cause of honor into thy father, sent men, that should comfort thee. And thou perceivest not, that his servants be come to thee to espy, and inquire, and to seek thy land. Therefore Hanan made bald and shaved the servants of David, and cutted the coats off them from the buttocks of them till to the feet, and let go them. And when they had gone forth, and had sent this to David, he sent into the meeting of them, for they had suffered great despite, and he commanded, that they should dwell in Jericho, till their beard waxed, and then they should turn again. 
and the sons of Ammon saw, that they had done wrong to David, both Hanan and the other people, and they sent a thousand talents of silver, for to hire to them chariots and horsemen of Mesopotamia, and of Syria, of Marcha, and of Zobah. And they hired to them two and thirty thousand of chariots, and the king of Marcha with his people. And when they were come, they set their tents even against Medeba, and the sons of Ammon were gathered together from their cities, and came to battle. And when David heard this, he sent Joab, and all the host of strong men. And the sons of Ammon went out, and dressed battle array beside the gate of the city. But the kings, that were come to help them, stood aside half in the field. Therefore Joab understood, that battle was made against him even against and behind his back, and he chose the strongest men of all Israel, and went against Syrians. Soothly he gave the residue part of the people under the hand of Abishai, his brother, and they went forth against the sons of Ammon. And Joab said, If Syrians shall overcome me, thou shalt help me, and if the sons of Ammon shall overcome thee, I shall help thee. Be thou comforted, and do we manly for our people, and for the cities of our God, and the Lord do that, that is good in his sight. Therefore Joab went forth, and the people that was with him, against Syrians to battle, and he drove them away. And the sons of Ammon saw, that Syrians had fled, and they fled from Abishai, his brother, and entered into the city, and Joab turned again into Jerusalem. And Syrians saw, that he had fallen down before Israel, and he sent messengers, and brought to them Syrians, that was beyond the flood, and Shaphak, the prince of chivalry of Hadadezer, was the duke of them. And when this was told to David, he gathered all Israel and passed Jordan, and he felled in on him, and dressed battle array even against them, fighting on the contrary. And Syrians fled from Israel, and David killed of the men of Syria seven thousand of chariots, that is, seven thousand men fighting in chariots, and forty thousand of footmen, and Shaphak, the prince of the host. And the servants of Hadadezer saw, that they were overcome of Israel, and they fled over to David, and served him, and Syria would no more give help to the sons of Ammon. Chapter 20 Forsooth it was done after the end of a year, in that time wherein kings be wont to go forth to battles, Joab gathered the host, and the strength of chivalry, and he wasted the land of the sons of Ammon, and went, and besieged Rabba. Forsooth David dwelled in Jerusalem, when Joab smote Rabba, and destroyed it. And David took the crown of Malchim from his head, and found therein the weight of gold a talent, and most precious gems, and he made thereof a diadem to himself. Also he took full many spoils of the city. And he led out the people that was therein, and made brads, either instruments by which corns be broken, and sleds, and iron chariots, to pass on him, so that all men were cut into diverse parts, and were all broken. David did thus to all the cities of the sons of Ammon, and he turned again with all his people into Jerusalem. After these things, a battle was made in Gezer against Philistines, wherein Sibichai Hushathite slew Sippai of the kin of Rephaim, that is, of the kind of giants, and he meeked them. Also another battle was done against the Philistines, in which a man given of God, the son of the forest, a man of Bethlehem, killed Goliath of Gath, the brother of giants, of whose shaft, or spear, the wood was as the beam of webs. But also another battle befell in Gath, in which a full long man was, having six fingers, that is, altogether four and twenty, and he was begotten of the generation of Rephaim, and he blasphemed Israel, and Jonathan, the son of Shimea, brother of David, killed him. These be the sons of Rephaim in Gath, that fell down in the hand of David, and of his servants. Chapter 21 Soothly Satan rose against Israel, and stirred David for to number Israel. And David said to Joab, and to the princes of the people, Go ye, and number all Israel from Beersheba till to Dan, and bring ye the number to me, that I know what it is. And Joab answered, The Lord increase his people an hundredfold more than they be. My lord the king, whether all be not thy servants. Why seeketh my lord this thing, that shall be a reckoned into sin to Israel? But the word of the king had more the mastery, and Joab went out, and compassed all Israel, and turned again into Jerusalem. And he gave to David the number of them, which he had compassed, 
and all the number of Israel was found a thousand thousand, and an hundred thousand of men, drawing out sword. For sooth of Judah were three hundred thousand, and seventy thousand warriors. But Joab numbered not Levi and Benjamin, for against his will he did the commandment of the king. For sooth that thing that was commanded displeased the Lord, therefore he smote Israel. And David said to God, I have sinned greatly, that I would do this thing, I beseech thee, Lord, do thou away the wickedness of thy servant, for I did follow thee. And the Lord spake to Gad, the prophet of David, and said to him, Go thou, and speak to David, and say to him, The Lord saith these things, I give to thee the choosing of three things, choose thou one which thou wilt, that I do to thee. And when Gad was come to David, he said to David, The Lord saith these things, Choose thou that that thou wilt of these, either pestilence three years, either that three months thou flee thine enemies, and be not able to escape their sword, either that the sword of the Lord and death reign three days in the land, and that the angel of the Lord slay in all the coasts of Israel. Now therefore see thou, what I shall answer to him that sent me. And David said to Gad, Anguishes oppress me on each part, but it is better to me, that I fall into the hands of the Lord, for his merciful doings be many, then into the hands of men. Therefore the Lord sent pestilence into Israel, and seventy thousand of men fell down of Israel. Also the Lord sent an angel into Jerusalem, that he should smite it, and when it was smitten, the Lord saw, and had mercy upon the greatness of evil, and he commanded to the angel that smote, and said, It sufficed, now thine hand cease. And the angel of the Lord stood beside the corn floor of Ornan and Jebusite. And David raised up his eyes, and saw the angel of the Lord standing betwixt heaven and earth, and a drawn sword in his hand, turned against Jerusalem. And both he and the greater men in birth were clothed with hair shirts, and they fell down upon the earth. And David said to the Lord, Whether I am not he that commanded that the people should be numbered? I it am that sinned, I it am that did evil. What hath this flock deserved? My Lord God, I beseech thee, thine hand be turned against me, and against the house of my father, but thy people be not smitten. And the angel of the Lord commanded Gad, that he should say to David, that he should go up, and build an altar to the Lord God in the corn floor of Ornan and Jebusite. Therefore David went up by the word of Gad, which he spake to him by the word of the Lord. And when Ornan had beheld, and saw the angel, and his four sons with him had seen, they hid them, for in that time Ornan threshed wheat in the corn floor. Therefore when David came to Ornan, Ornan beheld David, and went forth from the corn floor against him, and worshipped him lowly upon the ground. And David said to him, Give the place of the corn floor to me, that I build therein an altar to the Lord, so that thou take as much silver as it is worth, and that the vengeance cease from the people. And Ornan said to David, Take thou it, and my lord the king do he whatever thing pleaseth him. But also I give oxen into burnt sacrifice, and instruments of wood, whereby corns be threshed, into sticks to be burnt, and wheat into sacrifice. I give gladly all these things. And king David said to him, It shall not be done so, but I shall give to thee silver as much as it is worth, for I ought not to take away from thee, and offer so to the Lord burnt sacrifices freely given. Therefore David gave to Ornan for the place six hundred shekels of gold of full just weight. And David builded there an altar to the Lord, and offered thereon burnt sacrifices and peaceable sacrifices, and he inwardly called God, and God heard him in fire from heaven upon the altar of burnt sacrifice. And the Lord commanded to the angel, and he turned his sword again into the sheath. Then anon David saw, that the Lord had heard him in the corn floor of Ornan Jebusite, and he offered their slain sacrifices. Forsooth the tabernacle of the Lord, that Moses had made in the desert, and the altar of burnt sacrifices, was in that tempest in the high place of Gibeon, and David might not go to the altar, to beseech God there, for he was afeared with full great dread, seeing the sword of the angel of the Lord. Chapter 22 And David said, This is the house of God, and this altar is into burnt sacrifice of Israel. And David commanded that all converts, that is, all men turned from heatherness to the law of Israel, should be gathered together of the land of Israel, 
and he ordained of them masons for to cut, or hew, stones and to polish them, and that the house of the Lord should be builded. Also David made ready full much iron to the nails of the gates, and to the mixings and jointures, and unnumberable weight of brass. Also the trees of cedar might not be guessed, which the men of Sidon and the men of Tyre brought to David. And David said, Solomon, my son, is a little child and delicate, that is, for tenderness of age. Soothly the house, which I will be builded to the Lord, oughteth to be such, that it be named in all countries. Therefore I shall make ready necessaries to him. And for this cause David before his death made ready all costs. And he called Solomon, his son, and commanded to him, that he should build an house to the Lord God of Israel. And David said to Solomon, My son, it was my will to build an house to the name of the Lord my God. But the word of the Lord was made to me, and said, Thou hast shed out much blood, and thou hast fought full many battles. Thou mayest not build an house to my name, for thou hast shed out so much blood before me. The son that shall be born to thee, shall be a man most peaceable, for I shall make him to have rest of all his enemies by compass, and for this cause he shall be called peaceable, and I shall give peace and rest in Israel in all his days. He shall build an house to my name, he shall be to me into a son, and I shall be to him into a father, and I shall make steadfast the seat of his realm on Israel without end. Now therefore, my son, the Lord be with thee, and have thou prosperity, and build thou in house to the Lord thy God, as he hath spoken of thee. And the Lord give to thee prudence and wit, that thou may govern Israel, and keep the law of the Lord thy God. For then thou mayest profit, if thou keepest the behests and dooms, which the Lord commanded to Moses, that he should teach Israel. Be thou strengthened, and do thou manly, dread thou not without faith, neither dread thou within. Lo, in my poverty I have made ready the costs of the house of the Lord, an hundred thousand talents of gold, and a thousand thousand talents of silver. Soothly of brass and iron is no weight, for the number is overcome by greatness. I have made ready wood and stones at all costs. Also thou hast full many craftsmen, masons, and layers of stones, and craftsmen of timber, and of all crafts, most prudent to make work, in gold, and silver, and brass, and in iron, of which is no number. Therefore rise thou up, and make it, and the Lord shall be with thee. Also David commanded to all the princes of Israel, that they should help Solomon, his son, and said, Ye see, that the Lord your God is with you, and he hath given to you rest by compass about, and he hath betaken all enemies in your hand, and the earth is subject before the Lord, and before his people. Therefore give ye your hearts and your souls, that ye seek the Lord your God, and rise ye up together, and build ye a sanctuary to the Lord our God, that the ark of bond of peace of the Lord be brought in thither, and that vessels hallowed to the Lord be brought into the house, that is builded to the name of the Lord. Chapter 23 Then David was eld and full of days, and he ordained Solomon, his son, king upon Israel. And he gathered together all the princes of Israel, and the priests, and deacons. And the deacons were numbered from twenty years and above, and eight and thirty thousand of men were found of them. And four and twenty thousand men were chosen of them, and were parted into the service of the house of the Lord, and of sovereigns and judges six thousand, and David parted them by the wiles of the sons of Levi, that is, of Gershon, and Kohath, and Merari. And the sons of Gershon were Lardan and Shimei. The sons of Lardan were three, the prince Jehiel, and Zetham, and Joel. The sons of Shimei were three, Shelemoth, and Haziel, and Haran. These were the princes of the families of Lardan. And the sons of Shimei were Jehath, and Zena, and Jeush, and Beria. These four were the sons of Shimei. And Jehath was the former, and Zeza, the second. And Jeush and Beria had not full many sons, and therefore they were reckoned in one family, and in one house. The sons of Kohath were four, Amram, and Izar, and Hebron, and Uziel. The sons of Amram were Aaron and Moses. And Aaron was separated, that he should minister in the holy of holy things, he and his sons without end, and to burn incense to the Lord by his custom, and to bless his name without end. Also the sons of Moses, the man of God, were numbered in the lineage of Levi. And the sons of Eliezer were Rehabiah the first, 
and other sons were not to Eliezer. For sooth the sons of Rehabiah were multiplied full much. The sons of Izar, Shelemoth the first. The sons of Hebron, Jeriah the first, Amariah the second, Jehaziel the third, Jechamiam the fourth. The sons of Uziel, Micah the first, Jesiah the second. The sons of Merari were Mali and Mushi. The sons of Mali were Eliezer, and Kish and Eliezer was dead, and had not sons, but daughters, and the sons of Kish, the brethren of them, that is, cousins German, wedded them. The sons of Mushi were three, Mali, and Eda, and Jeremoth. These were the sons of Levi in their kindreds and families, and they were princes by wiles, and the number of all the heads, that did the travail of the service of the house of the Lord, from twenty years and above. For David said, The Lord God of Israel hath given rest to his people, and a dwelling in Jerusalem into without end. And it shall not be the office of deacons for to bear more the tabernacle, and all the vessels thereof for to minister therein. Also by the last behests of David the number of the sons of Levi shall be reckoned from twenty years and above, and they shall be under the hand of the sons of Aaron, into the worship of the house of the Lord, in porches, and in chambers, and in the place of cleansing, and in the sanctuary, and in all works of the service of the temple of the Lord. And priests shall be over the loaves of proposition, that is, setting forth, and to the sacrifice of flour, and to the paste sodden in water, and to the loaves, and to the frying pan, and to hot flour, and to singe, and over all weight and measure. And the deacons shall be, that they stand early, for to acknowledge and sing to the Lord, and in like manner at eventide, as well in the offering of burnt sacrifices of the Lord, as in Sabbaths, and calends, and other solemnities, by the number and ceremonies of each thing, continually before the Lord, and that they keep the observances of the tabernacle of the bond of peace of the Lord, and the custom of the sanctuary, and the observance of the sons of Aaron, their brethren, that they minister in the house of the Lord. Chapter 24 Forsooth to the sons of Aaron these portions shall be. The sons of Aaron were Nadab, and Abihu, Eliezer, and Athamah. But Nadab and Abihu were dead without free children before their father, and Eliezer and Athamah were set in priesthood. And David parted them, that is, Zadok, of the sons of Eliezer, and Ahimelech, of the sons of Athamah, by their wiles and their service. And the sons of Eliezer were found many more in the men princes, than the sons of Athamah. And David parted to them, that is, to the sons of Eliezer, sixteen princes by their families, and to the sons of Athamah eight princes by their families and houses. And he parted ever either families among themselves by lots, for there were princes of the sanctuary, and princes of the house of God, as well of the sons of Eliezer, and of the sons of Athamah. And Shemaiah, the son of Nethaniel, a scribe of the lineage of Levi, described them before the king and princes, and before Zadok, the priest, and Ahimelech, the son of Abiathar, and to the princes of the families of the priests and of the deacons. He described one house of Eleazar, that was sovereign to others, and the Tophah house of Athamah, that had other priests and deacons under him. Forsooth the first lot went out to Jehoiarib, the second to Jediah, the third to Haram, the fourth to Sorim, the fifth to Malchija, the sixth to Mijaman, the seventh to Hakoz, the eighth to Abia, the ninth to Jeshua, the tenth to Shekania, the eleventh to Eliashib, the twelfth to Jakim, the thirteenth to Huppah, the fourteenth to Jeshubi, the fifteenth to Bilgah, the sixteenth to Imma, the seventeenth to Hezir, the eighteenth to Aphsis, the nineteenth to Pethahia, the twentieth to Jehazekel, the one and twentieth to Jakin, the two and twentieth to Gamal, the three and twentieth to Deliah, and the four and twentieth to Marzia. These were the wiles, or times of them by their services, that they enter into the house of God, and by their custom under the hand of Aaron their father, as the Lord God of Israel commanded. For Sooth Shubael was prince of the sons of Levi that were residue that were left, of the sons of Amram, and the son of Shubael was Jedriah, also Ishia was prince of the sons of Rehabiah, and Shelemoth was prince of Israelites, and the son of Shelemoth was Jehath, and, his first son was Jeriah, Amari the second, Jehaziel the third, Jechamiam the fourth. The son of Uziel was Micah. The son of Micah was Shemir. The brother of Micah was Ishia, 
and the son of Ishia was Zechariah. The sons of Merari were Mali and Mushi. The son of Jazia was Beno, and the son of Merari was Jazia, and Shoam, and Zakur, and Ibri. And the son of Mali was Eliezer, which had not three sons, and the son of Kish was Jeremiel. The sons of Mushi were Mali, Eda, and Jeremoth. These were the sons of Levi, by the houses of their families. Also and they sent lots against their brethren, the sons of Aaron, before David the king, and before Zadok, and Ahimelech, and before the princes of the families of priests, and of deacons. Lot parted evenly all things, both the greater and the less. Chapter 25 Therefore David, and the magistrates of the host, separated to the service of the sons of Asaph, and of Heman, and of Jeduthun, the which should prophesy in harps, and in psalteries, and in cymbals, by their number, and serve the office hallowed, or enjoined to them. Of the sons of Asaph, Zachar, and Joseph, and Nethaniah, and Asala, and the sons of Asaph, under the hand of Asaph, prophesied beside the king. And the sons of Jeduthun were these, Gedaliah, Zeri, Jeshiah, and Hashabiah, and Mattathiah, six, under the hand of their father Jeduthun, that prophesied in an harp, upon men acknowledging and praising the Lord. Also the sons of Heman were Heman, Bukiah, Mataniah, Uziel, Shebuel, and Jeremoth, Hananiah, Hanani, Eliathah, Gidalti, and Romantiezer, and Joshbekashah, Malathi, Hothir, and Mahazioth. All these the sons of Heman were prophets of the king in the words of God, that he should enhance the horn, or strength. And God gave to Heman fourteen sons and three daughters. All these under the hand of their father were dealed, either assigned, to sing in the temple of the Lord, in cymbals, and psalteries, and harps, into the service of the house of the Lord, nigh the king, that is say, Asaph, and Jeduthun, and Heman. And the number of them, with their brethren that taught the song of the Lord, all the teachers, was two hundred fourscore and eight. And they sent lots by their wiles evenly, as well the greater as the less, also a wise man and an unwise. And the first lot went out to Joseph, that was of Asaph, the second to Gedaliah, to him, and to his sons and to his brethren, twelve, the third to Zachar, to his sons and to his brethren, twelve, the fourth to Isri, to his sons and to his brethren, twelve, the fifth to Nethaniah, to his sons and to his brethren, twelve, the sixth to Bukiah, to his sons and to his brethren, twelve, the seventh to Jeshelah, to his sons and to his brethren, twelve. The eighth to Jeshiah, to his sons and to his brethren, twelve. The ninth to Mataniah, to his sons and to his brethren, twelve. The tenth to Shimei, to his sons and to his brethren, twelve. The eleventh to Azrael, to his sons and to his brethren, twelve. The twelfth to Hashabiah, to his sons and to his brethren, twelve. The thirteenth to Shubael, to his sons and to his brethren, twelve the fourteenth to Mattathia, to his sons and to his brethren, twelve, the fifteenth to Jeremoth, to his sons and to his brethren, twelve, the sixteenth to Hananiah, to his sons and to his brethren, twelve, the seventeenth to Joshbekashah, to his sons and to his brethren, twelve, the eighteenth to Hanani, to his sons and to his brethren, twelve, the nineteenth to Malathi, to his sons and to his brethren, twelve, the twentieth to Eliathah, to his sons and to his brethren, twelve, the one and twentieth to Hothir, to his sons and to his brethren, twelve. The two and twentieth to Gidalti, to his sons and to his brethren, twelve. The three and twentieth to Mahazioth, to his sons and to his brethren, twelve. The four and twentieth to Romamtiezer, to his sons and to his brethren, twelve. Chapter 26 Forsooth these were the partings of porters. Of the sons of Korah, Meshelamiah was the son of Kor of the sons of Asaph. The sons of Meshelamiah were Zechariah the first begotten, Jedrael the second, Zebediah the third, Jathniel the fourth, Elam the fifth, Jehohanan the sixth, Elioni the seventh. And the sons of Obeddom were these, Shemaiah the first begotten, Jehozabad the second, Joah the third, and Sakah the fourth, Nethaniel the fifth, Amil the sixth, Isaac the seventh, Palthi the eighth, for the Lord blessed him. And to Shemaiah, his son, were born sons, sovereigns of their families, for they were full strong men. 
Therefore the sons of Shemaiah were Ophni, and Rephel, and Ogd, and Elzabad, and his brethren, full strong men, also Elihu, and Semachiah. All these were of the sons of Obedim. They and their sons and their brethren, full strong men for to serve, two and sixty of Obedim. And of Meshelamiah were eighteen sons and brethren, full strong men. And of Hossa, that is, of the sons of Merari, Simri was prince. And for he had no first begotten son, therefore his father ordained him into prince. And Hilkiah the second, Tabalia the third, Zechariah the fourth. All these thirteen were the sons and brethren of Hossa. These were parted into porters, that ever the princes of keepings, as also their brethren, should minister in the house of the Lord. Therefore lots were sent, or cast, evenly, both to the little and to the great, by their families, into each of the gates. Therefore the lot of the east coast befell to Shelemiah, and the north coast befell by lot to Zechariah, his son, a full prudent man and well learned, and to Obedim and to his son's lot fell at the south coast, in which part of the house was the council of the elder men. Shuppam and Hossa were at the west coast, besides the gate that leadeth to the way of going up, keeping against keeping. And at the east part were six deacons, and at the north were four by day, and at the south also were four at midday, and, where the council was, were twain and twain. And in the cells, I the little houses, of porters at the west side, were four in the way, and twain by the cells. These were partings of the porters, of the sons of Kor and of Merari. And a here was over the treasures of the house of the Lord, and over vessels of the holy things. The sons of Lardan, the son of Gershon, of Lardan were the princes of the families of Lardan, and of Gershon, and of Jehiel. The sons of Jehiel were Zetham, and Joel, his brother, over the treasures of the house of the Lord, Amramites, and Israelites, and Hebronites, and Uzzelites. And Shebuel, the son of Gershom, son of Moses, was sovereign of the treasures, and his brother, Eliezer, whose son was Rehabiah, and his son was Jeshiah, and his son was Joram, and his son was Zishri, but and his son was Shelemoth. That Shelemoth, and his brethren, were over the treasures of the holy things, which David the king hallowed, and the princes of families, and the tribunes, and the centurions, and the dukes of the host, of the battles, and of the spoils of battles, which they hallowed to the reparation and pertinence of the temple of the Lord. And Samuel, the prophet, hallowed all these things, and Saul, the son of Kish, and Abner, the son of Enna, and Joab, the son of Zeruiah, and all these hallowed those things by the hand of Shelemoth, and of his brethren. And Chenaniah was sovereign, and his sons, to Israelites, to the works without fifth on Israel, to teach and to deem them. And of Hebronites, Hashabiah, and his brethren, full strong men, a thousand and seven hundred, were sovereigns upon Israel beyond Jordan against the west, in all the works of the Lord, and into the service of the king. And Jerijah was prince of Hebronites, by their families and kindreds. In the fortieth year of the realm of David there were numbered, and were found full strong men in Jazer of Gilead, and his brethren, of stronger age, two thousand and seven hundred, princes of families. And King David made them sovereigns of Reubenites, and Gadites, and of the half-lineage of Manasseh, into all the service of God, and of the king. Chapter 27 Forsooth the sons of Israel by their number, the princes of families, the tribunes, and centurions, and prefects, that ministered to the king by their companies of knights, entering in and going out by each month in the year, were sovereigns, each by himself, upon four and twenty thousand. Jashobim, the son of Zabdiel, was sovereign of the first company in the first month, and under him were four and twenty thousand. Of the sons of Phares, was the prince of all princes in the host, in the first month. Dodiahohite had the company of the second month, and after himself he had another man, Mekloth by name, that governed a part of the host of four and twenty thousand. And Beniah, the son of Jehoiada, the priest, was duke of the third company in the third month, and four and twenty thousand were in his parting, that is Beniah, the strongest man among thirty and above thirty, and Amizabad, his son, was sovereign of his company. In the fourth month, the fourth prince was Asahil, the brother of Joab, and Zebediah, his son, after him, and four and twenty thousand were in his company. 
In the fifth month, the fifth prince was Shamhatha's Rahit, and four and twenty thousand were in his company. In the sixth month, the sixth prince was Ira, the son of Ikesh, Tekoit, and four and twenty thousand were in his company. In the seventh month, the seventh prince was Hela's Pelonite, of the sons of Ephraim, four and twenty thousand were in his company. In the eighth month, the eighth prince was Sibakai Hushathite, of the generation of Zahites, and four and twenty thousand were in his company. In the ninth month, the ninth prince was Abiezer Anitothite, of the generation of Benjamin, and four and twenty thousand were in his company. In the tenth month, the tenth prince was Maharai, and he was Netophathite, of the generation of Zahites, and four and twenty thousand were in his company. In the eleventh month, the eleventh prince was Benaiah Pirithonite, of the sons of Ephraim, and four and twenty thousand were in his company. In the twelfth month, the twelfth prince was Heldai Netophathite, of the generation of Othniel, and four and twenty thousand were in his company. Forsooth these were the sovereigns of the lineages of Israel, Duke Eliezer, the son of Zishri, was sovereign to Reubenites, Duke Shephashia, the son of Marcha, was sovereign to Simeonites, Hashabiah, the son of Kemuel, was sovereign to the Levites, Zadok was sovereign to Aaronites, Elihu, the brother of David, was sovereign to the lineage of Judah, Omri, the son of Michael, was sovereign to Isaacarites, Ishmael, the son of Obadiah, was sovereign to Zebulunites, Jeremoth, the son of Azrael, was sovereign to Naphtalites, Hoshe, the son of Azaziah, was sovereign to the sons of Ephraim, Joel, the son of Pediah, was sovereign to the half-lineage of Manasseh, and Iddo, the son of Zechariah, was sovereign to the half-lineage of Manasseh in Gilead, and Jasiel, the son of Abner, was sovereign to Benjamin, and Azrael, the son of Jeroam, was sovereign to Dan. These were the princes of the sons of Israel. And David would not number them that were within twenty years, for the Lord said, that he would multiply Israel as the stars of heaven. Joab, the son of Zeruiah, began for to number Israel, but he fulfilled not, for ire of God fell upon Israel for this thing, and therefore the number of them that were numbered, was not told in the books of chronicles of King David. Forsooth Asmavath, the son of Adiel, was on the treasuries of the king, but Jehonathan, the son of Uzziah, was sovereign over these treasures, that were in cities, and in towns, and in towers. And Ezri, the son of Chelub, was sovereign upon the work of husbandry, and upon earth tillers, that tilled the land, and Shimei Ramathte was sovereign upon tillers of vineries, and Zabdi Shipmite was sovereign upon the wine cellars, for Balan and Gedorite was on the olive places, and the fig places, that were in the field places, and Josh was sovereign upon the shops, either cellars, of oil, and Shitri Sharonite was sovereign upon the droves that were pastured in Sharon, and Shaphat, the son of Adlai, was over the oxen in valleys, and Obel of Ishmael was over the camels, and Jedriah Meronathite was over the asses, and Jaziz Hagarite was over the sheep. All these were princes of the chattel of King David. And Jonathan, the brother of David's father, was a counselor, a mighty man, and prudent, and lettered. He and Jehiel, the son of Hachmoni, were with the sons of the king. Also Arathophel was a counselor of the king, and Hushai was a friend of the king. After Arathophel was Jehoiada, the son of Beniah, and Abiathar, but Joab was prince of the host of the king. Chapter 28 Therefore David called together all the princes of Israel, the dukes of lineages, and the sovereigns of companies, that ministered to the king, that served the king, also the tribunes, and centurions, and them that were sovereigns over the cattle, or over the chattel, and the possessions of the king, and his sons, with eunuchs, and all the mighty and strong men in the host of Jerusalem. And when the king had risen, and stood up, he said, My brethren and my people, hear ye me. I thought for to build an house, wherein the ark of bond of peace of the Lord, and the stool of the feet of our God, should rest, and I have made ready all things to build it. But God said to me, Thou shalt not build an house to my name, for thou art a man warrior, and hast shed blood. But the Lord God of Israel chose me of all the house of my father, that I should be king on Israel without end. For of Judah he hath chosen princes, soothly of the house of Judah, 
he hath chosen the house of my father, and of the sons of my father, it pleased him to choose me king on all Israel. But also of my sons, for the Lord hath given to me many sons, he hath chosen Solomon, my son, that he should sit in the throne of the realm of the Lord on Israel. And he said to me, Solomon, thy son, shall build mine house and mine altars, for I have chosen him to me into a son, and I shall be to him into a father, and I shall make steadfast his realm into without end, if he shall continue to do my behests and dooms, as unto day. Now therefore before all the company of Israel, in the hearing of God, keep ye and seek ye all the commandments of your Lord God, that ye have in possession a good land, and that ye leave it to your sons after you into without end. But thou, Solomon, my son, know the God of thy father, and serve thou him with perfect heart, and with a willful soul or mind. For the Lord searcheth all hearts, and he understandeth all the thoughts of souls. If thou seekest him, thou shalt find him. Forsooth if thou forsakest him, he shall cast thee away without end. Now therefore, for the Lord hath chosen thee, for to build the house of sanctuary, be thou comforted, and perform it. And David gave to Solomon, his son, the describing, either the ensample, of the porch of the temple, and of cellars, and of the solar, and of closets in privy places, and of the house of propitiation, or of mercy doing, that is, of the holy of holy things, where the propitiatory was, also and he gave him ensample of all things which he thought, of the large places, and of chambers by compass, into the treasures of the house of the Lord, and into the treasures of holy things, and of the partings of priests and deacons, into all the works of the house of the Lord, and all vessels of service of the temple of the Lord. Of gold in weight by each vessel of service, and of silver, for diversity of vessels, and of works, but also to golden candlesticks, and to their lanterns, he gave gold, for the measure of each candlestick, and of lanterns. Also and in silver and candlesticks, and in their lanterns, he betook to them the weight of silver, for the diversity of measure of those. And he gave gold into the board of setting forth, for the diversity of measure, also and he gave silver into other silver and boards, also to flesh hooks and vials, and to senses of purest gold, and to golden basins, for the manner of measure, he separated a weight into a basin and a basin, also and into silver and basins he separated diverse weight of silver. And he gave most fine gold to the altar, wherein incense was burnt, that a likeness of the cart of cherubims, holding forth wings, and covering the ark of bond of peace of the Lord, should be made thereof. And David said, All things came written by the hand of the Lord to me, that I should understand all the works of the exemplar of the ensampler. And David said to Solomon, his son, Do thou manly, and be thou comforted, and make. Dread thou not without faith, neither dread thou within. For my Lord God shall be with thee, and he shall not leave thee, neither shall forsake thee, till thou perform all the work of the service of the house of the Lord. Lo, the partings of priests and of deacons, into all the work of the service of the house of the Lord, shall stand nigh thee, and they be ready to do their service, and both the princes and the people know to do all thy commandments. Chapter 29 And King David spake to all the church, God hath chosen Solomon, my son, yet a child and tender, Forsooth the work is great, and a dwelling is not made ready to man, but to God. Soothly I in all my mights have made ready the costs of the house of my God, gold to golden vessels, silver to silver and vessels, brass to brazen vessels, iron to iron vessels, and tree to treen vessels, onyx stones, and stones as of the color of women's ointment, and each precious stone of diverse colors, and marble of diverse colors, most plenteously. And over these things, I give gold and silver into the temple of my God, which I have offered of my proper chattel into the house of my God, besides these things which I have made ready into the holy house, three thousand talents of gold, of the gold of Ophir, and seven thousand of talents of silver most proved, to overgive the walls of the temple, and works be made by the hands of craftsmen, wherever gold is needful, of gold, and wherever silver is needful, of silver. And if any man offereth by his free will, fill he his hand today, and offer he that that he will to the Lord. Therefore the princes of families, and the dukes of the lineages of Israel, and the tribunes, and the centurions, 
and the princes of the possessions of the king, promised to give thereto, promised to give gifts to the temple, and they gave into the works of the house of the Lord five thousand talents of gold, and ten thousand shillings, and ten thousand talents of silver, and eighteen thousand talents of brass, and an hundred thousand talents of iron. And at whomever precious stones were found, they gave into the treasure, into the treasury of the house of the Lord, by the hand of Jehiel Gershonite. And the people was glad, when they promised to vows by their free will, for with all the heart they offered those to the Lord. But also King David was glad with great joy, and he blessed the Lord before all the multitude, and said, Lord God of Israel, our Father, thou art blessed from without beginning into without end. Lord, worthy doing is thine, that is, thy doing is worthy and great, and power, and glory, and victory, and praising is to thee. For all things that be in heaven and in earth be thine, Lord, the realm is thine, and thou art over all princes. Riches be thine, and glory is thine. Thou art Lord of all. In thine hand is strength, and power, and in thine hand is greatness, and lordship of all. Now therefore, our God, we acknowledge to thee, and we praise thy noble name. Who am I, and who is my people, that we may promise all these things to thee? All things be thine, and we have given to thee those things, which we have taken of thine hand. For we be pilgrims and commelings before thee, as all our fathers were. Our days be as shadow on the earth, and there is no tarrying. Our Lord God, all this plenty of diverse goods which we have made ready, that in house should be builded to thine holy name, is of thine hand, and all things be thine. My God, I know, that thou provest hearts, and that thou lovest simpleness, that is, lowness, or meekness, of heart. Wherefore in the simpleness of mine heart, I have offered gladly all these things, and I have seen with great joy thy people, which is found here, to offer gifts to thee. Lord God of Abraham, and of Isaac, and of Israel, our fathers, keep thou without end this will of their hearts, and this mind dwell ever into the worshipping of thee. Also give thou to Solomon, my son, a perfect heart, that he keep thy behests, and thy witnessings, and thy ceremonies, and do all these things, and that he build the house, whose costs I have made ready. Soothly David commanded to all the church, that is, all the people gathered together, Bless ye the Lord our God. And all the church, that is, the people, blessed the Lord God of their fathers, and they bowed themselves, and worshipped God, and afterward the king. And they offered slain sacrifices to the Lord, and they offered burnt sacrifices in the day following, a thousand bulls, and a thousand rams, and a thousand lambs, with their flowing sacrifices, and with all the custom, most plenteously, into all Israel. And they ate and drank before the Lord in that day, with great gladness. And they anointed the second time Solomon, the son of David, and they anointed him into prince to the Lord, and Zadok into bishop. And Solomon sat on the throne of the Lord into king, for David, his father, and it pleased all men, and all Israel obeyed to him. But also all princes, and mighty men, and all the sons of King David, gave hand, that is, swearing or steadfast promising to be faithful, and were subject to Solomon the king. Therefore the Lord magnified, or made great, Solomon upon all Israel, and gave to him glory of the realm, what manner glory no king of Israel had before him. And David, the son of Jesse, reigned upon all Israel. And the days in which he reigned upon Israel were forty years. In Hebron he reigned seven years, and in Jerusalem he reigned three and thirty years. And he died in good eld, and was full of days, and riches, and glory, and Solomon, his son, reigned for him. Forsooth the former and the last deeds of King David, be written in the book of Samuel, the prophet, and in the book of Nathan, the prophet, and in the book of Gad, the prophet, and of all his realm, and strength, and times, that passed under him, either in Israel, either in all realms of lands. The Second Book of the Chronicles Chapter 1 Therefore Solomon, the son of David, was comforted in his realm, and the Lord was with him, and magnified him on high. And Solomon commanded to all Israel, to tribunes, and centurions, and to dukes, and to doomsmen of all Israel, and to the princes of families, 
and Solomon went with all the multitude into the high place of Gibeon, where the tabernacle of bond of peace of the Lord was, which tabernacle Moses, the servant of the Lord, made in wilderness. For sooth David had brought the ark of God from kiriath Jerim into the place which he had made ready to it, and where he had set a tabernacle to it, that is, in Jerusalem. And the brazen altar, which Bezaleel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, had made, was there before the tabernacle of the Lord, which also Solomon and all the church sought. And Solomon went up to the brazen altar, before the tabernacle of the bond of peace of the Lord, and offered in it a thousand sacrifices. Lo! Forsooth in that night God appeared to him, and said, Ask that that thou wilt, that I give to thee. And Solomon said to God, Thou hast done great mercy with David, my father, and hast ordained me king for him. Now therefore, Lord God, thy word be fulfilled, which thou promisedest to David, my father, for thou hast made me king upon thy great people, which is so unnumberable as the dust of earth. Give thou to me wisdom and understanding, that I go in and go out before thy people, for who may deem worthily this thy people, which is so great? And God said to Solomon, For that this thing pleased more thine heart, and thou askest not riches, and chattel, and glory, neither the lives of them that hate thee, but neither full many days of thy life, but thou hast asked wisdom and knowing, that thou mayest deem my people, upon which I have ordained thee king, wisdom and knowing be given to thee, and over this, I shall give to thee riches, and chattel, and glory, so that none among kings, neither before thee, nor after thee, be like thee. Then Solomon came from the high place of Gibeon into Jerusalem, before the tabernacle of the bond of peace, and he reigned upon Israel. And Solomon gathered together to him chariots and knights, and a thousand and four hundred chariots were made to him, and twelve thousand knights, and he made him to be in the cities of carts, and with the king in Jerusalem. And the king gave in Jerusalem gold and silver as stones in plenty, and he gave cedar trees as sycamores, that come forth in field places in great multitude. And horses were brought to him from Egypt, and from Koa, by the merchants of the king, which went, and bought by price, a chariot of horses for six hundred pieces of silver, and an horse for an hundred and fifty. In like manner buying was made of all the realms of cities, and of the kings of Syria. Chapter 2 Forsooth Solomon deemed, or purposed, to build an house to the name of the Lord, and a palace to himself. And he numbered seventy thousand of men bearing in shoulders, and fourscore thousand that should cut, or hew, stones in hills, and the sovereigns of them were three thousand and six hundred. And Solomon sent to Hiram, the king of Tyre, and said, As thou didst with my father David, and sentest him trees of cedar, that he should build to him in house, in which also he dwelled. So do thou with me, that I build an house to the name of the Lord my God, and that I hallow it, to burn incense before him, and to make odor of sweet-smelling spiceries, and to everlasting setting forth of loaves, and to burn sacrifices in the morrow-tide and eventide, and in sabbaths and new moons, that is, feasts in the beginnings of months, and in solemnities of the Lord our God into without end, which observances and hallowings be commanded to Israel. For the house which I covet to build is great, forsooth the Lord our God is great over all gods. Who therefore may have might to build a worthy house to him? For if heaven and heavens of heavens may not take or hold him, how great am I, that I may build an house to him, but to this thing only, that incense be burnt there before him. Therefore send thou to me a learned man, that can work in gold, and in silver, in brass, and iron, in purple, and in red silk, and in jacinth, and that can grave graving with these craftsmen, which I have with me in Judah and in Jerusalem, the which men David, my father, before made ready. But also send thou to me cedar trees, and pine trees, and theine trees of the Lebanon. For I know, that thy servants can cut trees of the Lebanon, and my servants shall be with thy servants, that full many trees be made ready to me. For the house which I covet to build is full great and noble. Furthermore to thy servants, workmen that shall cut trees, I shall give into meats twenty thousand cores of wheat, and so many cores of barley, and twenty thousand measures of oil, that be called baths. And Hiram, king of Tyre, said by letters which he sent to Solomon, for the Lord loved his people, 
therefore he hath made thee to reign upon it. And Hiram added to, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, that made heaven and earth, which hath given to King David a wise son, and learned, and witting, and prudent, that he should build an house to the Lord, and a palace to himself. Therefore I have sent to thee a prudent man and most knowing, Hiram, my father, the son of a woman of the lineage of Dan, whose father was a man of Tyre, the which Hiram can work in gold, and silver, in brass, and in iron, and in marble, and in trees, also in purple, and jacinth, and bis, and in red silk, and the which Hiram can grave in all graving, and can find prudently, whatever thing is needful in work with thy craftsmen, and with the craftsmen of my lord David, thy father. Therefore, my lord, send thou to thy servants the wheat, and barley, and oil, and wine, which thou hast promised. And we shall cut trees of the Lebanon, how many ever thou hast need of, and we shall bring those trees in ships by the sea into Joppa, and it shall be thine doing to lead those over into Jerusalem. Then Solomon numbered all men converted from heathenness, that were in the land of Israel, after the numbering that David, his father, had numbered, and an hundred thousand and three and fifty thousand and six hundred were found of them. And he made of them seventy thousand, that should bear burdens on their shoulders, and fourscore thousand, that should cut, or hew, stones in hills, and he made three thousand and six hundred sovereigns of works of the people. Chapter 3 And Solomon began to build the house of the Lord in Jerusalem, in the hill of Moriah, that was showed to David, his father, in the place that David had made ready in the corn floor of Ornan Jebusite. Forsooth he began to build in the second day of the month, in the fourth year of his realm. And these were the foundaments, which Solomon set it, that he should build the house of God, sixty cubits of length in the first measure, and twenty cubits of breadth. And he builded a porch before the front, that was stretched forth along beside, or at the measure of, the breadth of the house, of twenty cubits, and the highness was of an hundred and twenty cubits, and he overgilded it within with cleanest gold. Also he covered the greater house with boards of box, and he fastened plates of gold of the best color all about, and he grabbed therein palm trees, and as small chains embracing themselves together. And he arrayed the pavement of the temple with most precious marble, in much fairness. And the gold was most proved, of whose plates he covered the house, and the beams thereof, and the posts, and the walls, and the doors. And he grabbed cherubims, that is, angels, in the walls. Also he made an house to the holy of holy things, in length by the breadth of the house, of twenty cubits, and the breadth also of twenty cubits, and he covered it with golden plates, as with six hundred talents in value. And also he made golden nails, so that each nail weighed fifty shekels, and he covered the solars with gold. Also he made in the house of the holy of holy things, two cherubims by the work of an image maker, and covered them with gold. The wings of cherubims were holden forth by twenty cubits, so that one wing had five cubits, and it touched the wall of the house, and the totha wing had five cubits, and it touched the wing of the other cherub. In like manner the one wing of the other cherub had five cubits, and it touched the wall, and the other wing thereof that was of five cubits, touched the wing of the other cherub. Therefore the wings of ever either cherub were spread abroad, and they were holden forth by twenty cubits, and those cherubims stood upon feet raised up, and their faces were turned to the outermore house. Also he made a veil of jacinth, and purple, of red silk, and bis, and weaved cherubims therein. Also before the gates of the temple he made two pillars, which had five and thirty cubits of height, and the heads of those pillars were of five cubits in height. Also he made as it were little chains in God's answering place, and he putted them on the heads of the pillars. Also he made an hundred pomegranates, which he set it betwixt the little chains. And he set those pillars in the porch of the temple, one at the right side, and the other at the left side. He called that pillar that was at the right side Jachin, and that that was at the left side he called Boaz. Chapter 4 Also he made a brazen altar of twenty cubits of length, and of twenty cubits of breadth, and of ten cubits of height. He made also a molten sea, that is, a great washing vessel for priests, of ten cubits from brink to brink, round by compass, it had five cubits of height, 
and a cord of thirty cubits compassed the compass thereof. And the likeness of oxen was under it, and by ten cubits some gravings without fifth compassed the brink of the sea, as with twain orders, and the oxen were molten. And that sea was set upon twelve oxen, of which oxen three beheld to the north, and other three to the west, and three others beheld to the south, and three that were residue beheld the east, and these had the sea set above them, but the hinder parts of the oxen were within under the sea. And the thickness of the sea had the measure of the palm of in hand, and the brink thereof was as the brink of a cup, either as of a lily crooked again, and the sea held three thousand metrics of measure. Also he made ten hollow vessels, and set it five at the right side, and five at the left side, that they should wash in those all things, which they should offer into burnt sacrifice, soothly the priests were washed in the sea. Soothly he made ten golden candlesticks by the likeness which he had commanded to be made, and he set at those in the temple, five at the right side, and five at the left side. And he made also ten tables, and he set at those in the temple, five at the right side, and five at the left side. Also he made an hundred golden vials, or basins. Also he made a large place of priests, and a great house, and doors in the great house, which he covered with brass. And he set at the sea in the right side of the porch against the east at the south. Also Hiram made cauldrons, and flesh hooks, and vials, or basins, and he fulfilled all the work of the king in the house of God, that is, he made two pillars, and their pommels, and heads, and as some nets, that covered the heads above the pommels. Also he made forty pomegranates, and two works like nets, so that the two orders of pomegranates were joined to each work like nets, which covered the pommels, and the heads of the pillars. He made also foundaments, and hollow vessels, which he set upon the foundaments. He made one sea, and twelve oxen under the sea, and cauldrons, and flesh hooks, and vials, or basins. Hiram, the father of Solomon, that is, for reason of age, either of excellence of craft, made to him all the vessels in the house of the Lord of cleanest brass. The king melted out those vessels in the country of Jordan, in clay land between Succoth and Zeredatha. Forsooth the multitude of vessels was unnumberable, so that the weight of brass was not known. And Solomon made all the vessels of God's house, the golden altar, and boards, the meat tables, and the loaves of setting forth upon those, and candlesticks of purest gold, with their lanterns, that those should shine before God's answering place, by the custom. And he made some works like flowers, and lanterns, and golden tongs. All these things were made of cleanest gold. Also he made pans for coals to burn incense, and senses, and vials, or basins, and mortars, of purest gold. And he engraved the doors of the inner temple, that is, in the holy of holy things, and the golden doors of the temple without fifth. Chapter 5 And so all the work was filled that Solomon made in the house of the Lord. Therefore Solomon brought in all things, that is, silver and gold, which David, his father had avowed, and he putted all the vessels in the treasuries of the house of the Lord. After which things he gathered together all the greater men in birth of Israel, and all the princes of lineages, and the heads of families, of the sons of Israel, into Jerusalem, that they should bring the ark of bond of peace of the Lord from the city of David, which is Zion. Therefore all men of Israel came to the king, in the solemn day of the seventh month. And when all the elder men of Israel came, the deacons bare the ark, and they brought it, and all the array of the tabernacle, into the temple. And the priests with the deacons bare the vessels of the sanctuary, that were in the tabernacle. And King Solomon, and all the companies of Israel, and all that were gathered together, offered before the ark weathers and oxen without number, for the multitude of slain sacrifices was so great that it might not be numbered. And priests brought the ark of bond of peace of the Lord into the place thereof, that is, to God's answering place of the temple, into the holy of holy things, under the wings of cherubims, so that cherubims spread it forth their wings over the place, in which the ark was put, and covered that ark with his bearing bars. Soothly the heads, or pommels, with which the ark was born, were open, or uncovered, before God's answering place, for those heads were a little longer than the stretching of cherubs' wings, but if a man had been a little without faith, he might not see those bearing bars. 
therefore the ark was there till into the present day. And there was none other thing in the ark, but two tables, which Moses had put therein in Horeb, when the Lord gave the law to the sons of Israel going out of Egypt. And after this the priests went out of the sanctuary, for all the priests, that might be found there, were hallowed, and the wiles, or certain times, and the order of services among priests, was not parted yet in that time. And both deacons and singers, that is, both they that were under Asaph, and they that were under Heman, and they that were under Jeduthun, their sons and brethren, clothed with white linen clothes, sounded with cymbals and psalteries and harps, and stood at the west coast, or corner, of the altar, and with them were six score priests trumping. Therefore when they all sang together, both with trumps, and voice, and cymbals, and organs, and of diverse kinds of musics, and they raised their voice on high, the sound was heard far, so that when they had begun to praise the Lord, and to say, Acknowledge ye to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy is into the world, either without end. The house of God was filled with a cloud, and the priests might not stand to serve for the darkness, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of the Lord. Chapter 6 Then Solomon said, The Lord promised, that he would dwell in darkness, and I have built an house to his name, that he should dwell therein without end. And Solomon turned his face, and blessed all the multitude of Israel, for all the company stood attentive. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath fulfilled in work that thing, that he spake to David, my father, and said, From the day in which I led my people out of the land of Egypt, I chose not a city of all the lineages of Israel, that an house should be builded therein to my name, neither I chose any other man, that he should be duke upon my people Israel, but I chose Jerusalem, that my name be therein, and I chose David, to ordain him upon my people Israel. And when it was of the will of David, my father, to build an house to the name of the Lord God of Israel, the Lord said to him, For this was thy will, to build an house to my name, soothly thou didst well, having such a will, but yet thou shalt not build an house to me. Nevertheless the son, that shall go out of thy loins, he shall build an house to my name. Therefore the Lord hath fulfilled his word, that he spake. And I rose up for David, my father, and I sat on the throne of Israel, as the Lord spake, and I have builded an house to the name of the Lord God of Israel, and I have put therein the ark, in which is the covenant of the Lord, which he covenanted with the sons of Israel. Therefore Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord even against all the multitude of Israel, and stretched forth his hands. For Solomon had made a brazen foundament, and had set it in the midst of the great house, and it had five cubits of length, and five of breadth, and three cubits of height, and he stood thereupon. And from that time he kneeled against all the multitude of Israel, and he raised up his hands into heaven, and said, Lord God of Israel, none is like thee. Thou art God in heaven and in earth, which keepest covenant and mercy with thy servants, that go before thee in all their heart. Thou hast given to David thy servant, my father, whatever thing thou hast spoken or promised to him. And thou hast fulfilled in work those things, which thou promisedest by mouth, as also this present time proveth. Now therefore, Lord God of Israel, fulfill thou to thy servant, my father David, whatever things thou hast spoken, saying, A man of thee shall not fail before me, that shall sit upon the throne of Israel. So nevertheless if thy sons keep my ways, and go in my law, as and thou hast gone before me. And now, Lord God of Israel, thy word be made steadfast, which thou spackest to thy servant David. Therefore whether it is believeful, that the Lord dwell with men on earth. If heaven and the heavens of heavens take, either may not hold thee, Lord, how much more this house, which I have builded. But hereto only it is made, that thou, my Lord God, behold there the prayer of thy servant, and the beseeching of him, and that thou hear the prayers, which thy servant poureth before thee. That thou open thine eyes upon this house by days and nights, upon the place in which thou promisedest, that thy name should be in called, and that thou wouldest hear the prayer, which thy servant prayeth therein. Hear thou the prayers of thy servant, and of thy people Israel. Whoever prayeth in this place, hear thou from thy dwelling place, that is, from heaven, and do thou mercy to him. If any man sinneth against his neighbor, and cometh ready to swear against him, and bindeth himself with cursing before the altar in this house, 
thou shalt hear from heaven, and shalt do the doom of thy servants, so that thou yield to the wicked man his way into his own head, and that thou venge the just man, and yield to him after his right wiseness. If thy people Israel is overcome of enemies, for they shall do sin against thee, and if they converted do penance, and beseech thy name, and pray in this place, thou shalt hear from heaven, and do thou mercy to the sin of thy people Israel, and bring them again into the land, which thou hast given to them, and to their fathers. If when heaven is closed, rain come not down for the sin of thy people, and they beseech thee in this place, and acknowledge to thy name, and be turned from their sins, when thou hast tormented them, hear thou, Lord, from heaven, and forgive thou the sins to thy servants, and to thy people Israel, and teach thou them a good way, by which they shall enter, and give thou rain to the land, which thou hast given to thy people to have in possession. If that hunger riseth in the land, and pestilence, and rust, and wind destroying corns, and if that a locust and brookus cometh, and if enemies besiege the gates of the city, after that the countries be destroyed, and if any man of vengeance and sickness oppresseth thy people, if any of thy people Israel beseecheth, and knoweth his vengeance, that is, his sin wherefore he hath deserved vengeance and sickness, and if he spreadeth abroad his hands in this house, thou shalt hear from heaven, that is, from thine high dwelling place, and do thou mercy, and yield thou to each man after his ways, which thou knowest, that he hath in his heart. For thou alone knowest the hearts of the sons of men, that they dread thee, and go in thy ways in all days, in which they live on the face of earth, which thou hast given to our fathers. Also thou shalt hear from heaven, thy most steadfast dwelling place, a stranger, which is not of thy people Israel, if he cometh from a far land for thy great name, and for thy strong hand, and thine arm stretched forth, and prayeth in this place. And thou shalt to all things, for which that pilgrim inwardly calleth thee, that all the people of earth know thy name, and dread thee, as thy people Israel doth, and that they know, that thy name is called on this house, which I have builded to thy name. If thy people goeth out to battle against his adversaries, by the way in which thou sendest them, they shall worship thee against the way in which this city is set, which thou hast chosen, and the house which I builded to thy name, that thou hear from heaven their prayers and their beseeching, and do thou vengeance to their adversaries. And if they sin against thee, for no man is alive that sinneth not, and if thou art wroth with them, and betakest them to their enemies, and enemies lead them prisoners into a far land, either certainly which land is nigh, and if they be converted in their heart in the land, to which they be led prisoners, and they do penance, and beseech thee in the land of their captivity, and say, We have sinned, we have done wickedly, we did unjustly, and if they turn again to thee in all their heart, and in all their soul, in the land of their captivity, to which they be led, and if they shall worship thee against the way of their land, which thou hast given to the fathers of them, and against the way of the city which thou hast chosen, and of the house which I builded to thy name, that thou hear from heaven, that is, from thy steadfast dwelling place, the prayers of them, and that thou make doom, and forgive to thy people, though they be sinful, for thou art my God. I beseech thee, be thine eyes opened, and thine ears be attentive to the prayer that is made in this place. Now therefore, Lord God, rise up into thy rest, thou and the ark of thy strength. Lord God, thy priests be clothed with health, and thy holy men be glad in good things. Lord God, turn thou not away the face of thy Christ. Have thou mind on the mercies of David thy servant. Chapter 7 and when Solomon shedding out his prayers had full ended them, fire came down from heaven, and it devoured the burnt sacrifices, and the slain sacrifices, and the majesty, or shining, of the Lord full filled the house. And the priests might not enter into the temple of the Lord, for the mighty shining of the Lord had full filled the temple of the Lord. But also all the sons of Israel saw fire coming down, and the glory of the Lord upon the house, and they fell down low to the earth, upon the pavement arrayed, or paved, with stone, and they worshipped, and praised the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy is into the world. And the king and all the people offered slain sacrifices before the Lord. Therefore King Solomon killed sacrifices of oxen two and twenty thousand, of weathers six score thousand, and the king and all the people hallowed the house of God. And the priests stood in their offices, and deacons in organs of songs of the Lord, 
which King David made to praise the Lord, for his mercy is into the world. And they sang the hymns of David by their hands in organs and other instruments, and the priests sang with trumps before them, and all the people of Israel stood. Therefore Solomon hallowed the middle of the large place before the temple of the Lord, for he had offered their burnt sacrifices, and the inner fatnesses of peaceable sacrifices, for the brazen altar which he had made might not sustain, or hold, the burnt sacrifices, and slain sacrifices, and inner fatnesses of peaceable sacrifices. Therefore Solomon made a solemnity in that time in seven days, and all Israel with him, a full great church, or congregation, from the entering of Hamath unto the strand of Egypt. And in the eighth day he made a gathering of money, that is, for necessaries of the temple, for he had hallowed the altar in seven days, and had made solemnity in seven days. Therefore, in the three and twentieth day of the seventh month, he let the peoples go to their tabernacles, joying and gladding upon the goodness that God had done to David, and to Solomon, and to his people Israel. And Solomon performed the house of the Lord, and the house of the king, and all things which he had disposed in his heart for to do in the house of the Lord, and in his own house, and he had prosperity. Forsooth the Lord appeared to him in the night, and said, I have heard thy prayer, and I have chosen this place to me into an house of sacrifice. If I close heaven, and rain cometh not down, and if I send, and command to the locust, that he devour the land, and if I send pestilence into my people, forsooth if my people is converted, on which my name is called, and if it beseecheth me, and seeketh my face, and doth penance of his full evil ways, then I shall hear from heaven, and I shall be merciful to the sins of them, and I shall heal the land of them. And mine eyes shall be opened, and mine ears shall be raised up to the prayer of him, that prayeth in this place. For I have chosen, and hallowed this place, that my name be there without end, and that mine eyes and mine heart dwell there in all days. Also if thou goest before me, as David thy father went, and doest by all those things which I commanded to thee, and keepest my rightfulnesses and my dooms, I shall raise up the throne of thy realm, as I promised to David thy father, and said, A man of thy generation shall not be taken away, that shall be prince in Israel. But if ye turn away, and forsake my rightfulnesses and my commandments, which I have set forth to you, and ye go, and serve alien gods, and worship them, I shall draw you away from my land, which I gave to you, and I shall cast away from my face this house which I have builded to my name, and I shall give it into a parable, and into ensample to all peoples. And this house shall be into a proverb to all men passing forth. And they shall say, wondering in themselves, Why did the Lord so to this land, and to this house? And they shall answer, For they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, that led them out of the land of Egypt, and they took alien gods, and worshipped, and praised them. Therefore all these evils came upon them. Chapter 8 Forsooth when twenty years were filled, after that Solomon had builded the house of the Lord, and his own house, he builded the cities, which Hiram had given to Solomon, and he made the sons of Israel to dwell there. Also he went into Hamath of Zobah, and got it, and he builded Palmyra in desert, and he builded other full strong cities in Hamath. And he builded the higher Bethhoron and the lower Bethhoron, walled cities, having gates and locks and bars. Also he builded Baalath, and all the strong cities that were of Solomon, and all the cities of carts, and the cities of knights, King Solomon builded, and disposed all things, whichever he would, in Jerusalem, and in Lebanon, and in all the land of his power. And Solomon made subject into tributaries till into this day all the people that was left of Hittites, and Amorites, and Perizzites, and Hivites, and Jebusites, that were not of the generations of Israel, and of the sons of them, and of the aftercomers of them, which the sons of Israel had not slain, for of the sons of Israel Solomon set not, that they should serve the works of the king. For they were men warriors, and the first, or chief, dukes, and princes of his chariots, and of his knights. And all the princes of the host of King Solomon were two hundred and fifty, that taught, or ruled, the people. And Solomon translated the daughter of Pharaoh from the city of David into an house, that he had builded to her. For the king said, my wife shall not dwell in the house of David, king of Israel, for it is hallowed, for the ark of the Lord entered into that house. 
Then Solomon offered burnt sacrifices to the Lord on the altar of the Lord, which he had builded before the porch, that by all days offering should be offered in it, by the commandment of Moses, in Sabbaths, and in Calends, and in feast days, thrice by the year, that is, in the solemnity of the loaves, and in the solemnity of weeks, and in the solemnity of tabernacles. And he ordained by the ordinance of David, his father, the offices of priests in their services, and the deacons in their order, that they should praise and minister before priests by the custom of each day. And he ordained porters in their partings by gate and gate. For David, the man of God, had commanded so. And both priests and deacons passed not from the commandments of the king of all things which he had commanded. And Solomon had all costs, or dispenses, made ready in the keepings of treasuries, from that day in which he founded the house of the Lord, till into the day in which he performed it. Then Solomon went into Eziongeber, and into Eleth, at the brink of the Red Sea, which is in the land of Edom. Therefore Hiram sent to him, by the hands of his servants, ships, and shipmen knowing of the sea, and they went with the servants of Solomon into Ophir, and they took from thence 450 talents of gold, and they brought it to King Solomon. Chapter 9 And the Queen of Sheba, when she had heard the fame of Solomon, came into Jerusalem for to assay him in dark figures, or likenesses, with great riches, and camels, that bear sweet-smelling spices, and full much of gold, and precious gems, either pearls. And when she was come to Solomon, she spake to him whatever things were in her heart. And Solomon expounded to her all things which she had put forth to him, and nothing was, that he made not open, or known, to her. And after that she saw these things, that is, the wisdom of Solomon, and the house that he had builded, also and the meats of his board, and the dwelling places of his servants, and the offices of his ministers, and the clothes of them, and the butlers, and their clothes, and the sacrifices which he offered in the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her for wondering, for these things passed her understanding. And she said to the king, The word is true, which I heard in my land, of thy virtues, and wisdom. I believed not to tell us, till I myself had come, and mine eyes had seen, and I had proved that scarcely the half of thy wisdom was told to me. Thou hast overcome, or passed, the fame by thy virtues. Blessed be thy men, and blessed be thy servants, these that stand before thee in all time, and hear thy wisdom. Blessed be the Lord God, that would ordain thee on his throne king of the people of the Lord thy God. Truly for God loveth Israel, and will save him without end, therefore he hath set thee king upon him, that thou do dooms and rightfulness. And she gave to the king sixscore talents of gold, and full many sweet-smelling spices, and most precious gems. There were not such sweet-smelling spices, as these which the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. But also the servants of Hiram, with the servants of Solomon, brought gold from Ophir, and trees of Theine, and most precious gems, of which, that is, of the Theine trees, the king made degrees in the house of the Lord, and in the house of the king, and also he made harps and psalteries to singers. Such trees were never seen in the land of Judah. And Solomon gave to the queen of Sheba all things which she would, and which she asked, many more than she had brought to him. And she turned again, and went into her land with her servants. And the weight of gold, that was brought to Solomon by each year, was six hundred and six and sixty talents of gold, besides that sum which the legates of diverse folks, and merchants were wont to bring, and all the kings of Arabia, and the princes of lands, which brought together gold and silver to Solomon. Therefore King Solomon made two hundred golden spears of the sum of six hundred florins, either pieces of gold, that were spended in each spear. And he made three hundred golden shields of three hundred florins, three hundred pieces of gold, with which each shield was covered, and the king putted those in the armory place, that was set in the wood. Also the king made a great seat, or throne, of ivory, and he covered it with most clean gold, and he made six degrees by which men went up to the seat, and a golden stool, and twain arms, one against the tofa, and two lions standing beside the arms, but also he made twelve little lions standing upon six degrees on ever either side of the throne. Such a throne was not in all realms, that is, in none of all the realms of the world. And all the vessels of the feast of the king were of gold, 
and the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were of most pure gold, for silver in those days was a reckoned for naught. For also the ships of the king went into Tarshish with the servants of Hiram once in three years, and they brought from thence gold, and silver, and ivory, and apes, and peacocks. And King Solomon was magnified over all kings of the earth for his riches and glory. And all the kings of lands desired to see the face of Solomon, for to hear the wisdom that God had given in his heart. And they brought to him gifts, vessels of silver and of gold, clothes and armors, and sweet-smelling spices, horses and mules, by each year. And Solomon had forty thousand of horses in stables, and twelve thousand of chariots and of knights. And he ordained them in the cities of chariots, and where the king was in Jerusalem. For sooth he used power on all the kings, from the flood of Euphrates unto the land of Philistines, and unto the terms of Egypt. And he gave so great plenty of silver in Jerusalem, as of stones, and so great multitude of cedar trees, as of sycamores that grow in field places. And horses were brought to Solomon from Egypt, and from all countries. Soothly the residue of the former works and the last of Solomon, be written in the words of Nathan, the prophet, and in the words of a hearer of Shiloh, and in the vision, I the prophecy, of Iddo, the prophet, against Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. Soothly Solomon reigned in Jerusalem on all Israel forty years, and he slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David, and Rehoboam, his son, reigned for him. Chapter 10 For sooth Rehoboam went forth into Shechem, for all Israel came together thither to make him king. And when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that was in Egypt, for he fled thither before Solomon, had heard this, he turned again and on. And they called him, and he came with all Israel, and they spake to Rehoboam, and said, Thy father oppressed us with a full hard yoke. Command thou lighter things on us than thy father, the which set upon us a grievous servage, and release thou a little of our burden, that we serve thee. And he said, After three days turn ye again to me. And when the people was gone, he took counsel with eld men, that stood before his father Solomon, while he lived yet, and said, What counsel give ye, that I answer to the people? And they said to him, If thou pleasest this people, and makest them soft, or quietest them, by meek words, they shall serve thee in all time. And he forsook the counsel of the eld men, and began to treat with young men, that were nourished with him, and were in his company. And he said to them, What seemeth to you? Either what thing ought I answer to this people, that said to me, Release thou the yoke, that thy father hath put upon us? And they answered, as young men, and nourished with him in delights, and said, Thus thou shalt speak to the people that said to thee, Thy father made grievous our yoke, release thou it. And thus thou shalt answer to them, My least finger is greater than the loins of my father. My father put upon you a grievous yoke, and I shall lay to a greater burden. My father beat you with scourges, but I shall beat you with scorpions, that is, hard-knotted ropes. And Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam in the third day, as he had commanded to them. And the king answered hard things, after that he had forsaken the counsel of the elder men, and he spake by the will of the young men, My father putted on you a grievous yoke, which I shall make grievouser. My father beat you with scourges, soothly I shall beat you with scorpions. And Rehoboam assented not to the prayers of the people, for it was the will of God, that his word should be filled, which he had spoken by the hand of a hearer of Shiloh to Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. And when the king had said these harder things, all the people spake thus to him, No part be to us in David, neither heritage in the son of Jesse. Israel, turn thou again into thy tabernacles, and thou, David, feed thine own house. And Israel went into his tabernacles, and Rehoboam reigned upon the sons of Israel, that dwelled in the cities of Judah. And King Rehoboam sent Hadoram, that was sovereign over the tributes, and the sons of Israel stoned him, and he was dead. And King Rehoboam hasted him to go up into his chariot, and fled into Jerusalem. And Israel went away from the house of David unto this day. Chapter 11 For sooth Rehoboam came into Jerusalem, and he called together all the house of Judah and of Benjamin, unto ninescore thousand of chosen men and warriors, 
for to fight against Israel, and for to turn again his realm to him. And the word of the Lord was made to Shemaiah, the man of God, and said, Speak thou to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all Israel, which is in Judah and Benjamin. The Lord saith these things, Ye shall not go up, neither ye shall fight against your brethren. Each man turn again to his house, for this thing is done by my will. And when they had heard the word of the Lord, they turned again, and went not against King Jeroboam. And Rehoboam dwelled in Jerusalem, and he builded walled cities in Judah, and he builded Bethlehem, and Etam, and Tekoa, and Bethzur, and Shoko, and Adullam, also and Gath, and Marishah, and Ziph, but also Adoram, and Lachish, and Azekah, and Zorah, and Ijalon, and Hebron, which were in Judah and Benjamin, full strong cities. And when he had closed those with walls, he set princes in him, and barns of meats, that is, of oil, and of wine. But also in each city he made places of armors of shields, and spears, and he made those strong with most diligence, and he reigned on Judah and Benjamin. And the priests and the deacons, that were in all Israel, came to Rehoboam from all their cities, and they forsook their suburbs and their possessions, and they passed into Judah and to Jerusalem. For Jeroboam and his aftercomers had cast them away, that they should not be set in the priesthood of the Lord, the which Jeroboam made to him priests of high places, and of fiends, and of calves, which he had made. But also of all the lineages of Israel, which ever gave their heart to seek the Lord God of Israel, they came to Jerusalem for to offer their sacrifices before the Lord God of their fathers. And they strengthened the realm of Judah, and strengthened Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, by three years. For they went in the ways of David, and of Solomon, only by three years. For sooth Rehoboam wedded a wife, Mahalath, the daughter of Jeremoth, the son of David, and Abihel, the daughter of Eliab, the son of Jesse, and she childed to him sons, Jeush, and Shamariah, and Zahim. Also after this wife he took Marcha, the daughter of Absalom, and she childed to him Abijah, and Atai, and Ziza, and Shelemoth. And Rehoboam loved Marcha, the daughter of Absalom, above all his wives and his secondary wives. And he had wedded eighteen wives, and he had sixty secondary wives, and he begat eight and twenty sons, and sixty daughters. And he ordained Abijah, the son of Marcha, the head, duke over all his brethren. For he thought to make Abijah king, for he was wiser and mightier over all his sons. And in all the coasts of Judah and of Benjamin, and in all the walled cities, he set his sons, and he gave to them full many meats, and he took to them many wives. Chapter 12 And when the realm of Rehoboam was made strong and strengthened, he forsook the law of the Lord, and all Israel with him. And in the fifth year of the realm of Rehoboam, Shishak, king of Egypt, went up into Jerusalem, for they, that is, the men of Jerusalem, sinned against the Lord. And he ascended with a thousand and two hundred chariots, and with sixty thousand horsemen, and no number was of the common people, that came with him from Egypt, that is, Libyans, and Troglodytes, and Ethiopians. And he took full strong cities in Judah, and he came to Jerusalem. And Shemaiah, the prophet, entered to Rehoboam, and to the princes of Judah, which, fleeing from Shishak, were gathered together in Jerusalem. And he said to them, The Lord saith these things, Ye have forsaken me, and I have forsaken you in the hand of Shishak. And the princes of Israel and the king were astonished, and said, The Lord is just. And when the Lord had seen that they were meeked, the word of the Lord was made to Shemaiah, and said, For they be meeked, I shall not destroy them, and I shall give to them a little help, and my strong vengeance shall not drop upon Jerusalem by the hand of Shishak. Nevertheless they shall serve him, that they know the diversity of my service, and of the service of the realm of lands. Therefore Shishak, the king of Egypt, went away from Jerusalem, after that he had taken away the treasures of the house of the Lord, and of the king's house, and he took all things with him, and the gold shields which Solomon had made, for which golden shields king Rehoboam made brazen shields, and he betook those to the princes of shieldmakers, that kept the porch of the palace. And when the king entered into the house of the Lord, the shieldmakers came, and took those shields, and they brought them again to his armory place. Nevertheless for they were meat, the ire of the Lord was turned away from them, 
and they were not done away utterly, for good works were found also in Judah. Therefore King Rehoboam was comforted in Jerusalem, and reigned. And he was of one and forty years, when he began to reign, and he reigned seventeen years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord chose of all the lineages of Israel, that he should confirm his name there. And the name of his mother was Nama Ammonites, and he did evil, and he made not ready his heart to seek God. And the first and the last works of Rehoboam be written, and diligently declared, in the books of Shemaiah the prophet, and of Iddo the prophet. And Rehoboam and Jeroboam fought in all days against themselves. And Rehoboam slept with his fathers, and was buried in the city of David, and Abijah, his son, reigned for him. Chapter 13 In the eighteenth year of King Jeroboam Abijah reigned upon Judah, he reigned three years in Jerusalem, and the name of his mother was Michiah, the daughter of Uriel of Gibeah. And battle was betwixt Abijah and Jeroboam, and when Abijah had begun battle, and had with him most chivalrous men, and four hundred thousand of chosen men, Jeroboam arrayed on the contrary the battle array with eight hundred thousand of men, and they were chosen men, and most strong men to battle. And Abijah stood upon the hill Zemaraim, that was in Ephraim, and he said, Hear thou, Jeroboam, and all Israel, whether ye know not, that the Lord God of Israel gave to David the realm on Israel without end, to him and to his sons into the covenant of salt, that is, steadfast and stable. And now Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, the servant of Solomon, the son of David, hath risen up, and hath rebelled against his Lord. And most vain men, the sons of Belial, were gathered together to him, and they had might against Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. Certainly Rehoboam was boisterous, either fond, or untaught, and of fearful heart, and might not against stand them. Now therefore ye say, that ye be able to against stand the realm of the Lord, that he holdeth in possession by the sons of David. And ye have a great multitude of people, and ye have golden calves, which Jeroboam made into gods to you. And ye have cast away the priests of the Lord, the sons of Aaron, and the deacons, and ye have made priests to you, as all the peoples of lands have priests, whoever cometh and halloweth his hand in a bull, in oxes, and in seven weathers, anon he is made priest of them that be not gods. But our Lord is God, whom we forsake not, and priests of the sons of Aaron minister to the Lord, and deacons be in their order. And they offer burnt sacrifices to the Lord by each day in the morrow tide and eventide, and also incense made by commandments of the law, and loaves be set forth in a most clean board, and at us is the golden candlestick, and the lantern thereof, that it be tended ever at eventide, and we keep the behests of our God, whom ye have forsaken. Therefore God is Duke in our host, and his priests, that trump and sound against you. Do not ye, sons of Israel, fight against the Lord God of your fathers, for it speedeth not to you. While Abijah spake these things, Jeroboam made ready treasons behind, and when Jeroboam stood even against his enemies, he compassed with his host Judah unwitting. And Judah beheld, and he saw battle nigh even against before them, and behind their back, and he cried to the Lord, and priests began to trump. And all the men of Judah cried out, and, lo! While they cried on high, God made a fear Jeroboam and all Israel, that stood even against Judah and Abijah. And the men of Israel fled from Judah, and God betook them into the hands of the men of Judah. Therefore Abijah and his people smote them with a great wound, and there fell down of them five hundred thousand of strong men wounded. And the sons of Israel were made low in that time, and the sons of Judah were comforted full greatly, for they had hoped in the Lord God of their fathers. And Abijah pursued Jeroboam fleeing, and took his cities, that is, Bethel and his villages, and Jeshana with his villages, and Ephron and his villages, and Jeroboam might no more against stand in the days of Abijah, whom the Lord smote, and he was dead. Therefore Abijah, when his empire was comforted, took fourteen wives, and he begat two and twenty sons, and sixteen daughters. The residue of words of Abijah, and of his ways and his works, be written full diligently in the book of Iddo, the prophet. Chapter 14 And Abijah slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David, 
and Asa, his son, reigned for him. In whose days the land rested in peace ten years. And Asa did that, that was good and pleasant in the sight of his God, and he destroyed the altars of strange worshipping, that is, of idolatry, and the high places, and break altogether the images, and cut it down Mome woods. And he commanded Judah to seek the Lord God of their fathers, and to do the law and all commandments. And he took away from all the cities of Judah altars and temples of idols, and he reigned in peace. And he builded strong cities in Judah, for he was in rest, and no battles rose in his times, for the Lord gave him peace. And Asa said to Judah, Build we these cities, and compass we them with walls, and strengthen we them with towers, and gates, and locks, as long as all things be restful from battle. For we have sought the Lord God of our fathers, and he hath given to us rest by compass. Therefore they builded, and there was no hindering in the building. And Asa had in his host three hundred thousand of men of Judah bearing shields and spears. And of Benjamin, he had two hundred thousand and fourscore thousand of shield bearers and of archers. All these were full strong men. For Sooth Zerah of Ethiopia went out against them with his host ten hundred thousand, and with three hundred chariots, and came unto Marishah. Certainly Asa went against them, and arrayed battle array in the valley of Zephatha, which is beside Marishah. And Asa inwardly called the Lord God, and said, Lord, no diversity is with thee, whether thou help in few, either in many. Our Lord God, help thou us, for we have trust in thee, and in thy name, and we came against this multitude. Lord, thou art our God, a man have not the mastery against thee. Therefore the Lord made afeared Ethiopians before Asa and Judah, and Ethiopians fled. And Asa and his people, that was with him, pursued them unto Jerah. And Ethiopians fell down to death, for they were all broken by the Lord slaying, and by his host fighting. Then they took many spoils, and they smote all the cities about Jerah, for great dread had assailed all men. And they spoiled the cities, and they rifled the cities, and bare away much prey. And also they destroyed the folds of sheep, and they took multitude without number of sheep and of camels, and they turned again into Jerusalem. Chapter 15 For Sooth Azariah, the son of Odid, when the Spirit of the Lord was come into him, he went out into the meeting of Asa, and said to him, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin, Hear ye me. The Lord is with you, for ye were with him. If ye seek him, ye shall find him. Soothly if ye forsake him, he shall forsake you. For sooth many days shall pass in Israel without very God, and without priest, and without teacher, and without law. And when they turn again in their anguish, and cry to the Lord God of Israel, and seek him, they shall find him. In that time shall not be peace to go out and to go in, but dreads on all side on all the dwellers of the land. For folk shall fight against folk, and a city against a city, for the Lord shall disturb them in all anguish. But be ye comforted, and your hands be not slacked, for me it shall be to your work. And when Asa had heard this thing, that is, the words and prophecy of Azariah, the son of Odid, the prophet, he was comforted, and he did away all the idols from all the land of Judah and of Benjamin, and from the cities which he had taken of the hill of Ephraim. And he hallowed the altar of the Lord, that was before the porch of the house of the Lord. And he gathered together all Judah and Benjamin, and with them the comelings of Ephraim, and of Manasseh, and of Simeon. For many of Israel, seeing that his Lord God was with him, fled over to him. And when they had come into Jerusalem, in the third month, in the fifteen year of the realm of Asa, they offered to the Lord in that day, both of the spoils and of the prey, which they had brought, seven hundred oxen, and seven thousand weathers. And Asa entered by custom to make strong the bond of peace, that they should seek the Lord God of their fathers in all their heart, and in all their soul. And the king said, If any man seeketh not the Lord God of Israel, die he, from the least unto the most, from man unto woman. And all that were in Judah swore with cursing to the Lord, that is, obliging themselves to cursing and pain of death, if they did against the oath, with great voice, in hearty song, and in sound of trump, and in sound of clarions. For they swore in all their heart, and in all their will they sought him, and found him. And the Lord gave to them rest by compass. But also he put down Marcher, 
the mother of Asa the king, that is, his own mother, from the straight empire, for she had made in a wood a simulacrum, or a likeness, of a man's rod, and he all brake that simulacrum, and pounded it into gobbets, and burnt it in the strand of Kidron. But yet high places were left in Israel. Nevertheless the heart of Asa was rightful in all his days. And he brought into the house of the Lord those things that his father avowed, silver and gold, and diverse pertinence of vessels. And battle was not unto the five and thirtieth year of the realm of Asa. Chapter 16 for Suth in the six and thirtieth year of his realm, Baasha, king of Israel, went up into Judah, and compassed Ramah with a wall, that no man of the realm of Asa might go out, either enter in securely. And Asa brought forth gold and silver from the treasures of the house of the Lord, and from the king's treasuries, and sent to Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, that dwelled in Damascus, and said, Bond of peace is betwixt me and thee, and my father and thy father had accord together. Wherefore I have sent to thee silver and gold, that when thou hast broken the bond of peace, which thou hast with Baasha, king of Israel, thou make him to go away from me. And when this was found, Ben-Hadad sent the princes of his hosts to the cities of Israel, which smote Ejon, and Dan, and Abelmaim, and all the walled cities of Naphtali. And when Baasha had heard this, he ceased to build Ramah, and left his work. And king Asa took all Judah, and they took from Ramah the stones, and wood, which Baasha had made ready to building, and he builded of those Geba and Mitzvah. In that time Hanani, the prophet, came to Asa, king of Judah, and said to him, For thy that thou hadest trust in the king of Syria, and not in the Lord thy God, therefore the host of the king of Syria escaped from thine hand. Whether Ethiopians and Libyans were not many more in chariots, and knights, and in full great multitude, which, when thou hadst believed to the Lord, he betook them into thine hands. For the eyes of the Lord behold all the earth, and give strength to them, that with perfect heart believe into him. Therefore thou hast done folly, and for this trust in men, yea, in this present time battles shall rise against thee. And Asa was wroth against the prophet, and commanded him to be sent into the stocks. Forsooth the Lord had indignation greatly upon this thing, and he killed full many of the people in that time. Soothly the first and last works of Asa be written in the book of kings of Judah and of Israel. And Asa was sick full greatly in the aching of his feet, in the nine and thirtieth year of his realm, and neither in his sickness he sought the Lord, but he trusted more in the craft of leeches. And Asa slept with his fathers, and was dead in the one and fortieth year of his realm. And they buried him in his sepulcher, which he had made to himself in the city of David. And they put him, or laid him, on his bed full of sweet-smelling spices and ointments of whores, that were made together by the craft of ointment makers, and they burnt these upon him with full great cost. Chapter 17 For sooth Jehoshaphat, his son, reigned for him, and he had the mastery against Israel. And he set numbers of knights in all the cities of Judah, that were compassed with walls, and he disposed strongholds in the land of Judah, and in the cities of Ephraim, which Asa, his father, had taken. And the Lord was with Jehoshaphat, which went in the first ways of David, his father. He hoped not in Balaam, but he hoped in the Lord God of David, his father, and he went in the commandments of God, and not after the sins of Israel. And the Lord confirmed the realm in his hand, and all Judah gave gifts to Jehoshaphat, and riches without number, and much glory was made to him. And when his heart had taken hardiness for the ways of the Lord, he took away also high places and woods from Judah. And in the third year of his realm, he sent of his princes, Benhel, and Obadiah, and Zechariah, and Nethaniel, and Michiah, that they should teach in the cities of Judah. And with them he sent nine deacons, that is, Shemaiah, and Nethaniah, and Zebediah, and Asahil, and Shemiramoth, and Jehonathan, and Adornijah, and Tobijah, and Tobadornijah, deacons, and with them Elishama and Jehoram, priests. And they taught the people in Judah, and had the book of the law of the Lord. And they compassed all the cities of Judah, and taught all the people. Therefore the dread of the Lord was made upon all the realms of lands, that were about Judah, and those durst not fight against Jehoshaphat. 
but also Philistines brought gifts to Jehoshaphat, and toll, or tribute, of silver. And men of Arabia brought to him sheep, 7,700 wethers, and so many bucks of goats. Then Jehoshaphat increased, and was magnified till to on high. And he builded in Judah houses of the likeness of towers, and full strong cities, and he made ready many works in the cities of Judah. Also men warriors and strong men were in Jerusalem, of which this is the number, by the houses and families of all men in Judah. Duke Adna was prince of the host, and with him were three hundred thousand full strong men. And after him was Jehohanan prince, and with him were two hundred thousand and fourscore thousand men. After this also Amasiah, the son of Zishri, was hallowed to the Lord, and with him were two hundred thousand of strong men. Eliada, a mighty man to battles, followed this Amasiah, and with him were two hundred thousand of men holding bow and shield. After this was also Jehozabad, and with him were an hundred thousand and fourscore thousand of ready knights. All these were at the hand of the king, besides others, which he had put in walled cities in all Judah. Chapter 18 Forsooth Jehoshaphat was full rich and noble, and by affinity he was joined to Ahab. And after certain years Jehoshaphat came down to Ahab into Samaria, at whose coming Ahab killed full many weathers and oxen, and to the people that came with him, and Ahab counseled Jehoshaphat to go up with him into Ramoth of Gilead. And Ahab, king of Israel, said to Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, Come thou with me into Ramoth of Gilead. To whom he answered, As and I am, so and thou art, and as thy people, so and my people, and we shall be with thee in battle. And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I beseech thee, counsel thou in this present time the word of the Lord. Therefore the king of Israel gathered together four hundred men of prophets, and said to them, Ought we to go into Ramoth of Gilead for to fight, either take rest? And the prophets said, Go ye up, and God shall betake it into the hand of the king. And Jehoshaphat said, Whether no prophet of the Lord is here, that we may also ask of him. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, One man is, of whom we may ask the will of the Lord, but I hate him, for he prophesieth not good, but evil to me, in all time. Soothly it is Micaiah, the son of Imla. And Jehoshaphat said to him, King, speak thou not in this manner. Then the king of Israel called one of his geldings, or chaste servants, and said to him, Call thou Anon Micaiah, the son of Imla. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, sat ever either in his seat, and they were clothed in king's array, and they sat in the cornfloor, beside the gate of Samaria, and all the prophets prophesied before them. And Zedekiah, the son of Chenana, made to him iron horns, and said, The Lord saith these things, with these, thou shalt winnow the men of Syria, till thou all break them. And all the prophets prophesied in like manner, and said, Go thou up into Ramoth of Gilead, and thou shalt have prosperity, and the Lord shall betake them into the hands of the king. And the messenger, that went to call Micaiah, said to him, Lo! The words of all the prophets tell with one mouth good things to the king. Therefore I pray thee, that thy word descend not from them, and that thou speak prosperities to him. To whom Micaiah answered, The Lord liveth, for whatever things my Lord God speaketh to me, I shall say those things. Therefore he came to the king, to whom the king said, Micaiah, ought we go into Ramoth of Gilead to fight, either take rest, and not to go thither? To whom Micaiah answered, Go ye up thither, for all prosperities shall come to you, and enemies shall be taken into your hands. And the king said to him, Again and again I charge thee, that thou speak not to me no, but that that is sooth in the name of the Lord. And he said, I saw all Israel scattered abroad in the hills, as sheep without a shepherd. And the Lord said, These men have not lords. Each man therefore turn again into his house in peace. A spirit came forth, and stood before the Lord, and said, I shall deceive him. To whom the Lord said, And wherein shalt thou deceive him? And he answered, I shall go out, and I shall be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, Thou shalt deceive him, and thou shalt have the mastery, go thou out, and do so. 
Now therefore, lo, the Lord hath given a spirit of leasing in the mouth of all thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil things of thee, that is, he hath said evil things to come to thee. And Zedekiah, the son of Chenana, nigh, and he smote Micaiah upon the cheek, and said, By what way hath the Spirit of the Lord passed from me to speak with thee? And Micaiah said, Thou thyself shalt see in that day, when thou shalt enter from closet into closet, that thou be hid. And the king of Israel commanded, saying, Take ye Micaiah, and lead ye him to Ammon, prince of the city, and to Josh, the son of Amalek. And ye shall say to them, The king saith these things, Send ye this man into prison, and give ye to him a little of bread, and a little of water, till I turn again in peace. And Micaiah said, If thou turnest again in peace, the Lord spake not to me. And he said, All peoples hear ye. Then the king of Israel, and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, went up into Ramoth of Gilead. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, I shall change my clothing, and so I shall go to fight, but be thou clothed in thy clothes. Therefore when the king of Israel had changed clothing, he came to battle. And the king of Syria commanded to the dukes of the multitude of his knights, and said, Fight ye not against the least, nor against the most, but against the king alone of Israel. Therefore when the princes of the multitude of knights had seen Jehoshaphat, they said, This is the king of Israel, and they compassed him, and fought against him. And Jehoshaphat cried to the Lord, and the Lord helped him, and turned him away from him. And when the dukes of the multitude of knights had heard, or understood, that it was not the king of Israel, they left him, they let him go. And it befell that one man of the people shot an arrow into uncertain, and he smote the king of Israel betwixt the neck and the shoulders. And he said to his charioteer, Turn thine hand, and lead me out of the battle array, for I am wounded. And the battle was ended in that day. Certainly the king of Israel stood in his chariot against men of Syria till to eventide, and he died, when the sun went down. Chapter 19 Forsooth Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, turned again peaceably into his house into Jerusalem, whom the prophet Jehu, the son of Hanani met, and said to him, Thou givest help to a wicked man, and thou art joined by friendship to them that hate the Lord, and therefore soothly thou deservedest the wrath of the Lord, but good works be found in thee, for thou hast done away Mome woods from the land of Judah, and thou hast made ready thine heart, for to seek the Lord God of thy fathers. Therefore Jehoshaphat dwelled in Jerusalem, and again he went out to the people from Beersheba to the hill of Ephraim, and he called them again to the Lord God of their fathers. And he ordained judges of the land in all the strengthened cities of Judah, by each place. And he commanded to the judges, and said to them, See ye, that is, be ye ware, what ye do. For ye use not the doom of man, but doom of the Lord. And whatever thing ye deem unjustly, it shall turn against you. The dread of the Lord be with you, and do ye all things with diligence, that is, with discretion. Forsooth with the Lord your God is no wickedness, neither taking, or accepting, of persons, neither covetousness of gifts. And also in Jerusalem Jehoshaphat ordained deacons, and priests, and the princes of the families of Israel, that they should deem the doom and the cause of the Lord, to the dwellers of Jerusalem. And he commanded to them, and said, Thus ye shall do in the dread of the Lord, faithfully, and in perfect heart. Each cause that cometh to you of your brethren, that dwell in their cities, betwixt kindred and kindred, wherever is question of the law, of the commandment, or of ceremonies, either sacrifices, or of justifyings, show ye to them, that they do not sin against the Lord, and that wrath of the Lord come not upon you, and upon your brethren. Therefore ye doing thus shall not do sin, and Amariah, your priest and bishop, shall be sovereign in these things, that pertain to God. And Zebediah, the son of Ishmael, that is duke in the house of Judah, shall be sovereign upon the works that pertain to the office of the king, and ye have master deacons before you. Be ye comforted, and do ye diligently, that is, studiously, or busily, and the Lord shall be with you in goods. Chapter 20 After these things the sons of Moab, and the sons of Ammon, and with the Medumians, were gathered together, and they came to Jehoshaphat, 
for to fight against him. And messengers came, and showed this to Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude of those places that be beyond the sea, and of Syria, is come against thee, and lo! They stand together in Hazazon Tamar, which is Engadi. Forsooth Jehoshaphat was afeared by dread, and gave himself all for to pray the Lord, and preached fasting to all Judah. And Judah was gathered together for to pray the Lord, and also all men came from their cities for to beseech him. And when Jehoshaphat had stood in the midst of the company of Judah and of Jerusalem, in the house of the Lord, before the new large place of the temple, he said, Lord God of our fathers, thou art God in heaven, and thou art Lord of all realms of folks, strength and power be in thine hand, and none may against stand thee. Whether not thou, our God, hast slain all the dwellers of this land before thy people Israel, and hast given it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend, without end. And they dwelled therein, and builded therein a sanctuary to thy name, and said, If evils come on us, the sword of doom, pestilence, or hunger, we shall stand before this house without end in thy sight, in which house thy name is called, and we shall cry to thee in our tribulations, and thou shalt hear us, and shalt make us safe. Now therefore, lo, the sons of Ammon, and of Moab, and the hill of Sire, by whom thou grantedest not to the sons of Israel for to pass, when they went out of Egypt, but they bowed away from them, and killed not them, but they do on the contrary, and endeavor to cast us out of the possession, which thou, our God, hast given to us. Therefore whether thou, Lord, shalt not deem them. Truly in us is not so great strength, that we may against stand this multitude, that falleth in upon us. But since we know not what we ought to do, we, the residue, have this only, that we dress our eyes to thee. And all Judah stood before the Lord, with their little children, and their wives, and with their free children. And Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Beniah, the son of Jeel, the son of Mataniah, was a deacon, and of the sons of Asaph, upon whom the Spirit of the Lord was made in the midst of the company. And he said, All Judah, and ye that dwell in Jerusalem, and thou, King Jehoshaphat, perceive ye, or taketh heed, the Lord saith these things to you, do not ye dread, neither be ye afeard of this multitude, for it is not your battle, but God's battle. Tomorrow ye shall go up against them, for they shall go up by the side of the hill, called Ziz by name, and ye shall find them in the height of the strand, that is against the wilderness of Jeruel. For it shall not be ye, that shall fight, but only stand ye trustily, and ye shall see the help of the Lord upon you. O oh, Judah and Jerusalem, do not ye dread, neither be ye afeard. Tomorrow ye shall go out against them, and the Lord shall be with you. Therefore Jehoshaphat and Judah, and all the dwellers of Jerusalem, fell lowly upon the earth before the Lord, and worshipped him. And the deacons of the sons of Kohath, and of the sons of Korah, praised the Lord God of Israel with great voice on high. And when upon the morrow they had risen early, they went out by the desert of Tekoa, and when they had gone forth, Jehoshaphat stood in the midst of them, and said, Judah, and all the dwellers of Jerusalem, hear ye me. Believe ye in the Lord your God, and ye shall be secure. Believe ye to his prophets, and all prosperities shall come to you. And he gave counsel to the people, and he ordained the singers of the Lord, that they should praise him in their companies, and that they should go before the host, and say with according voice, Acknowledge ye to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy is without end. And when they began to sing praisings, the Lord turned the ambushments of them against themselves, that is, of the sons of Ammon, and of Moab, and of the hill of Sire, which went out to fight against Judah, and they were slain. For why the sons of Ammon and of Moab rose together against the dwellers of the hill of Sire, to slay, and to do away them, and when they had done this thing in work, they were then also turned against themselves, and they fell down together by wounds, each slaying other. Certainly when Judah was come to the den, that beholdeth, or is over against, the wilderness, he saw afar all the large country full of dead bodies, and that none was left, that might escape death. Therefore Jehoshaphat came, and all the people with him, to draw away the spoils of dead men, and they found among the dead bodies diverse pertinence of household, and clothes, and full precious vessels. And they ravished, or took those things away, in diverse manners, so that they might not bear all things, 
neither they might take away the spoils by three days, for the greatness of prey. Soothly in the fourth day they were gathered together in the Valley of Blessing. For thy that they blessed the Lord there, they called that place the Valley of Blessing, unto this present day. And each man of Judah turned again, and the dwellers of Jerusalem, and Jehoshaphat before them, into Jerusalem with great gladness, for the Lord God had given to them joy of their enemies. And they entered into Jerusalem with psalteries, and harps, and trumps, into the house of the Lord. Forsooth the dread of the Lord fell on all the realms of lands, when they had heard, that the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. And the realm of Jehoshaphat rested from war, and the Lord gave peace to him all about. And Jehoshaphat reigned upon Judah, and he was of five and thirty years, when he began to reign, and he reigned five and twenty years in Jerusalem, and the name of his mother was Azabar, the daughter of Shili. And he went in the way of Asa his father, and bowed not from it, and he did whatever things were pleasant before the Lord. Nevertheless he did not away the high places, and yet the people had not dressed their heart to the Lord God of their fathers. Forsooth the residue of the former and the last deeds of Jehoshaphat be written in the book of Jehu, the son of Hanani, which he ordained in the book of kings of Israel. After these things Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, made friendships with Ahaziah, king of Israel, whose works were full evil, and he was partner to him, and they made ships, which should go into Tarshish, and they made one ship into Eziangeber. And Eliezer, the son of Dodava, of Marishah, prophesied to Jehoshaphat, and said, For thou hast had bond of peace with Ahaziah, the Lord hath destroyed thy works, and the ships be broken, and might not go into Tarshish. Chapter 21 And Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers, and was buried with them in the city of David, and Jehoram, his son, reigned for him. And he had brethren, the sons of Jehoshaphat, Azariah, Jehiel, and Zechariah, and Azariah, and Michael, and Shephashiah. All these were the sons of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. And their father gave to them many gifts of gold and of silver, and he gave them pensions, or rents, with full strong cities in Judah, but he gave the realm to Jehoram, for he was his first begotten son. And Jehoram rose up on the realm of his father, and when he had confirmed himself in the realm, he slew all his brethren by sword, and also some of the princes of Judah. Jehoram was of two and thirty years, when he began to reign, and he reigned eight years in Jerusalem. And he went in the ways of the kings of Israel, as the house of Ahab had done, for the daughter of Ahab was his wife, and he did evil in the sight of the Lord. But the Lord would not destroy the house of David, for the covenant which he had made with David, and for he had promised to give to him a lantern, and to his sons, in all time. In those days Edom rebelled, so that it was not subject to Judah, and it ordained a king to itself. And when Jehoram had passed forth with his princes, and all the multitude of knights, that was with him, he rose up by night, and smote Edom, that compassed him, and all the dukes of his multitude of knights. Nevertheless Edom rebelled, that it was not under the lordship of Judah unto this day. In that time also Libna went away, that it was not under the hand of him, for he had forsaken the Lord God of his fathers. Furthermore he made high places in the cities of Judah, and made the dwellers of Jerusalem to do fornication, that is, idolatry, and Judah to break the law. And letters were brought to him from Elijah, the prophet, in which it was written, The Lord God of David, thy father, saith these things, for that thou hast not gone in the ways of Jehoshaphat, thy father, and in the way of Asa, king of Judah, but thou hast gone by the way of the kings of Israel, and thou hast made Judah and the dwellers of Jerusalem to do fornication, and thou hast followed the fornication of the house of Ahab. Furthermore, and thou hast slain thy brethren in the house of thy father, that is, princes of the house of thy father, which were better than thou. Lo, the Lord shall smite thee with a great vengeance, and thy people, and thy sons, and thy wives, and all thy chattel. And thou shalt be sick with the worst sorrow of thy womb, till that thine entrails go out little and little by each day. Therefore the Lord raised up against Jehoram the spirit of Philistines, and of Arabians, that march with Ethiopians. And these went up into the land of Judah, and they wasted it, and they took away all the substance, that was found in the house of the king, furthermore and his sons, 
and his wives they took away. And no son was left to him, but Jehoahaz, that was his least son, or youngest son, in birth. And over all these things the Lord smote him with uncurable sorrow of the womb. And when day came after day, and the spaces of time were turned about, the course of two years was fulfilled. And so he was wasted by long rot, so that he casted out also his own entrails, and so he wanted sorrow and life together, and he was dead in the worst sickness. And the people did not to him service of dead men by the custom of burning, as it had done to his greaters, either ancestors. He was of two and thirty years when he began to reign, and he reigned eight years in Jerusalem, and he went not rightfully, and they buried him in the city of David, nevertheless not in the sepulchre of kings. Chapter 22 Forsooth the dwellers of Jerusalem ordained Ahaziah, the youngest son of Jehoram, to be king for him, for the thieves of Arabia, that fell into the castles of Judah, had slain all his greater or elder brethren, which were begotten before him. And Ahaziah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, reigned. Ahaziah was of two and forty years, when he began to reign, and he reigned one year in Jerusalem. The name of his mother was Athaliah, the daughter of Omri. But he entered by the way of the house of Ahab, for his mother compelled him to do evil. Therefore he did evil in the sight of the Lord, as the house of Ahab, for they were counselors to him into his perishing, after the death of his father, and he went in the counsel of them. And he went with Joram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, into battle against Hazel, king of Syria, into Ramoth of Gilead. And men of Syria wounded Joram, which turned again for to be healed in Jezreel, for he had taken many wounds in the foresaid battle. Therefore Ahaziah, king of Judah, the son of Jehoram, went down to visit Joram, the son of Ahab, that was sick in Jezreel, for it was God's will against Ahaziah, that he came to Joram. And when he was come, he went out with him against Jehu, the son of Nimshi, whom God anointed, that he should do away the house of Ahab. Therefore when Jehu destroyed the house of Ahab, he found the princes of Judah, and the sons of the brethren of Ahaziah, that ministered to him, and he killed them. And he sought that Ahaziah, and caught him hid in Samaria, and after that he was brought to Jehu, Jehu killed him, and they buried him, for he was the son of Jehoshaphat, that had sought God in all his heart. And none hope was more, that any of the generation of Ahaziah should reign. And Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, and she rose up, and killed all the king's generation of the house of Jehoram. Forsooth Jehoshabeth, the daughter of the king, took Josh, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him from the midst of the sons of the king, when they were slain, and she hid him with his nurse in a closet of beds. For Jehoshabeth, that hid him, was the daughter of King Jehoram, and wife of Jehoiada, the bishop, and the sister of Ahaziah, and therefore Athaliah killed not her. Therefore he was hid with them in the house of God six years, in which Athaliah reigned on the land. Chapter 23 Forsooth in the seventh year Jehoiada was comforted, and took centurions, that is, Azariah, the son of Jeroam, and Ishmael, the son of Jehohanan, and Azariah, the son of Obd, and Marsiah, the son of Adiah, and Elishaphat, the son of Zishri, and he made with them a council and a bond of peace. The which compassed Judah, and gathered together deacons of all the cities of Judah, and the princes of the families of Israel, and they came into Jerusalem. And all the multitude made covenant in the house of the Lord with the king. And Jehoiada said to them, Lo, Josh the son of the king shall reign, as the Lord spake on the sons of David. Therefore this is the word, that ye shall do, the third part of you that be come to the Sabbath, of priests, and of deacons, and of porters, shall be in the gates, and none other man enter into the house of the Lord, no but priests, and they that minister of the deacons, only enter they, that be hallowed, and all the other common people keep they the keepings of the Lord. Forsooth the deacons compass the king, and each man have his armors, and if any other man entereth into the temple, be he slain, and be they with the king entering and going out. Therefore the deacons and all Judah did by all things which Jehoiada, the bishop, had commanded, and all took the men, that were with them, and came by the order of Sabbath with them, 
that had filled now the Sabbath, and should go out. For Jehoiada, the bishop, suffered not the companies to go away, that were wont to come one after the Topher by each week. And Jehoiada, the priest, gave to the centurion's spears, and shields, and bucklers, of King David, which he had hallowed in the house of the Lord. And he ordained all the people, of them that held swords, at the right side of the temple unto the left side of the temple, before the altar and the temple, by compass of the king. And they led out Josh the son of the king, and they set a diadem upon his head, and they gave to him in his hand the law to be holden, and they made him king. And Jehoiada, the bishop, and his sons, anointed him, and they prayed heartily, and said, The king live. And when Athaliah had heard this thing, that is, the voice of men running and praising the king, she entered into the people, into the temple of the Lord. And when she had seen the king, standing on the degrees in the entering, and the princes and the companies of knights about him, and all the people of the land joying and sounding with trumps, and singing together with organs of diverse kind, and the voice of men praising, she rent her clothes, and said, Treasons, treasons. And Jehoiada, the bishop, went out to the centurions, and to the princes of the host, and said to them, Led ye her without the precincts, either enclosings, of the temple, and be she slain without forth by sword. And the priest commanded, that she should not be slain in the house of the Lord. And when she had entered into the gate of the horses, of the king's house, they killed her there. For sooth Jehoiada covenanted a bond of peace betwixt himself and all the people and the king, that it should be the people of the Lord. Therefore all the people entered into the house of Baal, and they destroyed it, and they break the altars and the simulacra thereof. But they killed before the altars Matan, the priest of Baal. And Jehoiada ordained sovereigns in the house of the Lord, that under the hands of priests, and of deacons, which David parted in the house of the Lord, they should offer burnt sacrifices to the Lord, as it is written in the book of Moses, in joy and in songs, by the ordinance of David. Also he ordained porters in the gates of the house of the Lord, that an unclean man in anything should not enter into it. And all the people of the land was glad, and the city rested, for sooth Athaliah was slain by sword. Chapter 24 Josh was of seven years, when he began to reign, and he reigned forty years in Jerusalem. The name of his mother was Zibiah of Beersheba. And he did that, that was good before the Lord, in all the days of Jehoiada, the priest. And Josh took two wives, of which he begat sons and daughters. And after which things it pleased Josh to repair the house of the Lord. And he gathered together priests and deacons, and said to them, Go ye out to the cities of Judah, and gather ye of all Israel money, to the repairing of the temple of your Lord God, by each year, and do ye this thing hastily. Certainly the deacons did this thing negligently. And the king called Jehoiada, the prince of priests, and said to him, Why was it not charged to thee, to constrain the deacons to bring in money of Judah and of Jerusalem, which money was ordained of Moses, the servant of the Lord, that all the multitude of Israel should bring it into the tabernacle of witnessing. For the wicked woman Athaliah, and her sons, destroyed the house of God, and of all the things, that were hallowed to the temple of the Lord, they adorned the temple of Balaam. Therefore the king commanded, and they made an ark, and set it beside the gate of the Lord without fifth. And it was preached in Judah and Jerusalem, that each man should bring to the Lord the price, that Moses, the servant of God, ordained upon all Israel, in desert. And all the princes and all the people were glad, and they entered, and brought, and sent freely their gifts into the ark of the Lord, so that it was filled with treasure. And when it was time, that they should bear the ark before the king by the hands of deacons, for they saw much money, the clerk of the king entered, and he whom the first, or chief, priest had ordained, and they poured out the money that was in the ark, and they bare again the ark to his place. And so they did by all days, and money without number was gathered together, which the king and Jehoiada gave to them that were sovereigns of the works of the house of the Lord. And they hired thereof cutters of stones, and craftsmen of all works, that they should repair the house of the Lord. Also they hired smiths of iron, and of brass, that that thing should be underset, that began to fall. They that wrought did craftily, and the crazing of the walls was stopped by the hands of them, 
and they raised the house of the Lord into the former state, and made it to stand steadfastly. And when they had fulfilled all the works, they brought before the king and Jehoiada the Totha part of the money, of which money vessels were made into the service of the temple, and to burnt sacrifices, also vials, or basins, and other vessels of gold and of silver were made thereof. And burnt sacrifices were offered in the house of the Lord continually, in all the days of Jehoiada. And Jehoiada full of days waxed eld, and he was dead, when he was of an hundred years and thirty, and they buried him in the city of David with kings, for he had done good with Israel and with his house. But after that Jehoiada died, the princes of Judah entered, and worshipped the king, which was flattered with their services, and assented to them. And they forsook the temple of the Lord God of their fathers, and served idols in woods and graven images, and the ire of the Lord was made against Judah and Jerusalem for this sin. And he sent to them prophets, that they should turn again to the Lord, the which prophets witnessing, they would not hear. Then the Spirit of the Lord clothed, or environed, Zechariah, the priest, the son of Jehoiada, and he stood in the sight of the people, and said to them, The Lord saith these things, Why break ye the commandment of the Lord, which things shall not profit to you, and ye have forsaken the Lord, that he should forsake you? Which were gathered together against him, and casted stones, by commandment of the king, in the large place of the house of the Lord. And King Josh had not mind on the mercy, which Jehoiada, the father of Zechariah, had done with him, but he killed the son of Jehoiada. And when Zechariah died, he said, The Lord see this thing, and again seek it. And when a year was turned about, either ended, the host of Syria went up against Josh, and it came into Judah and into Jerusalem, and it killed all the princes of the people, and they sent all the prey to the king of Damascus. And certain, when a full little number of men of Syria was come into Judah, the Lord betook in their hands a multitude of Jews without number, for they had forsaken the Lord God of their fathers. Also they used shameful dooms against Josh, and they went away from him, and they left him in great sorrows. And his servants rose up against him, into vengeance of the blood of the son of Jehoiada, priest, and killed him in his bed, and he was dead. And they buried him in the city of David, but not in the sepulchres of kings. And Zabad, the son of Shemith of Ammon, and Jehozabad, the son of Shimrith of Moab, set it treasons to him. Soothly his sons, and the sum of money that was gathered under him, and the repairing of the house of God, be written diligently in the book of kings. And Amaziah, his son, reigned for him. Chapter 25 Amaziah was of five and twenty years, when he began to reign, and he reigned nine and twenty years in Jerusalem. The name of his mother was Jehoaddan of Jerusalem. And he did good in the sight of the Lord, nevertheless not in perfect heart. And when he saw the empire strengthened to himself, he strangled the servants that killed the king, his father, but he killed not the sons of them, as it is written in the book of the law of Moses, where the Lord commanded, saying, Fathers shall not be slain for the sons, neither the sons for their fathers, but each man shall die in his own sin. Therefore Amaziah gathered together Judah, and ordained them by families, and tribunes, and centurions, in all Judah and Benjamin. And he numbered him from twenty years and above, and he found thirty thousand of able young men, that went out to battle, and held spear and shield. Also for Mede, he hired of Israel an hundred thousand of strong men, for an hundred talents of silver, that they should fight against the sons of Edom. For sooth a man of God came to him, and said, Ah, king, the host of Israel go not out with thee, for the Lord is not with Israel, and with all the sons of Ephraim. For if thou guessest that battles stand in the might of an host, the Lord shall make thee to be overcome of thine enemies, for sooth it is of God for to help, and to turn men into flight. And Amaziah said to the man of God, What then shall be done of the hundred talents, which I gave to the knights of Israel? And the man of God answered to him, The Lord hath, whereof he may yield to thee much more things than these. Therefore Amaziah separated the host that came to him from Ephraim, that it should turn again into his place. And they were wroth greatly against Judah, and they turned again into their country. And Amaziah led out trustily his people, and went into the valley of makings of salt, 
and he killed of the sons of Sire ten thousand. And the sons of Judah took other ten thousand of men, and brought to the high scarp of a stone, and they cast him down from the highest part into a pit, which all break. And that host that Amaziah had sent again, that it should not go with him to battle, was spread abroad in the cities of Judah from Samaria unto Bethhoron, and after the host of Israel had slain three thousand of Judah, it took away a great prey. And Amaziah, after the slaying of Edomians, and after that he had brought thence with him the gods of the sons of Sire, he ordained him to be into gods to himself, and he worshipped them, and burnt incense to them. Wherefore the Lord was wroth against Amaziah, and he sent to him a prophet, that said to him, Why worshippest thou gods which have not delivered their people from thine hand? And when the prophet spake these things, Amaziah answered to him, Whether thou art a counsellor of the king? Cease thou, lest peradventure I slay thee. And the prophet went away from him, and said, I know, that the Lord hath thought to slay thee. For thou hast done this evil, and furthermore thou assentedest not to my counsel. Therefore Amaziah, the king of Judah, when he had taken a full evil counsel, sent to the king of Israel, Jehosh, the son of Jehoahaz, the son of Jehu, and said, Come thou, and see we us together. And Jehosh, the king of Israel, sent messengers to him, and said, A thistle, that is in the Lebanon, sent to a cedar tree of the Lebanon, and said, Give thy daughter wife to my son, and lo, beasts that were in the wood of the Lebanon went and defouled the thistle. Thou saidest, I have smitten Edom, and therefore thine heart is raised into pride. Sit thou still in thine house. Why stirrest thou evil against thyself, that thou fall, and Judah with thee? Amaziah would not hear this, for it was the will of the Lord, that he should be betaken into the hands of his enemies, for the gods of Edom which he worshipped. Therefore Jehosh, king of Israel, ascended, and they saw themselves together. Soothly Amaziah, the king of Judah, was in Beth Shemesh of Judah, and Judah fell down before Israel, and fled into his tabernacles. And the king of Israel, took in Beth Shemesh Amaziah, the king of Judah, the son of Josh, the son of Jehoahaz, and brought him into Jerusalem. And he destroyed the walls thereof from the gate of Ephraim to the gate of the corner, by four hundred cubits. And he led again into Samaria all the gold and silver, and all the vessels that he found in the house of the Lord, and at Obedim, in the treasuries also of the king's house, also and the sons of hostages. And Amaziah, king of Judah, the son of Josh, lived fifteen years after that Jehosh, king of Israel, the son of Jehoahaz, was dead. Soothly the residue of the former and the last words of Amaziah, be written in the book of kings of Judah and of Israel. And after that he had gone away from the Lord, they set to him treasons in Jerusalem, and when he had fled to Lachish, they sent thither, and killed him there. And they brought him again upon horses, and buried him with his fathers in the city of David. Chapter 26 Forsooth all the people of Judah made Uzziah, his son, of sixteen years' age, king for his father Amaziah. He builded Eleth, and restored it to the lordship of Judah, after that the king slept with his fathers. Uzziah was of sixteen years, when he began to reign, and he reigned two and fifty years in Jerusalem, and the name of his mother was Jecholiah of Jerusalem. And he did that, that was rightful in the sight of the Lord, by all things which Amaziah, his father, had done. And he sought the Lord in the days of Zechariah, understanding and seeing God. And when he sought God, God ruled him in all things. And he went out, and fought against Philistines, and destroyed the wall of Gath, and the wall of Jabneh, and the wall of Ashdod, and he builded strong places in Ashdod, and in Philistines. And the Lord helped him both against Philistines, and against Arabians that dwelled in Gerbal, and against Ammonites. Ammonites paid gifts to Uzziah, and his name was published unto the entering of Egypt for his oft victories. And Uzziah builded towers in Jerusalem over the gate of the corner, and over the gate of the valley, and other towers in the same side of the wall, and he made those steadfast, or strong. Also he builded towers in the wilderness, and digged full many cisterns, for he had many beasts, as well in the field places, as in the vastness of desert. Also he had vineries, and tillers of vines in the hills, in the great mountain, and in Carmel. 
for he was a man given to earth tilling. And the host of his warriors, that went forth to battles, under the hand of Jeel, scribe, and of Marsiah, the teacher, and under the hand of Hananiah, that was of the dukes of the king. And all the number of princes, by their families, was of strong men two thousand and six hundred. And under them was all the host, three hundred thousand and seven thousand and five hundred, that were able to battle, and fought for the king against adversaries. And Uzziah made ready to them, that is, to all the host, shields, and spears, and basinets, and habergeons, and bows, and slings to cast stones. And he made in Jerusalem engines of diverse kind, which he set in towers, and in the corners of walls, that those should cast out arrows and great stones, and his name went out far, for the Lord helped him, and had made him strong. But when he was made strong, his heart was raised up into his perishing, and he despised the Lord his God, and he entered into the temple of the Lord, and would burn incense upon the altar of incense. And anon Azariah, the priest, entered after him, and with him sixty priests of the Lord, men full noble, which against stood the king, and said to him, Uzziah, it is not of thine office, that thou burn incense to the Lord, but of the priests of the Lord, that is, the sons of Aaron, that be hallowed to such service, go thou out of the sanctuary, and despise thou not God, for this thing shall not be a reckoned of the Lord God to thee into glory. And Uzziah was wroth, and he held in his hand the censer for to offer incense, and he menaced the priests, and anon leprosy was sprung forth in his forehead, before the priests in the house of the Lord, upon the altar of incense. And when Azariah, the bishop, had beheld him, and also all the other priests, they saw leprosy in his forehead, and anon they putted the king out of the temple, but also he was afeared, and hasted to go out, for he feared anon the vengeance of the Lord. Therefore King Uzziah was leprous unto the day of his death, and dwelled in an house by itself, and he was full of leprosy, for which he was cast out of the house of the Lord. And Jotham, his son, governed the house of the king, and deemed the people of the land. And Isaiah, the prophet, the son of Amoz, wrote the residue of the former and of the last words of Uzziah. And Uzziah slept with his fathers, and they buried not him in the field of the king's sepulchres, for he was leprous, and Jotham, his son, reigned for him. Chapter 27 Jotham was of five and twenty years, when he began to reign, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. The name of his mother was Jerishah, the daughter of Zadok. He did that, that was rightful before the Lord, by all things which Uzziah, his father, had done, except that he entered not into the temple of the Lord, and the people trespassed yet. He builded the high gate of the house of the Lord, and he builded many things in the wall of Ophel. Also he builded cities in the hills of Judah, and he builded castles and towers in forests. He fought against the king of the sons of Ammon, and overcame him, and the sons of Ammon gave to him in that time an hundred talents of silver, and ten thousand cores of barley, and so many of wheat. The sons of Ammon gave these things to him in the second and the third years. And Jotham was made strong, for he had dressed his ways before the Lord his God. Forsooth the residue of words of Jotham, and all his battles and works, be written in the book of the kings of Israel and of Judah. He was of five and twenty years, when he began to reign, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. And Jotham slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David, and Ahaz, his son, reigned for him. Chapter 28 Ahaz was of twenty years, when he began to reign, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. He did not rightfulness in the sight of the Lord, as David, his father, did, but he went in the ways of the kings of Israel. Furthermore, and he melted out images to Balaam, he it is that burnt incense in the valley of Ben-Hinnon, and purged his sons by fire, by the custom of heathen men, whom the Lord killed in the coming of the sons of Israel from Egypt, in the coming of the sons of Israel to the land of promise. Also he made sacrifice, and burnt incense in high places, and in hills, and under each tree full of boughs. And the Lord his God betook him in the hand of the king of Syria, which smote Ahaz, and took a great prey of his empire, and brought into Damascus. Also Ahaz was betaken to the hands of the king of Israel, and he was smitten with a great wound. 
and Pekka, the son of Ramalia, killed of Judah six score thousand in one day, all the men warriors, for they had forsaken the Lord God of their fathers. In the same time Zishri, a mighty man of Ephraim, killed Marsiah, the son of Jotham, the king, and he killed Azrikam, the duke of his house, and Elkanah, the second person from the king. And the sons of Israel took of their brethren two hundred thousand of women and of children and of damsels, and pray without number, and bear it into Samaria. In that tempest, or vengeance, a prophet of the Lord, Odid by name, was there, which went out against the host of Israel coming into Samaria, and he said to them, Lo! The Lord God of your fathers was wroth against Judah, and he hath betaken them in your hands, and ye have slain him cruelly, so that your cruelty stretcheth forth into heaven. Furthermore and ye will make subject to you the sons of Judah and of Jerusalem into servants and handmaids, which thing is not needful to be done. Certainly ye have sinned in this thing to the Lord your God. But hear ye my counsel, and led again the prisoners, which ye have brought thence of your brethren, for great vengeance of the Lord nigheth to you. Therefore men of the princes of the sons of Ephraim, Azariah, the son of Johanan, Berachia, the son of Meshalimoth, Jehizkiah, the son of Shalom, and Amasa, the son of Hadley, stood against them that came from the battle, and said to them, Ye shall not bring in hither the prisoners, lest we do sin against the Lord. Why will ye lay to on your sins, and heap your old trespasses? Certainly this is great sin. The wrath of the strong vengeance of the Lord nigheth on Israel. And the men warriors left the prey, and all things which they had taken, before the princes and all the multitude. And the men stood there, which we remembered before, and they took the prisoners, and they clothed of the spoils all that were naked. And when they had clothed them, and shod them, and refreshed them with meat, and with drink, and anointed them for travel, and gave cure, either medicine, to them. Whichever of them were feeble, and might not go, they putted on horses, and they brought them to Jericho, the city of Palms, to their brethren, and they turned again into Samaria. In that time, King Ahaz sent to the king of Assyrians, and asked help of him. And Adumians came, and killed many men of Judah, and took great prey. Also Philistines were spread abroad by cities of the fields, and at the south of Judah, and they took Beth Shemesh, and Ajalon, and Gedoth, and Shocho, and Timna, and Gimzo, with their villages, and they dwelled in those. For the Lord made low Judah for Ahaz, the king of Judah, for he had made him naked of help, and despised the Lord. And the Lord brought against him Tilgathpilnazer, king of Assyrians, that tormented him, and wasted him, while no man against stood. Therefore Ahaz, after that he had spoiled the house of the Lord, and the house of the king, and of the princes, gave gifts to the king of Assyrians, and nevertheless it profited nothing to him. Furthermore also in the time of his anguish he increased despite against God, that king Ahaz, himself, offered sacrifices to the gods of Damascus, his smiters, or destroyers, and he said, The gods of the kings of Syria help them, which gods I shall please by sacrifices, and they shall help me, when, on the contrary, they were falling to him, and to all Israel. Therefore after that Ahaz had taken away, and broken all the vessels of the house of God, he closed the gates of God's temple, and he made altars to himself in all the corners of Jerusalem. And in all the cities of Judah he builded altars to burn incense, and he stirred the Lord God of his fathers to wrathfulness. Soothly the residue of his words and of all his works, the former and the last, be written in the book of kings of Judah and of Israel. And Ahaz slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of Jerusalem, for they received not him into the sepulchres of the kings of Israel, and Hezekiah, his son, reigned for him. Chapter 29 And Hezekiah began to reign, when he was of five and twenty years, and he reigned in Jerusalem nine and twenty years. The name of his mother was Abijah, the daughter of Zechariah. And Hezekiah did that, that was pleasing in the sight of the Lord, by all things that David, his father, had done. In that year, and in the first month of his realm, he opened the gates of the house of the Lord, and restored, or repaired, those gates, and he brought the priests and deacons, and he gathered them together into the east street, and said to them, Sons of Levi, hear ye me, and be ye hallowed. Cleanse ye the house of the Lord God of your fathers, 
and do ye away all uncleanness from the sanctuary. Our fathers have sinned, and done evil in the sight of the Lord our God, and forsook him. They turned away their faces from the tabernacle of the Lord our God, and gave their back. They closed the doors that were in the porch, and quenched the lanterns. And they burnt not incense, and they offered not burnt sacrifices in the sanctuary of God of Israel. Therefore the strong vengeance of the Lord was raised upon Judah and Jerusalem, and he gave them into stirring or unstableness, and into perishing, and into hissing, either scorning, as ye see with your eyes. Lo, our fathers have fallen down by swords, our sons, and our daughters, and our wives be led prisoners for this great trespass. Now therefore it pleaseth me, that we make a bond of peace with the Lord God of Israel, and that he turn from us the strong vengeance of his wrath. My sons, do not ye herein be reckless. The Lord hath chosen you, that ye stand before him, and serve him, that ye praise him, and burn incense to him. Therefore the deacons rose up, Mahath, the son of Amasai, and Joel, the son of Azariah, of the sons of Kohath, and of the sons of Merari, Kish, the son of Abdi, and Azariah, the son of Jehalalel, and of the sons of Gershon, Joah, the son of Zimmer, and Eden, the son of Joah, and of the sons of Elizaphan, Shimri, and Jeel, and of the sons of Asif, Zechariah, and Mataniah, also of the sons of Heman, Jehiel, and Shimei, but also of the sons of Jeduthun, Shemaiah, and Uziel. And they gathered together their brethren, and they were hallowed, and they entered by the commandment of the king, and by commandment of the Lord, for to cleanse the house of the Lord. Also priests entered into the temple of the Lord, for to hallow it, and they bear out all the uncleanness, that they found therein in the porch, I the large place, of the house of the Lord, which uncleanness the deacons took, and they bear it out to the strand of Kidron without fifth. Soothly they began to cleanse in the first day of the first month, and in the eighth day of the same month they entered into the porch of the house of the Lord, and they cleansed the temple eight days, and in the sixteenth day of the same month they filled that, that they had begun. And they entered to Hezekiah, the king, and said to him, We have hallowed, or cleansed, all the house of the Lord, and the altar of burnt sacrifice thereof, and the vessels thereof, also and the board of setting forth with all his vessels, and all the pertinence of the temple, that king Ahaz had defouled in his realm, after that he brake the law, and lo, all things be set forth before the altar of the Lord. And Hezekiah, the king, rose up in the morrow tide, and he gathered together all the princes of the city, and he went up into the house of the Lord, and they offered together seven bulls, and seven rams, seven lambs, and seven bucks of goats, for sin, for the realm, for the sanctuary, and for Judah. And he said to priests, the sons of Aaron, that they should offer sacrifices on the altar of the Lord. Therefore they killed bulls, and the priests took the blood, and poured it upon the altar. Also they killed rams, and they poured the blood of those upon the altar, and they offered lambs, and they poured the blood upon the altar. And they brought bucks of goats for sin before the king and all the multitude, and they set their hands on those, and the priests offered them, and they sprinkled the blood of them before the altar, for the cleansing of all Israel. For the king commanded, that burnt sacrifice should be made for all Israel, and for sin thereof. Also he ordained deacons in the house of the Lord, with cymbals, and psalteries, and harps, by the ordinance of David the king, and of Gad, the prophet, and of Nathan, the prophet. For it was the commandment of the Lord by the hand of his prophets. And the deacons stood, and held the organs of David, and priests held trumps. And Hezekiah commanded, that they should offer burnt sacrifices upon the altar. And when burnt sacrifices were offered, they began to sing praisings to the Lord, and to sound with trumps, and with diverse organs, which David, king of Israel, had made ready to sound with. Forsooth when all the company worshipped the Lord, singers and they that held trumps were in their office, till the burnt sacrifice was filled. And when the offering was ended, the king was bowed down, and all that were with him, and they worshipped God. And Hezekiah and the princes commanded to the deacons, that they should praise the Lord with the words of David, and of Asaph, the prophet, which praised him with great gladness, and kneeled, and worshipped. Soothly Hezekiah added also these things, Ye have filled your hands with blessings to the Lord, nigh ye, and offer sacrifices and praisings in the house of the Lord.
Therefore all the multitude offered with devout soul sacrifices, and praisings, and burnt sacrifices. And this was the number of burnt sacrifices, which the multitude offered, seventy bulls, and an hundred rams, and two hundred lambs. Also they hallowed to the Lord six hundred oxen, and three thousand sheep. And the priests were few, and they might not suffice for to draw, or flay off, the skins of burnt sacrifices. Wherefore and the deacons their brethren helped them, till the work was filled, and the priests were hallowed, for the deacons be hallowed by lighter custom than the priests. Therefore there were full many burnt sacrifices, and inner fatness of peaceable sacrifices, and the moist sacrifices of burnt sacrifices, and thereby the worship of the house of the Lord was filled. And Hezekiah was glad, and all the people, for the service of the Lord was fulfilled, for it pleased that this was done suddenly. Chapter 30 And Hezekiah sent to all Israel and to Judah, and he wrote epistles to Ephraim and to Manasseh, that they should come into the house of the Lord in Jerusalem, and make pasch to the Lord God of Israel. Therefore when counsel was taken of the king, and of princes, and of all the company of Jerusalem, they deemed, or purposed, to make pasch in the second month. For they deemed not to be able to do this in his time, that is, the first month, for the priests which might suffice thereto were not yet hallowed, and the people was not yet gathered into Jerusalem. And the word pleased the king, and all the multitude, and they deemed to send messengers into all Israel, from Beersheba unto Dan, that they should come, and make pasch to the Lord God of Israel in Jerusalem, for many men had not done it, as it is before written in the law. And couriers went forth with epistles, by commandment of the king and of his princes, into all Israel and Judah, and preached by that, that the king had commanded, sons of Israel, turn ye again to the Lord God of Abraham, and of Isaac, and of Israel, and he shall turn again to the remnant of men, that escape the hands of the king of Assyrians. Do not ye be made as your fathers and your brethren, which went away from the Lord God of their fathers, and he gave them into perishing, as ye see. Do not ye make hard your knolls, as your fathers did. Give ye your hands to the Lord in promising that ye shall serve him faithfully, and come ye to his sanctuary, which he hath hallowed without end. Serve ye the Lord God of your fathers, and the wrath of his strong vengeance shall turn away from you. For if ye turn again to the Lord, your brethren and your sons shall have mercy before their lords that led them prisoners, and they shall turn again into this land. For the Lord our God is pious, either benign, and merciful, and he will not turn away his face from you, if ye turn again to him. Therefore the couriers went swiftly from city into city through the land of Ephraim and Manasseh unto Zebulun, while they scorned and bemocked them. Nevertheless some men of Asher, and of Manasseh, and of Zebulun, assented to the council, and came into Jerusalem. For sooth the hand of the Lord was made in Judah, that he gave to them one heart, and that they did the word of the Lord, by the commandment of the king and of the princes. And many peoples were gathered into Jerusalem, for to make the solemnity of the loaves in the second month. And they rose, and destroyed the altars, that were in Jerusalem, and they destroying all things in which incense was burnt to idols, cast it forth into the strand of Kidron. And they offered Pasch in the fourteenth day of the second month. Also the priests and the deacons were hallowed at the last, and offered burnt sacrifices in the house of the Lord. And they stood in their order, by the ordinance and law of Moses, the man of God. Soothly the priests took of the hands of deacons the blood to be shed out, for much company was not hallowed, and therefore the deacons offered pasch for them, that might not be hallowed to the Lord. Also a great part of the people of Ephraim, and of Manasseh, and of Isaac, and of Zebulun, that was not hallowed, ate pasch not by that that is written. And Hezekiah prayed for them, and said, The good Lord shall do mercy to all men, which seek in all their heart the Lord God of their fathers, and it shall not be a reckoned to them into sin, that they be not hallowed by offering of gifts. And the Lord heard him, and was pleased to the people. And the sons of Israel, that were found in Jerusalem, made the solemnity of the loaves seven days in great gladness, and they praised the Lord by each day, and the deacons and priests praised the Lord by organs, which accorded to their office. And Hezekiah spake to the heart of all the deacons, that had good understanding of the Lord, 
and they ate by seven days of the solemnity, offering sacrifices of peaceable things, and praising the Lord God of their fathers. And it pleased all the multitude to hallow also other seven days, which thing also they did with great joy. Forsooth Hezekiah, king of Judah, gave to the multitude a thousand bulls, and seven thousand of sheep, and the princes gave to the people a thousand bulls, and ten thousand sheep. Therefore a full great multitude of priests was hallowed, and all the company of Judah was filled with gladness, as well of priests and deacons, as of all the multitude that came from Israel, and of converts of the land of Israel, and of dwellers in Judah. And great solemnity was made in Jerusalem, what manner was not in that city from the days of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. And priests and deacons rose up, and blessed the people. And the voice of them was heard, and their prayer came into the holy dwelling place of heaven. Chapter 31 And when these things were done rightfully, all Israel went out, that was found in the cities of Judah, and they brake simulacra, and cut it down woods, and wasted high places, and destroyed altars, not only of all Judah and Benjamin, but also of Ephraim and Manasseh, till that they had destroyed those altars, their idols utterly. And then all the sons of Israel turned again into their possessions and cities. And Hezekiah ordained companies of priests and deacons by their partings, each man in his own office, that is, as well of priests as of deacons, to burn sacrifices and peaceable sacrifices, that they should minister and acknowledge, and sing in the gates of the castles of the Lord. And the part of the king's sacrifice was, that of his own substance, or chattel, burnt sacrifice should be offered evermore in the morrow tide and in the eventide, also in sabbaths, and calends, and in other solemnities, as it is written in the law of Moses. Also he commanded to the people of them that dwelled in Jerusalem, to give parts to the priests and deacons, that they might give attention to the law of the Lord. And when this was known in the ears of the multitude, the sons of Israel offered full many first fruits of wheat, of wine, of oil, and of honey, and of all things which the earth bringeth forth, they offered tithes. But also the sons of Israel and of Judah, that dwelled in the cities of Judah, offered tithes of oxen, and of sheep, and the tithes of holy things, which they avowed to their Lord God, and they brought all things, and made full many heaps. In the third month they began to lay the fundaments of the heaps, and in the seventh month they filled, or ended, those heaps. And when Hezekiah and his princes had entered, they saw the heaps, and they blessed the Lord, and the people of Israel. And Hezekiah asked the priests and deacons why the heaps lay so. And Azariah, the first, or chief, priest of the generation of Zadok, answered to him and said, Since the first fruits began to be offered in the house of the Lord, we have eaten of those fruits, and been fulfilled, and full many things be left, for the Lord hath blessed his people, and this plenty, which thou seest, is of the remnants. Therefore Hezekiah commanded, that they should make ready barns in the house of the Lord, and when they had done this thing, they brought in faithfully both the first fruits and tithes, and whatever things they had avowed. And Conaniah, the deacon, was sovereign of those things, and Shimei, his brother was the second, next him, after whom Jehiel, and Azaziah, and Nahath, and Asahil, and Jeremoth, and Josabad, and Eliel, and Ismachia, and Mahath, and Beniah, were sovereigns under the hands, or powers, of Conaniah and Shimei, his brother, by the commandment of Hezekiah the king, and of Azariah, the bishop of the house of the Lord, to whom all things pertained. But Kor, the son of Imna, deacon, and porter of the east gate, was sovereign of those things that were offered by free will to the Lord, and of the first fruits, and of things hallowed into the holy things of the number of holy things. And under his care were Eden, and Miniamon, Jeshua, and Shemaiah, and Amariah, and Shekaniah, in the cities of priests, that they should part faithfully to their brethren the parts, to the less and to the greater, besides males from three years and above, these things to all that entered into the temple of the Lord, and whatever thing by each day was hired in the service and observances, by their partings. To priests by their families, and to deacons from twenty years and above, by their orders and companies, and to all the multitude, that is, both to the wives, and the free children of them of ever either kind, meats, were given faithfully of these things that were hallowed. But also men of the sons of Aaron were ordained, 
by the fields and by suburbs of all the cities, which men should deal parts to all the male kind of priests and deacons. Therefore Hezekiah did all these things, which we have said, in all Judah, and he wrought that, that was rightful and good and true before the Lord his God, in all the religion of the service of the house of the Lord, by the law and by the ceremonies, and he would seek his Lord God in all his heart, and he did so, and had prosperity. Chapter 32 After which things and such truth, Sennacherib, the king of Assyrians, came and entered into Judah, and he besieged strong cities, and would take those. And when Hezekiah had heard this thing, that is, that Sennacherib had come, and that all the fierceness of his battle was turned against Jerusalem, he took counsel with princes and with most strong men, that they should stop the heads of wells, which were without the city. And when the sentence of all men deemed this profitable, he gathered together a full great multitude of men, and they stopped all the wells and the river that flowed in the midst of the land, and said, Lest the kings of Assyrians come, and find abundance of waters. Also Hezekiah did wittingly, and he builded all the wall that was destroyed, and he builded towers on the wall, and another wall without fifth. And he repaired Milo in the city of David, and made armor of all kind, and shields. And he ordained princes of warriors in the host, and he called together all men in the street of the gate of the city, and spake to the heart of them, and said, Do ye manly, and be ye comforted. Do not ye dread, neither be ye afeard of the king of Assyrians, nor of all the multitude that is with him, for many more be with us than with him. A fleshly arm is with him, and the Lord our God is with us, which is our helper, and shall fight for us. And the people was comforted with such words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. And after that these things were done, Sennacherib sent his servants to Jerusalem, for he himself, with all the host, besieged Lachish. He sent to Hezekiah, king of Judah, and to all the people that was in the city of Jerusalem, and said, Sennacherib, king of Assyrians, saith these things, in whom have ye trust, and sit besieged in Jerusalem. Whether not Hezekiah deceiveth you, that ye betake you to death in hunger and thirst, and he affirmeth, that the Lord your God shall deliver you from the hand of the king of Assyrians. Whether this is not Hezekiah, that destroyed high places, and altars of him, and commanded to Judah and Jerusalem, and said, Ye shall worship before one altar, and therein ye shall burn incense. Whether ye know not what things I have done, and my fathers, to all the peoples of lands. Whether the gods of folks and of all lands might deliver their country from mine hand. Who is, of all the gods of folks, which my fathers destroyed, that might deliver his people from mine hand, that also your God may deliver you from mine hand. Therefore Hezekiah deceive not you, neither scorn he you by vain counseling, neither believe ye to him. For if no God of all folks and countries might deliver his people from mine hand, and from the hand of my fathers, followingly neither your God shall be able to deliver you from this mine hand. But also his servants spake many other things against the Lord God, and against Hezekiah, his servant. Also he wrote epistles full of blasphemy against the Lord God of Israel, and he spake against God, and said, As the gods of other folks might not deliver their people from mine hand, so and the God of Hezekiah may not deliver his people from mine hand. Furthermore, and with great cry in the language of Jews, he sounded against the people, that sat on the walls of Jerusalem, to make them afeard, and to take the city. And he spake against God of Israel, as against the gods of the peoples of earth, the works of men's hands. Therefore Hezekiah, the king, and Isaiah, the prophet, the son of Amoz, prayed against this blasphemy, and cried till into heaven. And the Lord sent his angel, the which killed each strong man and warrior, and the prince of the host of the king of Assyrians, and he, Sennacherib, turned again with shame to his land. And when he had entered into the house of his God, the sons, which went out of his womb, killed him there with sword. And the Lord saved Hezekiah, and the dwellers of Jerusalem, from the hand of Sennacherib, king of Assyrians, and from the hand of all men, and he gave to them rest by compass. Also many men brought offerings and sacrifices to the Lord into Jerusalem, and gifts to Hezekiah, king of Judah, which was enhanced after these things before all folks. In those days Hezekiah was sick unto the death, and he prayed the Lord, 
and he heard him, and gave to him a sign. But he yielded not thankings to the Lord after the benefits which he had taken, for his heart was raised into pride, and wrath of the Lord was made against him, and against Judah, and against Jerusalem. And he was meeked afterward, for thy that his heart was raised, both he was meeked, and the dwellers of Jerusalem, and therefore the wrath of the Lord came not upon them in the days of Hezekiah. And Hezekiah was rich, and full noble, and he gathered to himself full many treasures of silver, and of gold, and of precious stones, and of sweet-smelling spices, and of armors of all kind, and of vessels of great price. Also he builded large houses of wheat, of wine, and of oil, and cratchers of all beasts, and folds to sheep, and he builded six cities. And he had unnumberable flocks of sheep and of great beasts, for the Lord had given to him full much chattel. That is Hezekiah, that stopped the higher well of the waters of Gihon, and he turned those away under the earth at the west side of the city of David. In all his works he did by prosperity, whatever thing he would. Nevertheless in the message of the princes of Babylon, that were sent to him for to ask of the great wonder, that befell on the land, God forsook him, that he were assayed, and that all things were known that were in his heart. Soothly the residue of words of Hezekiah, and of his mercies, be written in the prophecy of Isaiah, the prophet, the son of Amoz, and in the book of kings of Judah and of Israel. And Hezekiah slept with his fathers, and they buried him above the sepulchres of the sons of David. And all Judah and all the dwellers of Jerusalem made solemn the services of his burying, and Manasseh, his son, reigned for him. Chapter 33 Manasseh was of twelve years, when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem five and fifty years. And he did evil before the Lord after the abominations of heathen men, whom the Lord destroyed before the sons of Israel. And he turned, and restored the high places, which Hezekiah, his father, had destroyed. And he builded altars to Balaam, and made woods, and worshipped all the knighthood of heaven, and praised it. And he builded altars in the house of the Lord, of which the Lord had said, My name shall be in Jerusalem without end. Soothly he builded those altars to all the knighthood of heaven in the two large places of the house of the Lord. And he made his sons to pass through the fire in the valley of Ben-Hinnom. He kept dreams, he followed false divining by chittering of birds, and he served witchcrafts, and he had with him astrologers and enchanters, either tragetors, that deceived men's wits, and he wrought many evils before the Lord to stir him to wrath. And he set a graven and a molten sign in the house of the Lord, of which house God spake to David, and to Solomon, his son, and said, I shall set my name without end in this house, and in Jerusalem, which I chose of all the lineages of Israel, and I shall not make the foot of Israel to move from the land which I gave to their fathers, so only that they take heed to do those things that I have commanded to them, and all the law, and ceremonies, and dooms, by the hand of Moses. But Manasseh deceived the men of Judah, and the dwellers of Jerusalem, so that they did evil, more than all heathen men, which the Lord had destroyed from the face of the sons of Israel. And the Lord spake to him, and to his people, and they would not take heed. Therefore the Lord brought upon him the princes of the host of the king of Assyrians, and they took Manasseh, and bound him with chains and stocks, and led him into Babylon. And after that he was anguished, he prayed the Lord his God, and did penance greatly before the God of his fathers. And he prayed God, and beseeched him intently, and God heard his prayer, and brought him again into Jerusalem into his realm. And then Manasseh knew, that the Lord himself is God alone. After these things he builded the wall without the city of David, at the west side of Gihon, in the valley, from the entering of the gate of fishes, by compass unto Ophel. And he raised it up greatly, and he ordained princes of the host in all the strong cities of Judah. And he did away alien gods and simulacra from the house of the Lord. And he did away the altars, which he had made in the hill of the house of the Lord, and in Jerusalem, and he casted them away all without the city. Certainly he restored the altar of the Lord, and offered thereon slain sacrifices, and peaceable sacrifices, and praising, and he commanded Judah to serve the Lord God of Israel. Nevertheless the people offered yet in high places to the Lord their God. Forsooth the residue of deeds of Manasseh, 
and his beseeching to his Lord God, and the words of prophets, that spake to him in the name of the Lord God of Israel, be contained in the words of the kings of Israel. And his prayer, and the hearing that the Lord heard him, and all his sins, and all his despising, and also the places in which he builded high things, and made Mome woods and images, before that he did penance, these be written in the book of Hosei. And Manasseh slept with his fathers, and they buried him in his house, and Amon, his son, reigned for him. Amon was of two and twenty years, when he began to reign, and he reigned two years in Jerusalem. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, as Manasseh, his father, had done. And he offered, and served to all the idols, which Manasseh had made. And he reverenced not the face of the Lord, as Manasseh, his father, reverenced. And he did much greater trespasses than his father did. And when his servants had sworn together against him, they killed him in his house. Soothly the residue multitude of the people, after that they had slain him that had slain Amon, ordained Josiah, his son, king for him. Chapter 34 Josiah was of eight years, when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem one and thirty years. And he did that, that was rightful in the sight of the Lord, and went in the ways of David, his father, and bowed not to the right side, neither to the left side. And in the eighth year of the realm of his empire, when he was yet a boy, he began to seek the God of his father David. And in the twelfth year after that he began, he cleansed Judah and Jerusalem from high places, and woods, and simulacra, and graven images. And they destroyed before him the altars of Balaam, and they destroyed the simulacra, that were put above. Also he hewed down the Mome woods, and the graven images, and brake to small gobbets, and scattered abroad the small gobbets on the burials of them, that were wont to offer to those. Furthermore the king burnt the bones of priests upon the altars of idols, and he cleansed Judah and Jerusalem of idolatry. But also he destroyed all the idols in the cities of Manasseh, and of Ephraim, and of Simeon, unto Naphtali. And when he had scattered the altars, and had all broken into gobbets the Mome woods, and the graven images, and had destroyed all temples of idols from all the land of Israel, he turned again into Jerusalem. Therefore in the eighteenth year of his realm, when the land and the temple was cleansed now, he sent Shaphan, the son of Hilkiah, and Marsiah, the prince of the city, and Joah, the son of Joaz, his chancellor, that they should repair the house of the Lord his God. Which came to Hilkiah, the great priest, and when they had taken of him the money that was brought into the house of the Lord, which money the deacons and porters had gathered of men of Manasseh, and of Ephraim, and of all the remnant men of Israel, and of Judah and of Benjamin, and of the dwellers of Jerusalem, they gave it in the hands of them that were sovereigns of the workmen in the house of the Lord, that they should restore the temple, and repair all the feeble things thereof. And they gave that money to the craftsmen and masons, for to buy stones hewed out of the quarries, and wood to the joinings of the building, and to the coupling of houses, which the kings of Judah had destroyed. The which workmen did faithfully all things, and the sovereigns of workers were Jehath, and Obadiah, of the sons of Merari, and Zechariah, and Meshullam, of the sons of Kohath, which hasted the work, all were deacons, knowing how to sing with organs. And over them that bear burdens to diverse uses were scribes, and masters of deacons, and porters. And when they bear out the money, that was brought into the temple of the Lord, Hilkiah, the priest, found a book of the law of the Lord by the hand of Moses. And Hilkiah said to Shaphan, the writer, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah took it to Shaphan, and he bare in the book to the king. And he told to him, and said, Lo, all things be fulfilled, or ended, which thou hast given into the hands of thy servants. And they have well together the silver, which is found in the house of the Lord, and it is given to the sovereigns of the craftsmen, and making diverse works. Furthermore Hilkiah, the priest, took to me this book. And when he had rehearsed this book in the presence of the king, and when the king had heard the words of the law, he rent his clothes, and he commanded to Hilkiah, and to Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, and to Abdon, the son of Micah, and to Shaphan, the scribe, and to Aziah, the servant of the king, and said, Go ye, and pray the Lord for me, and for the remnant of men of Israel and of Judah, 
on all the words of this book, that is found. For great vengeance of the Lord hath dropped upon us, for our fathers kept not the words of the Lord, to do all things that be written in this book. Therefore Hilkiah, and they that were sent together from the king, went to Huldah, the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tikvath, the son of Hazra, keeper of the king's clothes, the which Huldah dwelled in Jerusalem in the second ward. And they spake to her the words, which we told before. And she answered to them, The Lord God of Israel saith these things, Say ye to the man, that sent you to me, The Lord saith these things, Lo! I shall bring evils upon this place, and upon the dwellers thereof, and all the cursings that be written in this book, that they have read before the king of Judah. For they have forsaken me, and have sacrificed to alien gods, for to stir me to wrathfulness in all the works of their hands. Therefore my strong vengeance shall drop upon this place, and it shall not be quenched. But speak ye thus to the king of Judah, that sent you to pray the Lord, The Lord God of Israel saith these things, for thou heardest the words of the book, and thine heart thereby is made nesh, and thou art meeked in the sight of the Lord of these things which be said against this place, and against the dwellers of Jerusalem, and thou hast reverenced my face, and hast rent thy clothes, and hast wept before me. Also I have heard thee, saith the Lord. For now I shall gather thee to thy fathers, and thou shalt be born into thy sepulchre in peace, and thine eyes shall not see all the evil, that is, none of all the evils, that I shall bring in upon this place, and upon the dwellers thereof. Then they told to the king all things, that Huldah had said. And after that the king had called together all the elder men of Judah and of Jerusalem, he went up into the house of the Lord, and there went up together with him all the men of Judah, and the dwellers of Jerusalem, priests, and deacons, and all the people, from the least unto the most, to whose hearing in the house of the Lord, the king read all the words of the foresaid book. And he stood in his throne, and smote, or made, a bond of peace before the Lord, for to follow him, and to keep the commandments, and the witnessings, and the justifyings of him, in all his heart and in all his soul, and to do those things which were written in that book that he had read. And he charged greatly upon this thing all men, that were found in Jerusalem and Benjamin, and the dwellers of Jerusalem did after the covenant of the Lord God of their fathers. Therefore Josiah did away all the abominations from all the countries of the sons of Israel, and made all men, that were left in Israel, to serve the Lord God, and in all the days of his life they went not away from the Lord God of their fathers. Chapter 35 Forsooth Josiah made Pasch to the Lord in Jerusalem, the which Pasch was offered in the fourteenth day of the first month, and he ordained priests in their offices and commanded them for to serve in the house of the Lord. And he spake to the deacons, at whose teaching all Israel was hallowed to the Lord, said ye, he said, The ark of the Lord in the sanctuary of the temple, that Solomon, king of Israel, the son of David builded, for ye shall no more bear it about. But now serve ye the Lord your God, and his people Israel, and make you ready by your houses and families, in the partings of each by himself, as David, king of Israel, commanded, and as Solomon, his son, ordained, and serve ye in the sanctuary by the families and companies of deacons, and be ye hallowed, and offer ye pasch. Also make ready your brethren, that they may do after the words, which the Lord spake by the hand of Moses. Furthermore Josiah gave to all the people, that was found there in the solemnity of pasch, that is, to make the solemnity, lambs and kids of the flocks, and of residue sheep he gave thirty thousand, and of oxes three thousand. These things were given of the substance of the king. And his dukes offered those things which they avowed by their free will, as well to the people, as to priests and deacons. And Hilkiah, and Zechariah, and Jehiel, princes of the house of the Lord, gave to priests, to make pasch in common, two thousand and six hundred sheep, and three hundred oxen. And Conaniah, and Shemaiah, and Nethaniel, and his brethren, and also Hashabiah, and Jeel, and Josabad, the princes of deacons, gave to other deacons, to make pasch, five thousand of sheep, and five hundred oxen. And the service was made ready. And priests stood in their office, and deacons in their companies, by the commandment of the king, and pasch was offered. And priests sprinkled their hands with blood, and deacons drew off the skins of sacrificed beasts, and they parted those sacrifices, 
for to give them by the houses and families of all men that would come thither to make Pasch, and that those sacrifices should be offered to the Lord, as it is written in the book of Moses, and of oxen they did in like manner. And they roasted the Pasch lamb upon the fire, after that that is written in the law. And they seethed peaceable sacrifices in pans, and in cauldrons, and in pots, and in haste they dealed it to all the people, but they made ready afterward to themselves, and to priests, for the priests were occupied unto night in the offering of burnt sacrifices and of the inner fatnesses. Wherefore the deacons made ready their part at the last to themselves, and to the priests, the sons of Aaron. And singers, the sons of Asaph, stood in their order, by the commandment of David, and of Asaph, and of Heman, and of Jeduthun, the prophets of the king. But the porters kept their office by each gate, so that they went not away from their service, soothly in a point, that is, they were in no time absent from their office. Wherefore and the deacons, their brethren, made ready meats to them. Therefore all the religion of the Lord was fulfilled rightfully in that day, that they made Pasch, and offered burnt sacrifices upon the altar of the Lord, by the commandment of King Josiah. And the sons of Israel, that were found there, made Pasch in that time, and the solemnity of the loaves seven days. No Pasch was like this in Israel, from the days of Samuel the prophet. But neither any of the kings of Israel made Pasch as Josiah did, to priests and deacons, and to all Judah and Israel, that was found there, and to the dwellers of Jerusalem. This Pasch was hallowed in the eighteenth year of the realm of Josiah. After that Josiah had repaired the temple, Necho, the king of Egypt, went up to fight in Charchemish beside Euphrates, and Josiah went forth into his meeting. And Necho said by messengers sent to Josiah, king of Judah, What cause of strife is to me and to thee? I come not against thee today, but I fight against another household, to which God bade me go in haste. Cease thou to do thus against God, that is with me, lest he slay thee. But Josiah would not turn again, but he made ready battle against him, and he assented not to the words of Necho, by God's mouth, but he went for to fight in the field of Megiddo. And there he was wounded of archers, and Josiah said to his servants, Led ye me out of the battle, for I am wounded greatly. And they bare him over from that chariot into another chariot, that followed him, by custom of the king, and they brought him forth into Jerusalem, and he died there, and was buried in the sepulchre of his fathers. And all Judah and Jerusalem bewailed him, Jeremy most, of whom all singers and singresses till into present day rehearse lamentations, either wailings, on Josiah, and it came forth as a law in Israel, lo, it is said written in lamentations. Forsooth the residue of words of Josiah, and of his mercies, that be commanded in the law of the Lord, and his works, the first and the last, be written in the book of kings of Israel and of Judah. Chapter 36 Therefore the people of the land took Jehoahaz, the son of Josiah, and ordained him king for his father in Jerusalem. Jehoahaz was of three and twenty years, when he began to reign, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. And when the king of Egypt had come to Jerusalem, he removed him, and he condemned the land in an hundred talents of silver and in a talent of gold. And he ordained for him Eliakim, his brother, king upon Judah and Jerusalem, and he turned his name, and called him Jehoiakim. And he took that Jehoahaz with himself, and he brought him into Egypt. Jehoiakim was of five and twenty years, when he began to reign, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem, and he did evil before the Lord his God. And Nebuchadnezzar, king of Chaldees, went up against this Jehoiakim, and he led him bound with chains into Babylon to which Babylon he translated also the vessels of the house of the Lord, and he set those in his temple. Soothly the residue of words of Jehoiakim, and of his abominations which he wrought, and which were found in him, be contained in the book of kings of Israel and of Judah. And Jehoiachin, his son, reigned for him. Jehoiachin was of eight years, when he began to reign, and he reigned three months and ten days in Jerusalem, and he did evil in the sight of the Lord. And when the circle of the year was turned about, Nebuchadnezzar the king sent men, which also brought him into Babylon, when the most precious vessels of the house of the Lord were borne out together. 
and Nebuchadnezzar ordained Zedekiah, his father's brother, king upon Judah and Jerusalem. Zedekiah was of one and twenty years, when he began to reign, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord his God, and he was not ashamed of the face of Jeremy, the prophet, that spake to him by the mouth of the Lord. Also he went from King Nebuchadnezzar, which made him to swear by God, that is, to promise steadfastly to be true to him, and Zedekiah made hard his knoll and his heart, that he would not turn again to the Lord God of Israel. But also all the princes of priests, and the people, trespassed wickedly, by all the abominations of heathen men, and they defiled the house of the Lord, which he had hallowed to himself in Jerusalem. And the Lord God of their fathers sent to them by the hand of his messengers, and the Lord rose up by night, and he admonished them each day, for thy that he would spare his people, and his dwelling place. And they mocked the messengers of God, and they despised his words, and they scorned his prophets, till the great vengeance of the Lord ascended upon his people, and no cure or healing were to them. And he brought on him the king of Chaldees, and killed the young men of them by sword in the house of sanctuary. He had not mercy of a young man, and of a virgin, and of an eld man, and soothly neither of a man neither death for eldness, but he betook all in the hand of that king of Chaldees. And he translated into Babylon all the vessels of the house of the Lord, both the greater and the less vessels, and the treasures of the temple, and of the king of Judah, and of the princes thereof. And enemies burnt the house of the Lord, and they destroyed the wall of Jerusalem, they burnt all the towers, and they destroyed whatever thing was precious therein. If any man escaped the sword, he was led into Babylon, and served the king and his sons. This subjection, this thraldom continued upon the men of Judah, till the king of Persia reigned, until the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremy was fulfilled, until the land hallowed his Sabbaths. Soothly Judah in all the days of desolation, or of the destroying or forsaking thereof, it made Sabbath, till that seventy years were fulfilled. For sooth in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, to fulfill the word of the Lord, which he had spoken by the mouth of Jeremy, the Lord raised the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that commanded to be preached in all his realm, yea, by writing, and said, Cyrus, king of Persia, saith these things, the Lord God of heaven hath given to me all the realms of earth, and he commanded to me, that I should build to him an house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Who of you is in all his people? The Lord his God be with him, and go he up thither.